Hello, live tubers. Just finishing doing a couple little things here as I try to get this game running, and hopefully my uh, my setup still works. Wasn't super happy with the update video. The uh, the audio was a bit too loud, but it should be. Looks like it's a bit better today. A little bit quieter, but should be better. Just means I have to keep the uh, music and stuff quiet too. Comparatively. So hey there, uh, Kid Icarus, Dark Angel, Meliar. Yeah, we got people showing up for just kind of a chill stream. There's uh, probably lots to catch up on in the in the game itself. So you know, as people show up, if they're they're live catching up, feel free to ask questions. And heck, I barely remember what my base is doing anyway, so it's not a bad thing for me to slow down and look around a little bit. I've been trying to get the graphics brighter specifically for nighttime. Daytime is fine. Uh, but um, the, the the factorial, and I guess there was a mod setting I didn't realize uh, in one of the one of the panels here. Uh, mod settings that I hadn't seen before. So something was making um, the uh, one of the mods was making night even darker than normal, which is already kind of annoying. And uh, you know, for YouTube and and viewing and stuff, it's even harder because it's compressed and all that. And I don't actually enjoy the um, difficult to see at night mode so um for now i'm gonna see what this looks like and we'll see if that helps a little bit turn off my pre-stream because i'm clearly streaming yeah we're gonna we're gonna load in here and and i'm not gonna be recording like individual episodes we're just gonna play there'll be the vod for on youtube if people miss part of the stream or show up later or are listening now from the future uh, you know, I'll just leave the VOD on YouTube. It should be fine. Like I said in my update video, I'm pretty out of practice and and, and have my own <laughs> difficulties. So we're just going to jump in. And we're going to... I will talk about my... Uh, uh, yes. I didn't change anything serious. Should be fine. Mod after we started to kill. <laughs> Modding is always a little bit like this, you know. It, you can do a lot of research and prep and it's all good and then like one thing changes and uh, can, can ruin things. I, I'm, I'm pretty confident everything should be fine. I've up already updated uh, the majority of the mods from last year, so it should be fine. But yeah, I'll start going through kind of the current state of affairs in the game and kind of what our plans are. Kind of might put some notes up in like top of the screen somewhere to be like, current objectives so I can stay focused and maybe people can help every now and then. I don't know how many uh, of my viewers are Factorio or specifically space exploration uh, experts, but that's what we're, we're going to be dealing with. So I'm actually on a, a completely new planet right now, which you guys, if you've never played space exploration, have probably never seen before. So this is the planet. Oh, it's got a name or it's actually a moon, I believe. Uh, we are... Actually, that was probably the way to look at it. Uh, we are currently on Vestrian, which is the second moon of Novus, which is the planet we start on. Uh, surrounded by, you know, orbiting the, the star Calidus. So we have, uh, I've, you know, the majority of, uh, of the game was here to start. This is where the vanilla, effectively, map is. And has, like, all the normal resources and stuff you'd expect. We can actually view it, because we've got satellites. So this was our old base that I showed off during the... Uh, the, the update video there uh, a week ago and um, even in the map mode you can see kind of how big the base is and last time I was you know shooting artillery at all the uh, the biter bases around it outside of our walls and I've got lots of room to expand so this place is pretty good for the moment still have lots of solar power and, and wind power and all that and you know nuclear power I think I showed that off a little bit so it's uh turned off I believe at the moment but um, that's just because I ran out of uranium, so you know we'll, we'll come back later. Um, I still have some spare, but but uh, we're running a little bit low on the good stuff. Uh, but yeah, so we got uh, big old big old base here, and then um, I expanded to Morrigan first, which was maybe a mistake, but it was also a really safe moon. I wanted to just on my own time sort of test out um, how getting back and forth between you know. 
planets and moon satellites would work. Uh, and it's it's pretty expensive launching rockets like these these things. You have to load up with uh, space capsules, cargo cargo rocket sections, and fuel back and forth to get here. So it it just getting here is kind of expensive, and then shipping resources back and forth is is uh, still pretty pricey in the in the stage of the game we are. I believe there's like space elevators and stuff later on, but and there are like cannon delivery systems. But. So you know we came to this planet, and something. Oh right, that's just concrete flooring. I was just getting rid of some stone probably but yeah this planet was uh actually very small this moon and, and we used it to get a little bit of cryonite which is the blue metal uh there will be possibly a way to completely eliminate the biters in the in the high-end tech i don't want to spoil it but uh, i have heard rumors that uh one day the biters won't be a problem at all the, the alien fauna will, will just be uh you know <clears throat> removed but uh yeah we came here and this planet is it had cryonite which was cool but i already mined it all up and i think i already shipped it all off i had like a cryonite processing where it just comes in gets turned into little crystals you add some petroleum and uh maybe steam if i remember the recipe you can't see it here from oh you can click it but yeah steam cryonite powder turns into crystal and then i think you cook the crystal into you cook it with more powder with some heavy oil and you get the cryonite rods. This is the stuff we really wanted and that's what got my current level of tech was getting these cryonite rods and then... Actually, I've got 33,000 here right now. I've still got some a nice supply of backup. So we're good. We got lots of this stuff. We just ran out of the mine. So there's literally nothing left on the planet. There was uh, there's a deposit over here and a deposit over here, but it's all empty. It's all gone. So anyway, we'll have to come back and make more cryonite somewhere else. But for now, um, in the big picture, we have a pretty good stash for the moment. There is a better cryonite planet at Frost, which is further away, and there's less solar there. So um, this is on the long-term to-do list. We will eventually need to go... Um, you can see on Star Map. Frost is... So, you know, there's the asteroid belt uh, flying between here is a little bit dangerous. And then the outer planets, and then a second asteroid belt. Uh, Frost is a moon of the furthest planet. So this guy... Um, has tons of cryonite. So when we need more, this, this is where we'll go. Uh, but there is actually no biters over here. So it's actually a nice safe planet to work on. You don't even have to fight anything. But there's very little solar energy. It's a long way from our starting point. So in terms of Delta Vs for rocket fuel, um, you have to spend more fuel to get here. And um, automation signals are also interfered with. Or no, 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 that's fine. This is the robot interference. I'm not sure exactly how this works, but... Robots will occasionally blow up when they're traveling around. So at home, you have the default level of one, which means they blow up once in a while. And out here on Frost, they blow up ten times as much. So there's some things out here that are going to be annoying, and I didn't want to rush it. So I figured I'd just go through my mo my, my moons first. And uh, this is actually technically an oil moon. So if we if we ever want, like, infinite oil, we can, we can actually use this base for that. So that's not necessarily bad. This is the... Uh, the, the middle east of, of the moons. It's just full of oil. And um, not a lot of uh, threat for, for some reason. So it's kind of nice. And there's some rare resources like Beryl and Immersite, which we haven't really used yet. There's some new stuff. So if you're familiar with the Vanilla Factorial, you know, stone, coal, iron, copper, all the usual stuff. But um, we've got some new sort of mid and, and late game uh, resources to work in uh, eventually. We're just, we're just getting there now. So Cryonite was the first one, and then the second one is Vulcanite, and that's the one I need to work on right now. So we came to this Vestrian moon, which is another smaller moon. It does have some threat, so this is kind of my first expansion where we have to fight and defend ourselves. Uh, but it's got pretty equivalent solar power, and the robots actually do quite well here. Um, there was an option that I didn't pick uh, to go to the smaller planet, kind of like Mercury, kind of for, for our, our thing, uh, called uh, Ud Odquin. This is another Vulcanite planet, uh, so lots of the red metal, but there is no water, and that, I'm not sure I'm ready for that just yet. Um, waterless, like, a, a lot of processing will require um, oil processing, um, which also, there's not really very much oil here, but a lot of Vulcanite and uranium processing, uh, at least Vulcanite, I think, requires, like, heavy oil and petroleum gas and all that kind of stuff. And um, if there's no water here, you can't just pump it out of the ocean, so... Seems like it's a bit finicky. I don't really want to ship water uh, via via satellites or, or space rockets or anything. It sounds like a lot of work. So I decided even though there's no monsters here, for now we'll just go to Vestrian. And then if this works out, we'll have two more sciences. 
The next one in the long-term planning is actually Vita Melange we need. So we'll have to go a bit further away to find that. Um, Buttercup is maybe the easiest option in terms of there's a lot of Vita Melange, whatever that is. But it also has some biters and biter meteors. I'm not sure that I want to deal with biter meteors uh, at this moment. But anyway, that's that's for the future. There's also some other resources like Iridite and so on and so forth. I love Lucian. Yeah, it's got that spice melange feel a little. Um, hopefully there there aren't actually worms uh, creating and defending it. Uh, that would actually be a cool mod. They, they could definitely make a, one of the rare resources literal, literal spice. Put it on only desert worlds that have like super biters or something. Maybe that maybe there literally is that because um, spoilers, we're only on one star here, and all the resources in our system in this list here, that's not the full list of of resources. <laughs> I have scanned, I think, all of the stars in the galaxy, or at least uh, accessible in the galaxy in the star map here. But I think I have to make a telescope to actually see the planetary bodies around them. So I haven't quite got to the tech to actually see, like, I don't have a, a cool James Webb space, uh, space Telescope up here yet. But one day, one day. And then the last place to show off is our space science, which is Novus's orbit. I always forget how to get there easily. It's not even, it's not even really in the list. Uh, and it's not Vestrian orbit. We want to go Novus, Novus orbit. Yeah. So this is where all of our space stuff happens, just floating in a, in a ever-expanding platform above our home planet. And uh, this is where we have to do all the fancy space science. So we effectively need to get the cryonite up here, which is somewhere up here. I, I used to use some delivery um, capsules. So there's, uh, you know, 16, 17,000 cryonite up here, which gets processed in a complicated nonsense system that's very, very inefficient. That was just a test run. This is our first ever of this tier of science. And then it gets fed into the standard, you know, labs. I'm, you know, pretty much the same as normal, other than we have to do it in space. So that's the space part. And then the next step, once we get Vulcanite, we'll be do the same thing up here. Let this deliver the Vulcanite here. Figure out how to process it into more science packs, which are these little red guys here. We've got the utility science from Cryonite, and now we need the production science from Vulcanite, and that'll unlock a bunch of stuff. So that's kind of the goal for today's stream: is to try to. Um, get this Vulcanite up here. There's another really important use for it, though. Um, back on our home planet, we, in our in our major smelting operation here, where we've got all of our raw resources coming in and then getting uh, processed and cooked and turned into usable plates and stuff, you, there's, there's no iron or steel going at all right now. And this keeps happening. I have to fix this system. It's really annoying. Um, I think I figured out... This happened during the, the update video. Um... I run out of pyroflux, so there's lots right now, but it was probably at zero at one point, which stopped the smelting of enriched iron into uh, slag or, or molten iron. And because we run out of pyroflux, everything backs up, which goes all the way back to here, which stops these things from getting rid of the excess dirty water, which just needs to get rid of it, really. And I think the problem is I have flare stacks which delete the clean water at the end, but I don't have like an overflow down here for if this pipe fills up because these guys are backlogged, then it all clutches up so that once we finally get more pyroflux and these machines start to work again, the input for them are still blacked up and never seem to clear because the water can't go in and there's just not enough of a buffer, I guess. So that's something I need to fix, but the point is... We don't actually get enough pyroflux from our mining operations. You know, we get these uh, generic random core fragments, which get processed into a variety pack of everything in the same uh, ratio every time. But we actually don't get enough pyroflux from that ratio to do all the smelting. So the other way to get pyroflux, and that's why we're here on this planet, is uh, I've got the starter base here, which I, I set up before. We, we, mine, the, we mine this little vulcanite process it and I need to re-evaluate re the processing because there's some work that needs to be done. But eventually you end up with this, uh, this is this, the equivalent to cryoflux rods is vulcanite blocks and we can turn that into pyroflux or the science. So I've already got like, you know, a chest that's starting to fill up with it. So, you know, the basics are working, but this base isn't ready yet. You know, we're not done. 
um, there's there's a few major problems. So first off, there are biters here. Um, not a lot. It's got like a pretty small threat, but we need a long-term defense plan. And there is like infinite Vulcanite. Like I was looking around, millions, millions, ten million, uh, eight million, ten million. Like you know, I don't think we'll, we're gonna run out of Vulcanite. We we can spam this stuff as much as we want. Please go to the guns. Thank you. So I have some little gun turrets spread around, just to get us safe at the beginning. But yeah, the biters are going to start spawning all around us. And, uh, you know, they're kind of jerks, right? Um, maybe one day we'll get a Dyson Sphere, but I believe that's a different game, actually, there, David. Um, so yeah, let me let me go through this, this base. There's really not a lot. I have not done much work here. We just got here, but I have my return ship started so we can get out of here one day. Uh, but I need to I need to manufacture liquid rocket fuel. I have the machine sort of ready, but we have to make solid rocket fuel, get it here, and then it will fill up the fuel tanks in our rocket, and then we can get out. But we can't do that until I get more rocket fuel. We have a launch pad, so the next time we come here, the rocket ship will land, and it won't just explode like it usually does. I have, for the most part, I am just running on solar power right now, which is easy to set up. Um, and there's enough solar panels here to cover us for a bit, and we've got uh, some accumulators for night. This is actually kind of an interesting moon. The, the day-night cycle is really short. Um, we are on Vestrian. It's a day-night cycle of 4.8 minutes. I believe the standard on Novus is 10 minutes per, per cycle, I think. Uh, so it's about half the, the length, which means you're always dark and daytime and dark and daytime over and over again. Um, so the solar is, you know, helps, but it's not the full solution. Um, and then, yeah, some laser turrets to keep us defended a little bit, but no big walls, just kind of, you know, hopefully past they'd come in on. I got one mining thing set up. The uh, I, I actually need to do a little bit of math here, so we're probably going to pull out the old notepad. But the, the thing here we need to watch is Vulcanite gets crushed at a pulverizer into um, crushed Vulcanite, some stone, which we can get rid of easily enough, and enriched vulcanite. So it's kind of like uranium in that you mine it and you end up getting two different types of um, useful resources that you need to, to, to process. So the ratio there is about 30 to one, right? Uh, you know, percentages, yeah, we'll definitely need to pull out that notepad plus plus for sure. Um, but at a quick glance, if we can ignore the stone, sure, six vulcanite doesn't really matter. We've got we've got lots of vulcanite. It, we will effectively get 30 more crushed 30 crushed for every one enriched is kind of the ratio. Assuming these are all running fairly consistently and the miners are able to keep them full, which, like I said, we can add as many miners as we need, really. So you got a 30 to 1 ratio. The end result, what we actually need, um, and we can discount the water because we have infinite water, and we can almost discount the petroleum gas because uh, it only uses 5, which, if you didn't know, is almost nothing for gases. Um, we have process in batches of 100 crude oil, 100 to 90 petroleum. And we've got a already just just sort of in the background filled up 170,000 gas, uh, which does need to get used in sulfur, which we'll see in a minute. But effectively, the, the cost for this these, these vulcanite blocks, I'm basically saying the water is free and the gas is nearly free. So all we're really worried about is the cost in vulcanite crushed and enriched. But you might notice here the ratio is not the same. So we get 30 crushed for every one enriched, but we need to build blocks out of 5 crushed and 10 vulcanite, uh, 10 enriched. So you need, instead of 30 to 1, you need 5 to 10, which is a incredible, it's like it's a, that's like two orders of magnitude difference almost, right? Like 30 to 1. Um, so every... If, if you just divide by five here, right? So you'd get six crushed vulcanite would turn into, like, points. I don't know. I'm trying to think of an easy way to explain it. But anyway, the point is it's it's vastly out of ratio. The, the sink is way, way off. Which means if you didn't process it, if you just went pulverizer straight into uh, blocks, um, you would never have... You'd be stifled by um, the enriched stuff, and you would back up the crushed stuff. And then um, the machines, which you'd have to, like landfill the reds the crushed stuff or something but 
I don't even know if you can, so you'd have to try to store it or get rid of it. It would not work. So the solution is uh, enrichment, which is the tricky part, because it takes in a little bit of sulfur, and again, it's mostly free. I don't have to worry about that too much. And it outputs a little bit of sand. Once again, we can sort of filter that out. It doesn't matter too much. Rocks and sand, we can filter out and just make landfill out of it. That stuff's just garbage that gets in the way. But it takes in 10 crushed and one enriched, so you have to have some enriched, and then it switches it to a much more favorable uh, ratio, four to four, rather, or one to one, effectively, from 10 to one to one to one. Now you do lose a little bit overall, right? You put in 11 parts and you get eight parts out. So you lose like 30% of the mass, but that's fine. Um, so what I've done is right now, all the, all the mined vulcanite gets crushed and it all comes onto one lane of mixed crushed plus um, enriched. The rocks get filtered out first by this handy dandy fast splitter. And then the, there's a priority here because I've made a loop. Basically I'm filtering the enriched into a separate lane and it just loops around. It's, it's not super complicated. Half of it goes to the um, vulcanite blocks, half of it resets and comes back for more enriching. The crushed also passes by, or no, it doesn't right now. I think it should. I think the crushed should also loop, but I, I just didn't get to it. Um, I guess it sort of does, right, it, it takes a longer path. So the crushed comes out on the output side here we have a lane sharer where the this splits the crush to one and the enrich to the other, which loops some of it back so we don't run out, and then it splits them sort of 50-50 onto the same belt, because it doesn't really matter. The, the production speed and input is fine. We don't need to worry about having five belts of input or anything. And I believe we will pretty much always be bottlenecked by enriched vulcanite. So I built a bunch of these smelters, but we only ever needed like two or three. So I put in a bunch of these production modules or productivity modules, which slow them down significantly. They're going at like a quarter speed, minus 75%. But we do get an extra like 30% output for it. So it kind of stretches the resources further, but it does cost more power and slows it down. But, but really one of these at full speed could probably cover all of the production right now. So we run out of enriched and then we recycle the crush back into the system. And I actually prioritize it so that this never backs up, so that these can keep working. I'd rather these guys back up if they have to. But I think I probably don't have enough of these enriching machines. You could probably do some math and try to figure out the ratio that you need to, to enrich to be overall optimal. I'm not sure if it's important enough though, because I think the way I've got it set up right now, we're actually crushing almost all of the ore that we're mining as fast as we mine it. Like, one of them is backed up with a yellow light. Also, hold on. That that was super loud. <laughs> this is why I turned some of these sounds down, certainly. The machine sounds can be a little bit crazy. Let me zoom out a little bit. But, but anyway, the idea is we're already using basically as much vulcanite as we can currently mine, as fast as we can mine. Which means it's all getting turned into enriched and circling around, and even though there might be a couple more loop-de-loops, it's, it's a little bit time inefficient in terms of routing. As long as these machines, the pulverizers, are basically always running and the miners are not... Well, as long as the miners are running, basically, we will be effectively getting as much vulcanite blocks out of that as possible no matter what combination of machines are being used in the middle. Because unless I want to add more inputs on, on Vulcanite, it doesn't really matter how how much time is done on the centrifuge. Now you might have, like I said, there's more there's ways of doing it more efficiently, certainly. But I actually think this is, now that I'm looking at it, sort of as some time is going by, like, this is decent. Um... I'm not sure why this is yellow. Oh, is, are we running out of power now? Yeah, yeah, okay, that's my own bad, yeah. So, things are slowing down a little bit when our power gets used up. That makes sense, because I haven't really got a major power upgrade yet. Hey there, Greg, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm still alive, just haven't been doing much recording YouTube stuff lately. 
So, we need to upgrade our power, or we could try to make more centrifuges, but honestly, I think the, the main goal I had here was just to simply get the first run of this Vulcanite working, and it's working, right? Like, this is doing the job. We're getting, you know, I could open up the production tab, I could try to find exactly what uh, throughput rate we're at. Uh, we're getting 135 Vulcanite blocks per minute, which is, I feel actually, that's quite a lot. It's not bad. So maybe I, maybe I just leave it like this. I was planning on doing some revisions, doing a little bit of math, but honestly, sometimes if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So then what this what this planet really needs before I leave then uh, is kind of two things. Well, maybe three things. It needs power and it needs defenses so I can ignore this for a while. De power, defenses, and a way of getting back and forth um, via rock. Because we have to get this stuff off of the planet. So I think maybe the first thing we'll tackle... No, the first thing, first thing, is power. Because I've got some solar panels. I could also get some steam in, steam power going uh, using either oil. We, I do have a small expansion. I needed, I needed oil for the processing right? So I have a little oil uh, pump jack station out here, which is defended. These guys, I think this is one of those like multi-million sets as well. Uh, there is 2.1 million crude oil. I don't expect we're going to run out because we're not really using very much. You, you use a little bit for sulfur and a little bit for the blocks, but I think it's it's actually proportionately quite tiny. So we're going to use that oil, and I've kind of got the layout here set up. We need to take the oil, we need to take the crude oil, and turn it into light oil. Because light oil is probably the most efficient way to get solid fuel, and we need solid fuel to make rocket fuel. There's a few different recipes, but this is probably the simplest. Um, so you need solid fuel and light oil, which we will both have. You need oxygen, which, I mean, the easiest way is just to pay energy to basically get it out of the atmosphere. It just, you might have to make a few of these machines, we'll just pump some oxygen in there. And then we need iron plates, which, well, there is some iron here, so we could certainly hook up a small minor melt, iron mining and melting. It doesn't really need very much iron, though. Um, it's uh, one iron plate for solid liquid solid rocket fuel which turns into 50 liquid fuel so one iron gets us 50 so you could math it out here pretty easily um, we need 24,000 but that's divide by 50 um, what 500 that's, that's not 500 iron plates I'm sure we've got it in a box my my inventory here is a mess because my rocket crash landed and everything just got you know quick stored because I just needed to put it somewhere but I'm sure we've got enough iron plates that I don't really need to worry about the iron smelting. So the main thing is processing oil into solid fuel and liquid fuel. But this is going to need a lot of power. So I think we start by expanding some of our grid. Uh, I've got a big solar uh, farm here. Well, big. You know, In terms of uh, space exploration, this is a pretty small farm. But, but I've got a farm, and I can certainly expand it. And I should just use all the solar panels we brought. Because... I mean, I've got them. I don't want to bring them back anyway. So, uh, let me just quickly look through my my box of destruction here. Uh, if, well, we could also do the, the other way. We have a lot of robots. So, if we say in our logistics uh, personal inventory, if we're like, hey, I would like solar panels, please. Uh, as many as there are. Um, now we can see there are none in the logistics storage. And these are all logistics chests. So if there were any, it would say there's some on the way, uh, which they're in. So we have 33 solar panels, and that's the end. Unless we want to craft some more. So we're not going to get much further with solar, but we might as well put them down. That's... Also, this planet is kind of annoyingly rocky. Like, there, there's a lot of rocks. Hey, thanks for the uh, the uh, super chat over there, Greg. I'm really, I, you know, I, I know we've got a lot of, um, we got a lot of, uh, I don't want to call you out, seeing as you're trying to be on the down low, but... But we do have quite a few viewers that are, are fans of the old Might Magic series. Uh, specifically 6 and 7 come up the most. And uh, I don't play it as much. It's not like my channel mainstay or anything. But I am always appreciative that people enjoyed those series. And had a good time with them. And I have been toying around with the idea of uh, maybe one day... I have been talking about it for a long time. Going back to uh, Might Magic 7. Because I never did do that dark uh, evil run, basically. Although, like I've said probably many times, playing the the bad guys, it's not my best thing. Um, it's kind of difficult for me some days. Okay, so that's all the solar we're able to get. And if we look at our power system, 
I think we're running out. The accumulators are literally um, running out of steam overnight. The accumulators run out of power. So we really need significantly more power here. Um, and that, that, that amount of solar is not going to get the job done. So that, that's all my solar. So then... Um, well, there is one thing we could do. Um, I don't know how much power we'll get out of it necessarily, but uh, this vulcanite stuff is super dense fuel. Uh, 30 megajoules. Um, if you're using... Uh, I think I've got a few of them just sitting around here. If you're using a steam turbine... Yeah, these pups. You can take the pyroflux, or I guess you can take vulcanite, uh, and you could just burn it in a... In a what are they called? Uh, you know, base vanilla mechanics. Surely I remember the names of these things. Um... It's like a boiler engine or something. Anyway, yeah, you, you can heat up water by, by burning vulcanite. And uh, you just compare the fuel, right? Coal is whatever megajoules. I think coal is like 8 megajoules. So these are like 4 times the coal each. Um, but there's a unique recipe that I might want to try. Um, I'm just going to build one of these things. No, it's a... I'm just going to have to look up in my recipe book. I forget how to do it. Uh, vulcanite. What do you do with vulcanite? That's the question, right? Research? Oh, I don't know how to spell. Vulcanite? There we go. So we have vulcanite blocks, which are fuel source on their own. Um, if I add a little bit of sand, we can turn effectively one block into ten pyroflux, which is now a liquid. But what I was thinking was the liquid, for one, is... I want to use this to smelt all that stuff back on our home planet. But... I believe there is pyroflux dousing, which you just pour a bunch of water, like a ton of water in, and it just turns it into steam right away um, at a rate of one, one, one to a hundred. So I don't know if we could math it out. Um, I'm assuming you get more power that way than burning vulcanite blocks. How would we even figure out what's better, actually? Um, usually the more complicated manufacturing system is the uh, the more efficient system, but, you know, not necessarily. Burner turbine, that's the thing. Uh, we actually don't have any basic stone sitting around. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. We have stone. Hold on, hold on. Because all the stone is getting filtered down this way. Oh, it's getting... I'm not storing it. I've got a bunch of sand because I was, I was expecting to do uh, pyroflux, right? Um, there probably is some Vulcans over here somewhere. They're, uh, they're just a little bit spidery more than normal. Uh, do I have, like, a regular stone mine? Yeah, there's a regular stone right there. Hold on. Just, I need a little bit for crafting purposes. Probably not more than, like, five or something. Uh, so, if I build... Oh... Of course, it's always more difficult. It's not... Alright. It's fine. I only needed five. The problem was that I um, had my logistics network, and I generally just want my robots to get rid of my stones. So it doesn't clutch up my inventory. Yeah. Classic. Alright, so all I'm using this for is to try to get a feel for... Um, how do we want to make some power efficiently? Oh, this is, this is not even the thing I wanted to make. Burner... That's... The boiler is what I want. Boilers boil water. Burners burn stuff and make um, heat. But they're they're a standalone system. So these these burner turbines are... You just throw Vulcanite in there to make power. But it literally says it's inefficient. So you don't get the full... You get 85%. I mean, you could. If you wanted some cheap power, I guess. You could take something like Vulcanite and just slap it in there real quick and easy. I can see it. And you'll get two megawatts of power. It's just slightly less efficient for burning. Don't worry about the alarms. We're fine, right? We took a little bit of damage, so that means we're already getting gigantic biters. Uh, two tile walls are enough for, like, medium biters, but you need three thick walls for the, the super huge ones. Or else they just pierce right through. So that's annoying. I didn't expect that we'd have, like, literally behemoth size enemies 
on a... Because this is supposed to be the safe world, right? It's supposed to be only 7% threat. But clearly that's a lie, because 7% threat doesn't even have uh, middle-sized fighters. Uh, right, so this is the lazy way. We could make power out of that. That's one option, so good to know. The, the option I was meaning to talk about was... Dang it, I, I did it again in my mind, and I... Is the usual water boiling method. This is... If you're playing along ever and you're, you know, uh, mining coal to to uh, to burn, to heat up steam, to make your early generators, uh, the classic starter boilers, um, that would be this guy, which is still the same as vanilla, basically. But I think this will show the recipe a little better for what I'm trying to discuss. So we could once again put some vulcanite into this puppy and then pipe water through and you get steam out of it and you don't lose that 15 percent efficiency like you do on a burner turbine but how much do you get is my question so you get 30 megajoules worth of fuel but what does that mean in terms of power how are you supposed to convert that i mean a, a joule is is a is a what one joule per second is a mega is a watt so it's just straight conversion, right? 30 megajoules of 30 megawatts, if you can keep it up. Although it's over time, so it depends on how quickly it consumes it. Uh, I'm assuming if it consumes at 1.5 megawatts, that's the fuel consumption, not the power output. Also, this, there's some sneaky lyrics in this one that's stuck in there. We're just playing some chill music today. Hopefully it's all good. Um... But right, so so that would mean, if, if I'm correct, if this was burning 30 divided by one and a half, um, whatever that is, uh, 20 seconds probably, something like that. That means it would, it would consume one vulcanite block in 20 seconds, and it would output 33.3 steam per second, so times 20 seconds. So you'd get, you know, 660 approximately steam over the course of one block vulcanite. And then if you look at the steam turbine, they consume, you could run two steam turbines at the rate it comes out, 33 per second would run two of these. So you could just say 20 seconds of, of steam for two turbines per vulcanite, right? That That's fair. The steam turbines are 750. So you'd get 1.5 megawatt of electricity times 20 seconds, I think, or around 20 seconds. It's a, definitely an estimate. Um, 1.5 times 20, you're back up to 30 megawatts. So it sounds like that's a pretty straight conversion. Um, like the, 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 the megajoule to megawatt conversion via steam here is pretty close to the same, right? You start with 30 megajoules of fuel, you go through a couple steps, and you end up getting 30 megawatts of power per, per fuel item. This one, I'm assuming, is the same, except minus 15%. So, cheap and easy, but you lose some. If you have infinite fuel, I guess these are fine. They're a little bit more polluty, I guess, but... Um, this is the second option. And then the third option... I have to figure out where what machine it is, but I just want to compare the final option here. We're, we're looking at... Turning it into Pyroflux now, which requires adding some sand, which is fine. And then you just put a ton of water onto it, and you end up getting steam. So, so we know, we sort of know how much <laughs> power we get. Um, first off, how much power flux do we get? It's one to ten. So. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're getting we're getting too deep. We're, this is the time where I need to pull up my notepad. Hold on, hold on, guys. Where's my where's my where's my notes? Desktop, notepad. This is just getting too complicated too fast here. Surely I have my note plus notepad plus plus uh, advertisement ready to go here, right? Nope. Oh, that's my to-do list. I'll put that up later. Oh, 
right one. Not the right one. I guess I never added it in here. All right. Like I said, my stream setup is all a little wishy-washy, so... This is a good good stream for us to try to uh, get some of this stuff fixed up. Oh, there we go. I still have it. It's just not in the seat. Okay, so this... There we go. Don't worry about those other tabs. It's for other games. But okay, so what did I, what did I say? One Vulcanite block... 30 megajoules equals time uh, times 85% straight burn or do some cool equal signs uh, times one uh, boiler so that's uh, thir that's 30 megawatts per, per, per fuel right I can close that for a second. Oops. Oh, it'll all be back in a second. <laughs> okay, so where was I trying to figure this out? Sure, actually, I think Robert was already summoned there, Squatch Mill. He's just on the YouTube side. Um, he's, he wants the Monster Girl Island, but we're really on Volcano uh, Biter Island. So. Vulcanite block. I I've got this, right? 30 megajoules. You could get 85% at a straight burn, or you could get 30 megawatts in the normal, simple system. Or we can go to Pyroflux, which is one block is 10 Pyroflux, which turns into... Again, we're going to ignore the sand and stuff because it doesn't really count, I don't think. And if the water is, is just instantly doused, one pyroflux, or the ratio here, one block is 10 pyroflux, so one block is a thousand steam. That's really, really convenient. I was just it's complicated. But how much, how much power is a thousand steam? Hold on, we're, we're getting attacked again. I have to save the base. Is it, it's, it's a different base. We're under attack probably on our home base or something. I think. Yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Unfortunately, the alerts aren't super good at clarifying um, which planet is being attacked. Uh, let's just throw some more fuel in here while we're talking. Because I know our, our base power is not super high. This this will just help keep, keep the lights on for a while. Alright, so what... If, if we have the... If we use the Pyroflux, if we go Vulcanite... Add it into um, some sand, turn it into the liquid, maybe make a storage tank of liquid, and then flash it into steam, or flash the water into steam. How does a thousand steam work, is my question, right? Um, Okay, I got to pull up my calculator here. 1,000, because we could just do it here, right? Divide by 16.7. So, 1,000 steam will run one engine for 60 seconds, about a minute, conveniently. Uh, and you could have more connected, obviously, so you could get it out quicker if you wanted. Um, and that's 60 seconds, approximately, at 750 kilowatts. So that's about 45 megawatts. So you would be going from... That's approximately 45 megawatts. So yeah, that's a 50% increase then. I feel like that's a pretty big jump. If you want to see my math. Hold on. It's very simple. <laughs> One block, 85% is 30 is whatever that is. It's slightly less than 30. Um, is it 27? It might be 27. I'm just going to say... About 27 megawatts. And then if you just go straight steam with Vulcanite, you get 30 megawatts. If you turn it into Pyroflux, you get 1,000 steam. It turns into a nearly 45 megawatts. Now, there is one more thing to consider. The machines to process it are a, 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 a penalty to the system, right? So... 
Vulcanite burned has no additional processing. So it's just you get 85% of the power. Vulcanite cooked at a boiler heating steam also has no processing cost because there's no electrical... You don't have to... Other than maybe an inserter or something, which, you know, the inserters don't use very much power. I, I generally don't care about 20 kilowatts or less. But you can get 50 kilowatts. And some, some of the inserters do use, you know, hundreds of kilowatts. But, you know, I think in the grand scheme of things, they don't operate all the time and they don't use too much power. So I generally don't worry about that specific um, number on, on the inserters, basically. And there are ways to avoid it. There's these cool loaders which don't use any power, but they're super expensive to build comparatively. Okay, so if we, so what I think we want to do then is use Pyroflux heating, but then the question is, is it worth, the last question I think, is, is it worth the processing costs, right? Because, because if we're getting, let's say we're getting an extra 15 megawatts, we're going from 30 base megawatts per block to 45 base megawatts per block. That's a pretty big increase, but if you spend 15 megawatts to process it, I don't think we are, but if the closer we're spending to 15 megawatts, the less valuable this is, right? So the first machine is a chemical plant. And I, I'm just going to put one of those down because I'm sure I have one. And we can just look at it. So this would take... The recipe we'll be using is turning these little pyro... Or these vulcanite blocks. Adding a little bit of sand, which again, I don't actually know for sure... But it may be that we get enough sand via the the, the manufacturing process that um, uh, that we have infinite sand here anyway. And I probably need to turn it into landfill because if this fills up, which is close, this line will eventually back up and then these won't even run. They're only backed up because we've got all the... Uh, we need a bigger box here, which is something we should definitely do because we want... Um, we want like as much vulcanite manufacturing as possible and we're going to start shipping it out but um for now uh, inventory space let's just make a new box here this is spaghetti again as 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 you do there you go so a bigger box that will hold more and then that will get the, uh, the the processing working again while we try to figure out other parts. So, uh, also move that all in. Yeah, might as well just clear that out here. Hey there, Shepard. No, no worries being late. I mean, depends on what you mean by miss anything. We haven't been streaming too long. Uh, what I'm trying to do is wrap up my first round of Vulcanite processing. So if you're familiar with space exploration, you'll know what's going on. If you're not, I mean, there's so much stuff it, it would... I'd have to spend half an hour catching everybody up. But yeah, we're trying to get the red rocks ready for more science back at our science base. But uh, this is on a new planet, uh, moon technically, and uh, there's a few things we need to do here before we leave. Uh, for one, we need more power. So the plan here is to turn the excess vulcanite into pyroflux with sand. Now, one downside is I think I ran out of efficiency modules. So if we're really trying to do this without wasting energy because the whole point here is generating power uh we should probably i don't know we'll say maybe maybe 10 of these efficiency modules just so i can put a couple in because running the the the, the intermediate manufacturing would use 200 kilowatts here plus the next step which is so we get the power flux and then we need to douse it this happens at another chemical plant. That's not too bad, then. These machines don't use up a ton of power. So then we go Pyroflux into water and steam. We get some more random junk. Of course, I'll have to filter out. And then we just put this straight into the steam turbines. So we won't need uh, boiler turbines or boilers. We'll just need a, a nice stash of steam engines. Maybe a few chemical plants. We need to take sand in. Water in. And then we need to get rid of stone. Stone can be recycled back into sand. Copper and iron, I don't know. There's very little. It's 1% chance per cycle. So I might just make a giant box and ignore it. Because, I mean, we're not going to get very much. And then we just use the steam as our, our power backup. And with that, we should have enough power, hopefully, to finish my liquid fuel manufacturing 
um, expand the walls and laser defenses so that the inevitable biter attacks don't destroy the base when we're somewhere else. And then we can just leave it and we'll just stock up on Vulcanite. Uh, I would like maybe to try to set up the delivery cannon system. Uh, the problem is, um, you know, this, this thing can fire, uh, we would want to send it to maybe back to Novus first or something. Um, you know, cause this is where we actually need more Pyroflux back in our home base. So it's like, well, that'd be really handy if we could just send it there right now. Uh, but the problem is that although I have the blocks pretty much figured out, these delivery capsules kind of suck. They, um, they're kind of expensive right now. Um, what's the, what's the recipe for these things? So yeah, you need copper cable, which is not too bad. Low density structure, which is kind of a pain because I think it needs like steel and stuff, right? Um, oops, I just close it all down every time. Uh, and explosives, which again, we could make. We've got the oil manufacturing. And then heat shielding, which is also pretty expensive. That's like stone processing and steel. So we would have to get some pretty intermediate advanced processing just to build the capsules to shoot the Vulcanite back. And I don't know, if, I don't really want to set all that up here. Like, yes, we, we could, we have the resources, uh, but these are supposed to just be small expansion bases. I don't really want to have the entire iron copper steel lines here because that's just nonsense. Um, one thing that I wish we could do, I don't think you can. I wish you could, I want to double check. Can we send delivery cannon capsules of delivery cannon capsules? <laughs> um, like we need, we need delivery cannon capsules. If we manufactured them back at home, could we just shoot cannon loads full of capsules? I don't think we can. When am I going back to Might and Magic series? Well, that is a frequently asked question. The only answer I can give you is on the day that I feel like playing more Might and Magic, I will look into it more seriously. But yeah, I don't think there's a, there's a recipe to get delivery cannon capsules here. I think you'd have to manufacture them here, which is not very good. Um, Cause then you need to have to process everything here. Well, you can make a space elevator cable, but that's, I can't even make those yet. Uh, yeah, I don't, there's the, one of the real downsides of this machine is you can't, even though it's convenient for shooting material between planets, it, uh, it's got a pretty limited list of what it can send. Yeah, I wanted a box full of boxes, it's true, but I think the only way I could get, cause, cause inside a cargo ship, you could deliver anything, but these are way more expensive building cargo rockets basically. But I think the only way we could get capsules here to shoot back at our home planet would be to automate a delivery rocket system that would be way more expensive and one rocket would probably fill this for ages anyway so it's kind of moot point uh it's kind of too expensive for the game i should have just brought i don't know a few hundred a few stacks of capsules with me and then we could have just used that to take it home but it, it's fine when we leave like the longer i um delay here the more vulcanite we can fill this up with and it, it'll be fine like um in fact even without doing belts, I can kind of do my, this trick. If you were watching the last stream, you know, way back in the day, we did not have logistics network back then, and it sucked. But anyone who's played much Factorio knows how much fun, um, let's just really not just connect to the accumulators. Um, now you can request stuff. You can just say, hey, I would like uh, the Vulcanite blocks to end up over here, please. And, um, you know, we don't have a ton of bots in the system. Oh, and it needs to be in a provider chest, but... Um, Oh, right. Well, that's, this is fine. Um, we just need to upgrade that from a boring steel box to a probably passive provider is the easiest. Now the logistic systems know they are here in the network and the bots will, you know, slowly, there's only 150 of them. I didn't bring that many, but they'll just move the stuff up there without needing belts and that's fine. And then that will load it onto the rocket that when we eventually leave, um, I'm going to bring a bunch of Vulcanite with me. So that's, that's sort of, you know, a temporary solution. It's not great. Um, right. So let's just focus. Got a, got a little sidetrack there. Um, the main objective here is to upgrade the power system. So that's what we're going to try to focus on for a bit. 
And then once we've got our power system upgraded a little bit, then I got to get the liquid fuel going and then defenses and then we can leave. So it's going to take a little bit. Uh, and I did build some efficiency modules. So if you were worried about the 200 kilowatts cutting into our gains, uh, I can just slap in a couple of these bad boys and it's now 42 kilowatts. And without doing even more math, I'm pretty confident that the net 15 megawatt gain minus 40 or even even if we need five machines to run it, 200 kilowatts of, of power to, to, to gain 15 megawatts per cycle, I think is certainly a, a, a trade up. So let's do the power. Um, now these things, these things heat up water. This one heats up water super fast, like... You get a thousand steam every two seconds, with assuming no speed modules or anything. Uh, you get 20 pyroflux every two seconds. So I just want to make sure I've got kind of the right approximate ratio here. Um, basically, 10 pyroflux per second per first round, and then we consume half of that, five pyroflux per second. So we want effectively two of these for every one of these if we wanted to work rather e efficiently or smoothly. And we will need a lot of water. It will be a thousand water per those machines. And I just want to double check what a pump is because uh, didn't I have? Oh right, the pumps are literally right here in this tiny little pond. Uh, pumps can do twelve fifty each. So you basically need their own pump each. Uh, and that'll give us a little bit of uh, overhead as well. And then... A thousand... So we probably want like a buffer tank of steam or, or a bunch. Because uh, this will mostly turn on during the night. Uh, if you remember for, for factorial rules, um, during... There's a sort of a priority system for power consumption. Um, during the day, solar will have the highest priority. So if it's... If solar can meet your needs, your steam turbines won't even run. But at night... Uh, they can turn on, and I believe steam has, or turbines, like, like the steam engines, have a higher priority than the accumulators. So rather than draining our batteries, we will have the Pyroflex steam turn on. And you can logic your way out of that. If you'd rather have the accumulators go first, and then your steam second, um, which is an off option, you need to set up a rather complicated logic network to, 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 to control it. But you can do that. It, it's, it's fine. But, uh, I'm probably going to want, like... Just gonna say a few more efficiency modules. I should have brought more modules with me. So one offshore pump per these, and if they are outputting at a thousand steam, well, five hundred steam per second. Boy, that's a lot of turbines. That's more steam engines than I thought, actually. Hold on, uh, because these guys only do sixteen point seven steam per second. So five hundred divided by sixteen point seven. That's 30 steam engines. If I want to... Wow. Maybe I don't have to do very much at all here. I'm, I'm way overbuilding this. Um, times 750 each. Uh, that's... 22 megawatts? Yeah. It's 22 megawatts, like, in, in a second. Uh, in terms of actual time. Like, not, not in long term, but like... like so that would... Basically, the way I see it, one of these machines running full-time with uh, 30 steam engines, effectively, would basically double our current energy production at, well, at the moment, but uh, not our maximum. And if we do two, that'll be about 60 megawatts, I think, or whatever my calculator said. And then we just need the one Pyroflux machine, two steam machines, and like 60 steam engines, which is a lot. But that should power a significant size base, I, I think. All right, let's let's just do it. Simple enough. Let's not overthink it too much. We don't have any liquids in. I'll change this box in a bit, but for now, what I would actually like um, priority is probably to keep the lights on. So let's put a little splitter here and say prioritize left sides. And all this is doing is saying 
it should go here first, basically. And if this backs up, then we store the rest and ship it out, basically. I think, I think that'll be fair. Now we need to get sand over here. And then the Pyroflux is going to flash the water. Is there any value in holding on to Pyroflux? Like, I could have a buffer tank of Pyroflux in the middle. I don't think there's a good reason for it. Also, our sand is already starting to fill up. Um, this is not our long-term sand solution either, but, you know, lazy spaghetti ankylo. Alright, so that gets it going at least, so we know it works. And like I said, I'm pretty sure this will be way more sand than we actually need. Uh, but it will help prevent one more bottleneck, so that's that's good. Um, if we wanted to do smelting on this planet, which is complicated, we could use the Pyroflux to smelt iron or copper and help with some supply chains. But I don't want to. So I think we only want to use this for, um, for power. Which I will run... Uh, vertically, because we need the water to connect. And we only need two of these for now, but, uh, I'd like to have this be somewhat extensible. This is, this is very not easy to add into. I'm not, I'm not doing a great job making this easy to connect, but, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Sue me, sue me. Alright, that gets them their Pyroflux. Let's give them their, they're trying to generate power, not consume power, so this is a good use for the energy efficiency modules as far as I'm concerned. Now, I know most factorial veterans swear by the productivity modules at this point in the game compared to the uh, efficiency. Efficiency just means slightly less pollution, that's mostly not a big deal, and less energy. Uh, productivity, uh, although you can't actually put them in these specific machines, um, but product productivity gives you more, like you put it in this one, and we would get more, like we, we would multiply the vulcanite effectively and the sand a little bit that doesn't really matter but we would get more instead of a, a straight two to one ratio here of two vulcanite blocks for 20 pyroflux i could put um well, i've already used them up but if i wanted to bring more along i could put uh like three of these modules in there and they give six percent productivity each so with three slots you could have 18 percent productivity plus 18 percent so it would take more power it would take i would probably need to build a second one to keep the throughput because it slows it down but you would get, well, instead of 10 to 1, it would be 11.8 to 1. So you'd get that 18% in the output for the same amount of input, which is really nice, right? Like you get more for, for the same. Um, just You're just spending power, basically. Um, and there are times where that is very, very, very valuable. But in this scenario where we have like nearly infinite Vulcanite availability... And literally infinite if we hook in the core seams, although that's a much bigger project. Uh, I don't think I need to worry about 18% here, 10% there. Like, I, I think the goal here is just get this machine working and, and get out of here. Because we need science, right? The whole goal here is to get the next tier of science. So, I've convinced myself not to bother. I will need some water. And we need separate water lines here. So let me clean up this border a little bit. I believe I have some offshore pumps. I don't know what it is about me. I can never find the offshore pumps. They used, I think they used to have a different icon back in the, the old, old Factorio days. And then they changed the icon and or something. And now it's just uh, trips me up. I, I could have just pressed Q and, and copied, you know. That's that's the, the pro uh, MLG pro style. All right, so uh, just gotta pipe these in. Don't want the we don't want those two pipes to connect. Uh, actually, you could. You could. Um, uh, yeah, you know what? We don't need two separate. Um, we just need two pumps. What I can do here is throw a buffer, a liquid buffer. Yeah, this will be fine. This 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 will be slightly better for me. Um, this thing can hold a near infinite amount of water. 
we get those two started, so they'll start inputting 1250. This gives us another buffer in case things break, because, you know, they always break. But what we can do here is the pipes can hold quite a lot of throughput, although they do have a limit. But the mod adds really strong... One of the, one of the mods I'm running runs really powerful um, water pumps or liquid pumps. And if I put one of these here, it can output way more than one pump's worth of liquid throughput. Like, these are 1250 per second. This guy can do 18,000 per second, assuming the pipes themselves can handle it. So this is more than enough, and I think this is probably the way to do it. Also, we could use steel pipes to go underground, which is not a vanilla trick, unfortunately, but... Let's see, we should be able to... Well, I don't have enough steel pipes. I, I ran, out of... ran out of them. But... We meant for these to be steel, I just ran out. Uh, but we'll just connect them with normal iron pipes. Nope. Oh, no, no, no. Mistakes were made. Now I gotta clear these out. This is why I almost always just use uh, underground pipes to connect, because if you connect two liquids at the same area, everything breaks! <laughs> Alright, so we're just gonna connect the water... like so... and I ran out of steel pipes, so it's kind of weird steel and then iron, but that gets us water! Water turns into steam. I do need to deal with the garbage out. So what I'll start with here, just to get things started, once again I'll use another liquid buffer or storage tank, whatever you want to call it. That'll fill up with very, well, quite well heated up steam that we can use to generate power. It's also kind of like a battery, because this is conveniently not physically correct or like accurate representation simulation of our real world but there is no heat loss we have we have perfect insulation so we fill this thing up with you know 200,000 um whatever tons weight whatever whatever amount quantity of liquid at 165 celsius and it stays like that forever so it's a perfect you know it's, it's like a um it's like we invented uh you know a perfect insulator maybe a perfect superconductor you actually have no loss for transportation or storage which i mean it's just a factorial thing but but it makes it a really good battery because I think the batteries, the accumulators actually have a small trickle cost. Not like it really matters, but I believe these boys, um, although they store 10 megajoules of energy uh, each, uh, even when they're not running, I think there's a small loss, I think. But I could be wrong. Maybe I'm thinking of a different game, but there should be, you know. We don't actually have superconductors yet, so. Anyway, uh, we got the water, we got the steam, we got the vulcanite into pyroflux. I need to get rid of the garbage, um, and maybe the way I do that is lazy, but, you know, don't hate, don't hate. Uh, I'm going to build a warehouse. Couple belts. And it should come out at a pretty slow rate. I gotta get... <laughs> the stone backed up, that's the problem. I was just talking about this a minute ago. <sighs> okay, first off, very efficient junk storage. Okay, so random junk, and we can theoretically recycle the stone into steam. We've already quarter filled this up anyway, but we need a more permanent solution to all these rocks coming through. Also, I would like to save a little bit of power here, because um, these machines do use a lot of electricity, and I'm trying to expand my power income, but we could also decrease the power expenditure. Uh, right, so what I need... Maybe first step is just get these machines working again, make a little bit of space. And... Uh, You buy those rocks? Yeah, if I could get these from whatever planet moon we're on over to Earth to, to sell them, you're welcome to them, yeah. And I really don't think we make even that many rocks, right? Like, the whole thing is 20... What Each cycle, you get three crushed vulcanite and a quarter of a stone. We don't get that much. We just need to get rid of it. Uh, I think the most efficient way I know at the moment is making landfill. Um... It's still not a permanent sink. Like we, I don't have any kind of void 
black hole pit that we could just delete things in, which is what I would really like to have. Where did I get coal from? <laughs> There's no coal on this planet. Um, I can just have my bots fly this stuff away. Uh, I did mean to turn that back on anyway. Um, so I need a machine. This is all becoming super spaghetti, but I think... You can just turn sand... You can turn stone straight into to landfill. 50 to 1, or you could use sand. Or you could add water to get a more efficient recipe, but I don't care about the efficiency. We're just trying to get rid of it. Uh, so if that's the... But it's... Thinking. Uh, if it consumes 50 sand... Or 200 sand per second, or even faster than that, um, you know, an inserter is not going to keep up, but we do have an alternative trick. I'm just going to move this a little bit further down. This is, this is, this is getting a bit silly. Oh no, it's still using, okay, hold on. No, we have to do two of these things. <laughs> this is great. Um, you're going to love it. These super expensive machines. They, uh, they can input, they, they, they're not like an inserter where you can parallel them and take things off. Uh, but they do draw out of a chest or put into a chest or a inventory at a rate of 30 per second, which is way faster than a fast inserter. And they don't even need electricity. It's, they're great. Um, right, so back to landfill. It's the only way, it still won't even keep up. Like 200 sand per second is insane. But it will flow pretty dang fast, I think. So, so it'll be fine. Give it a little bit of power. And then, you know, ideally here, we're still not wasting a ton of electricity. So we put some efficiency mods in. And I just, I don't want to have to deal with this again. So let's build, oh. I probably have some jet fuel beams up here somewhere. Unless we ran out. I would really prefer not to have to build all of those. Do I have a request for steel beams? We ran out of steel beams. All right. It is what it is. 27 to go. Currently under attack. Back on Novus. That's fine. We are not done yet, but we're making a pretty good dent up here. Like, the power systems... You know, the the, the Pyroflux manufactory or the Vulcanite manufactory is working. Um, we just need to clear out some of these weird backlog bottlenecks. And then I got to turn this all into power, right? So I need... What did I say? Like, 60 steam turbines? Oh, boy. I don't think I brought that many. I, I definitely brought some, but, uh... Well, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 3, that's not far off. This is such a mess. I, I don't like really how, um... I was planning on boiling, I think, uh, solid fuel for oil or something, but we found something better. Uh, you know what? We actually have enough steam engines for the project. That's great. Um... Power. Ran out of power overnight again. Yeah, we got to get this power system working. It's close. We're, we're almost making enough juice to uh, to keep keep the lights on overnight, but not not quite enough. It runs out. It's like in the morning, solar is starting to get going again, but we, the accumulators run out of power before we get there. So yeah, we, we definitely got to fix that up. Now on the other side, um, the actual production of landfill will be pretty slow, so we don't need a super belt here. Okay, and this is basically condensing 200 sand into one tile of landfill. Each slot can hold 200 landfill, which is like... What, 40,000 sand times however many slots are here. This can hold a ridiculous amount of landfill slash sand. Now, it will eventually fill up, but, I mean, like I said, I can't void it right now, so I think this is just gonna have to last. It, and in maybe... Probably could last until the 2 million Vulcanite gets processed. You could do the math. 2.2 million. Uh, for every 6 of that, so 2.2 .2 divided by 6 is, uh, I don't know, 0.4-ish. We'll just say, you know, 400,000, give or take. Um, each cycle, you have a quarter chance of one stone. So 400,000 should get you about 100,000 stone. Each stone is like two and a half sand. So two, two, 250,000 sand. 
some of it will get used for fuel, but not very much. And then 250,000 sand would turn into, well, let's say 200,000 sand, maybe. Uh, but that will turn into a thousand landfill. That's like five tiles of landfill. Assuming I did the math right, which is a huge assumption. <laughs> anyway, let's get this, this show on the road. I think, I think we're doing all right here. Five, six. Um, I'm probably going to make these ten long because I don't want to go too far off into bite. Like, the, the more space we take up, the more uh, more our bots will have to. Forgot I turned my personal Robocoder up. Uh, the further we go, the more bots we'll need to put down, basically. So. I'm just going to use cheap pulls. We have a lot of the medium power pull, or the, the substations. I really like the substations because they've got that gigantic reach. But, um... The medium electric poles are just so cheap and small. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That sounds right. So one run of poles gets us to 40. I guess if I go five further, that would be 60. The 60 is the target number. So we could go a little bit further down and that would cover it. So I think that's that's. Man, robots are good. You're going to love it when we go back to our home base where everything's sort of more automated and the bots do everything more even smoothly than here. Alright, so this should be a pretty significant power upgrade once I connect the water. Uh, I, I don't know if I'll need pumps for these. I didn't really leave much space. I can put them on separate lanes. Because they're going to consume a, quite a lot of liquid. I don't actually know if this makes a difference, the way, uh, uh, as far as I understand anyway, fluids are kind of finicky in Factorio, uh, pipes and fluid dynamics are a little bit weird, so trying to keep them separated I, I think might be a good idea. Anyway, it looks like it's working. So that should provide plenty of juice, uh, that should be 60 turbines at 750 kilowatts each, they're using about half of it right now. And that should cover us during the night time. So that way the accumulators won't need to burn out. And then therefore the machines will work. And then during the daytime, the solar can cover us. And uh, the accumulators are going to be there more for, um, you know, the lasers. The, the shooting shooting of biters when they get too close. On the plus side, this isn't very pollutey either. The, the engines themselves don't pollute. These machines, the, the chemical processing, you know. Looks like the bots are catching up on the Vulcanite. Okay, I th I'm pretty happy with that. That was an easy enough little bit baby project. Little baby project for us. Yeah, steam engines are doing a much better job. And to be fair, I don't think we're going to actually use steam as quickly as we're generating it here. Even with just with this one chemical plant. Uh, I think this is this is going to have a small tax on our, or our Vulcanite. But we're not we're not running at full speed, which means we're not burning the steam full speed. I don't think, unless there's some kind of weird backup somewhere here. But no, these things are full of steam. This thing's nearly full, so it kind of balances the load in the pipes a little bit. And then these these aren't even running right now during the day, so it just fills up. Yeah. So this is a, a ton more power than we need right now. Great. Uh, meanwhile. I think the the stone backlog is probably not going to be a problem. If my math is even close to correct, this will hold more landfill and sand than uh, than we need. I'm going to actually prioritize the right side here because uh, this is the garbage dump. We want to make sure the sand gets used for power first before it uh, gets thrown away, basically. Similar to how we prioritize the power here. Okay. Then we can clean this place up a little bit. And now we got to get into fuel production for the rockets, which isn't going to be super complicated. Oh yeah, we have no meteor defense here either, so meteors could kind of wreck our stuff. Not much I can do about it. My bots do have a, a good number of repair packs if things are damaged, but if the if the if the rock lands somewhere, if the meteor lands somewhere important, there's just nothing I can do about it right now. 
Uh, I do have, like, you know, shooting down meteor defense on my home planet, but, you know, we're not there. So... Fuel. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do a ton of ratio math here. Uh, I won't need these anymore. This was part of my preparing for Vulcanite processing, just trying to make sure I knew what I was doing. So we got a little bit of space. Well, there's biter meteors on some planets, so we're going to have to have a plan eventually there, David. Um, now, we've got the oil. The oil comes in right here. This is our main oil storage tank. I can... Well, it's already piped up along here if I want some. And I'm not using as much petroleum gas as I've prepared. So, like, these guys are offline a good amount of the time. And I also make more sulfur than I need. I'm pretty confident. I generally just overkill it. The best kind of killing. So I think we're going to want... So this is oil refinery. They look very similar, but these are big fuel refineries. So I need at least three big fuel refineries for these steps. And at least one atmospheric condenser. And maybe more than one light oil. But then I also need... Oh, that's right. Twitch says I stopped? That's weird. I can double check real quick to see if Steam on my side knows what's going on. Uh, as far as I can see, Twitch still looks live for me. So it's probably just a weird app thing then, I'm guessing. But for today especially, because I'm definitely out of practice and I don't trust these stream services very much. <laughs> Uh, yeah, please let me know if there's anything weird going on, if you notice it. it. Sometimes it'll be on your end, but if it is on my end, I'll, I'll try to fix it. Uh, so I think I'm going to want a couple crude oil to light oil. But as always, we get other stuff, like heavy oil, which I don't really have a use for. Although, um, Uh, the goal here is to make um, solid fuel. So you can turn heavy oil into solid fuel and light oil into... I mean, you can turn anything into solid fuel. It's just fuel. Um, but the trick here is we don't want... We don't want a backlog. Like, we need to keep producing light oil. So we need a... We basically need a way to void excess gas and heavy oil. Otherwise, we won't be able to do this recipe here. So, like, this isn't necessarily safe, even if all the heavy oil and light oil gets turned to solid fuel. Because if the if the solid fuel backs up, this stops, and then the heavy oil backs up, and then this stops, and we have no light oil. So that won't really work. Um, I can add it to the system, but I think what I actually need to do is use these flare stacks. And basically have a small logic network where if it's... Like, I need a... A t maybe use some storage tanks or something. And if they're above, like, 90%, then we just void it, basically. Which is a waste, but, y you know. Um, we don't want this to turn off, really, because we, we need it for our rockets. And eventually, we will have rockets flying back and forth from our bases. Uh, so having this working kind of long-term would be nice. Okay, I'm just going to manually supply iron... Uh, let me let me do a quick math for oxygen, see if I need, like, the goal is to keep, like, one of these machines running mostly full-time if we can pull it, um, which is 100 oxygen per second. It's got a crafting speed of 2, so 2 seconds divided by 2, so it's 100 oxygen every second. This guy can create not even close, uh, 30 oxygen in 7 seconds, uh, slightly faster, 1.5 speed, so... You could just times it by 50%. Every 7 seconds, you get 45 oxygen. And then divide by 7 per second. 45 divided by 7 is uh, 6 and a bit, right? I think. 6 and a bit is not very close to 100, though. So we're going to be severely oxygen starved if we go this route. Or we burn a ton of electricity. And, like, these things are expensive. These things use 4 megawatts of power Unless, I mean, I can I can decrease that, of course, but... Nope, I cannot. Each atmospheric condenser is 4 megawatts. So if I made enough atmospheric condensers to run an oxygen plant, or the, the oxygen part of this 
Man, that's just gonna sink my power network. I don't like that very much. There are other ways to get hydrogen. Maybe let's talk about those for a second then. Or er, not hydrogen, oxygen. Oxygen. You're an oxygen. Uh product. So we need ingredient product up. Okay, so there is effectively two ways to get oxygen. We can use the atmospheric condenser like we have, which is very expensive for power to give us a small amount of oxygen. Or we could do water separation, which we do have at an electrolysis plant, which I don't think is going to be much better. But hey, let's have a quick look. I don't think I brought any, so we'll just build one quick. And in the background, I'm going to build some steel bars because I definitely thought I brought some and I did not. Steel bars. Steel beans. We'll build like 100 in the background while we're planning. Uh, also, I see I have an exclamation mark here. I have unlocked advanced additional electric engines from research. I don't know what they're for, really. I think you can put them in cars, but I don't really have any cars. So it's kind of a new thing for me I've never seen before. Uh, there is some research we could be doing while we're here. Uh, like I, the the cryo cryonite processing has unlocked utility science. I've only I, I make it very slowly, but we could queue up anything that uses. Um, if we go back to the actually, what am I, what am I even doing here? Um, I totally lost where I was in my research tree. Um, but yeah, anything that comes off of this branch, which includes some of these cool skeletons and stuff, we could be researching. Um, hey there, Char. So I could start going to telescopes. There's another tier of military tech. The problem is most of the stuff they did unlock I'm not very excited about. Like, sure, heavy rockets are, are interesting. And Immersite, I don't really have Immersite processing yet. That's another material I haven't really set up. Um, there's very expensive artillery cannon upgrades, but like 3750 for research, that's way too much. There's rail guns, but it needs the Vulcanite stuff. Um, I can't really afford efficiency modules 4, and they're not that good, so it doesn't really matter. Um, Hypercooling is... I don't think I need that yet either. There's a portable pa solar panels upgrade for your, your power armor, but again, it uses Immersite. I think the night goggles use Immersite. And the exoskeleton... I guess I... Oh, no, no. It's it's uh, utility plus production. So once we get this red stuff working, we can make our we can make ourselves faster with, with better legs. So that'll be cool. So there's not too many things worth researching, probably. It'd be nice to get more worker bot speed, but that requires orange science, which I believe is the one that needs the Vegemite... Vegemalange, right? I think. So, in terms of value, there's really not much. Um, I guess there's not much left to research. I could do this, but it's too expensive. Could do this, but it's low value. I don't know. I've never really used these personal laser defense things. I think I should just crack out some of the really cheap ones that I have just been ignoring. Um, like... Swarm safety is not cheap. So, this is an interesting one. As you get more and more logistic bots and there's like interference with the robots, this tech is a repeatable, will protect up to a certain number of bots or logistic bots specifically. So, but it's at tier three right now, or no, it's at tier two right now. So a thousand are safe. And if I research this again, up to 1500 are safe. But if you have more than that, they crash. So on this planet, I guess no matter what the interference is, we only have 150 logistic bots, which means, I believe, um, they should never crash. So that sounds good, actually. I, I should research more tiers. There's fancy energy catalogs. I have no idea what any of this stuff is. Literally no idea. I feel like this is all leading into another tier of science that's way, way too far away right now. Um, telescope, I think, will tell us about the planets around the other stars. And then there's like better storage, which is fine. Whatever, the, the telescope's cheap, let's just do that. It's something to happen in the background, you know? Alright, let's do the fuel. Or at least let's try. 
Oh, right. No, I was waiting for... That's why I was, I was waiting for the electrolysis. Now, see, my initial problem here is the atmospheric condenser is 4 megawatts. Electrolysis is 5 megawatts. So unless it's giving us even a better oxygen income, which I don't know... I can flare stack the, 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 the hydrogen away. But this is going to get us 20 oxygen every 6 seconds at a 1 to 1 speed there, crafting speed of 1. So like that's even slower than this for even more power. Kind of sucks. You'd think the one that requires water and has two outputs and is a bit finicky to set up might be more efficient than the one that is just a fire and forget. Just plop it down and you get it. Like this should be the least efficient, but I don't think it is. Hmm. All right. Well, I get the feeling we're just going to be significantly oxygen limited in our in our rocket fuel, unless there's a different recipe. Uh, they all use oxygen because um, we need to make these solid rocket fuels to get out of here. There's really no option. We could try to use ammonia, but it uses even more oxygen. We could try to use light oil. This is the one I plan to use, or we could try to use hydrogen chloride. Um, I mean, this doesn't require oil. Actually, that research went really fast. Wow, must have a nice backlog of the, the blue tech. Um, chloride, chlorine you can get out of water and, and, uh, like rocks, I think you can, you can effectively turn it into chlorine. And then, um, hydrogen, you, you still need an atmospheric condenser to get hydrogen or something, right? So, I don't think that's worth it. I, I think, I think the light fuel is still the best. Click this. Did it unlock anything? Atmospherics facility. What's this? Combines, compares, and quantifies different sources. Sure. You know what? It's only a hundred research of all of our stuff. One day we'll be doing space telescope science. It's, it's, it's a bit of a long ways away. All right. So this is this is the recipe we got to use. Um, it is what it is. We're gonna be harshly limited by atmospheric uh, oxygen. Harshly, harshly limited. So I'm going to try to build... I probably brought some with me, didn't I? Atmospheric condensers. Oh, I could do the... Uh... Yeah, the easiest way when you've got a bunch of stupid chests is just to be like, Hey, bots, please bring me some of these. And then you just have to find it in here once rather than check every treasure chest. Uh, which is really easy to find. Just look. look I'm looking right at it. There's a... Uh... It's on this page. It's somewhere near the top. It sort of looks like these. Yeah, that one. And we have nothing in storage. Great. Well, that'll that'll teach me. So I was clearly making a you know when I when I set my rocket here, I brought a lot of resources, but clearly not everything. Okay. Well, let's clean this up. We know what we need to do. You know what you need to do. We're going to use these. We're just going to keep them in line. And I don't actually think we're going to even need two of them. But I'll put two down so that it's sort of extendable a little bit. But this is probably more light oil than we'll need. And we'll just connect uh, the crude oil in, which won't take very long. This is all pretty automatic once we've done this once or twice. They also don't use all that much water. Um... So I've got one water pump feeding the the gas refineries, one water pump feeding the sulfur, one water pump feeding um, the vulcanite, and then two water pumps feeding the steam engines. I probably don't need to, but I guess I'll give them their own. Uh, we finished some more research. Great. Uh, so now we know how to make an astrometrics facility. I would like to have coal liquefaction. There's some very nice uses of this one for excess coal. But uh, some of these things I just can't. I, there's like a big mining drill I'd like to have. But we got to get this uh, red science going from this vulcanite. That's the whole goal here is start improving our pro manufacturing. Um, okay, we're going to need some power. We'll just lazy man it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's... 
I can do it like this. I have to get more pipes. Oh, no, no, no. Never mind. Can't do that. Um... There we go. And this will be fairly easy to extend. If we do need more uh, refineries, we can we can slap them in there pretty easy. Oh, you're more of an Emacs guy than a Notepad++ guy? Okay, okay. As long as you're not like a, a Vi guy or something. Oh, text editors. I I don't I like Notepad plus plus. It's pretty good. It's not quite as lightweight, but it's still pretty lightweight. Okay, so those guys going light oil, bam. But it also gives us a bunch of other junk. We have to make sure we deal with the gas and the um, the gas and the heavy oil. So first off, I will still route. Um, one line, I, I will route the gas down into the tank because it can be used by other things, but then I need it to be one way. Uh, I have to put a pump down here because, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, so the pump here, I don't really need it for, for throughput purposes. But I don't want these refineries to turn on and go into a vent stack and get deleted. I only want to delete gas first if we don't need it here. And we don't need it for solid fuel in liquid, like to make the rocket fuel. If we don't need it for any of those purposes, then vent it. But don't be just making pure gas to vent it. That's silly. Um, so that one-way pipe should cover that. We might need to make a little bit of a logic thing. So let's... Before I forget, let's queue up some... Uh, I actually have a fair number, but we, we do need some um, circuit networks just to make sure those work. Yeah, that sounds about right, David. <laughs> I, 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 you probably need a gun before I go through that ridiculous text editor. Man, I remember the first few times I tried to use it. and I, I don't know, I probably forgot most of it by now, but just... Even just moving the cursor around, or well, even no mouse, but you, keyboard controls to move the cursor. I always thought, like, however they program, or however they design that, I'm like, man, this is, this is definitely created by an artist. <laughs> this is not created by someone who understands, like, convenient user design. And once you learn it, you've learned it, it's fine, but sheesh, sheesh. Ah, oh, good old times, good old times. I'm sure there's plenty of viewers who are like, what are you guys talking about? Just go look it up. Find find a find a tutorial on programming in Linux. Probably will do it. Um, oh, I've got a logistics bot. Hey, be free logistics bot. Uh, all right, so uh, chemical plants. That's next. So we want most of what we're getting is light oil. So I'm going to use two with a gap, and then I'm going to. This one is still solid fuel. But this is the, we're trying to get rid of our heavy oil. Because we could crack. We could go heavy oil to light oil. Is it worth it? So the goal here is to turn everything from these two machines basically into uh, rocket fuel. Which is going to be done primarily... Uh, actually, it's, is it not a chemical plant? Right, I actually have the wrong one. It's a uh, fuel refinery. So. Gotta make sure I have the right building. So we're trying to turn light oil into solid fuel. Simple enough. And I'll maybe need two of those. I, I don't know. Now, I can turn heavy oil into solid fuel. Or I could turn heavy oil into light oil by adding a bit of water and some power. And then just run it in. I'm not sure which one is better. I'm going to use this because cracking sounds fun. But I could be convinced that this is a bad idea. Uh, we're going to need to do a little bit of creative routing here. As is the norm for liquid refinery stuff. Uh, but there is water nearby. I mean, this is the kind of thing where if you didn't have water on the planet, you'd have your hands tied a bit more. But, as long as we have access to power and water, 
we can pretty efficiently turn all the heavy oil into light oil, which will clear out one of the egg outputs. I feel like I'm going to want at least one buffer tank of some sort. I don't want a huge one, but we'll, we'll put a medium-sized one in here. And then we're just going to buffer the light oil. I still will need a stack, so let's set that up. I'll need to burn off excess... Um, how do I do this? I'm trying to remember again how to do these. I think I actually need a... Uh, I think you have to use a pump to control, like, the, the, the on-off switch. Like, we don't... I don't think there's any valve controls, or maybe there is, but I haven't found them. So, the way I will do this is... Any liquid that goes into the flare stack will be vented and just deleted, basically. But we don't want it running all the time. So we... Okay... Right, this will control it, but we need to measure... What are we using to measure that we need it? Uh, this is why I usually have a tank or something. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because um, I, I, I don't think you can read from a pipe. Like, you can read from a belt. Yeah, you can't connect to, to pump, to, to pipes. All right, so we'll have to put down a little... Um, I don't even need a big one here. This, this is super minor. Where's the liquids? The regular liquid storage tank. They're in a different location. These are the modded liquid storage tanks, the, the big ones. Uh, the, the vanilla ones are here. Okay, that's just gonna sit there. A small amount of heavy oil from the light oil re refinery will end up here. Some of it will get cracked, but the light oil will probably back up. So if this ever fills up, and it can hold 25,000. Connect the wire so we can read from it. And then on the pump, now that we've got the logic wires, we can say if there is greater than, doesn't really matter, equal to, um, my constant will just be, it doesn't really matter, let's just say 20,000, uh, yeah, it's fine, this, this, that's 5,000 spare, it shouldn't matter. If this is holding 20,000 oil, start venting the... Start venting. Once it's under 20,000, then it should turn off, and we won't waste any more. But it's a pretty big buffer there. That's more than we need, I think. I'll probably want to do something similar for light oil and um, petroleum as well. So for the petroleum... Uh... Can't, this is just like this is actually more of the overflow line. Maybe I shouldn't do this. This the idea for this is to not waste all of it, but it's gonna be more complicated and kind of just annoy me. I think. I think we might just vent all the petroleum here and be like, whatever. I don't care, man. Uh, how much percent do we get? A hundred crude oil turns into thirty petroleum. I mean, yeah. But you can't up it. You can't go from petroleum to light oil, I don't think. So... Lazy Ankylo. Not the hugest fan of just literally destroying it, but... Um, sometimes... That's just the best answer. So we'll never... We should never have a gas backup. And we should never have a heavy oil backup. Then we just use the light oil to turn into solid fuel, and also the next step where we're making the, the um, rocket fuel. So if I can fit a storage tank in here for light oil, that should get the job done. That's what I was imagining in my head at least. Connect those up. So that's an input. Uh, these would also be inputs. And then this is the output sides. That should work think. Could, I mean, I could be totally wrong, but I've been playing Factorio for a while. I, I generally know how to handle things. Right? All right. I'm really not super worried about efficiency on these bad, bad boys or productivity. So if possible, I'm just going to try to cut the energy cost down a little bit. 
Um, we have lots of oil, and this is just oil, really. So the most important thing is that we don't overload our power network, I would say. And we will need... Inside grabber that one, and outside grabber that one. Okay, that gives us solid fuel. We're probably halfway through the liquid fuel. Maybe a little bit over halfway through. We will also need more light oil, so don't forget about him. I don't think anything can back up like this. Alright, so then we need another one of these machines, and this one... There's only going to be one, right? Because we know we're going to be hard limited by oxygen. Oops. Problem with medium poles. Okay. Uh, now I might say, because we are limited by oxygen, you might be like, maybe productivity would be better here. Because there's no way that this machine is ever going to run at full speed, right? Unless I make a ton of oxygen, this guy will always be running, waiting for oxygen, right? And I'm just going to put a... box doesn't really matter where I can certainly automate this more in the future if I need to but I'm being real lazy with iron right now uh, it doesn't use very much and I can fill that up way more so if I turn my logistics off I know we brought I'm sure I brought a few thousand iron with me because you don't want to run out of stuff like iron yeah we, we got tons of iron I'm pretty confident that uh, 4,000 iron will make us... Well, I did the math, right? Was Well, we'll see. It's a test. 4,000 iron, let's see at the end of the day how much, uh, rocket fuel that gets us. Or, like, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna make 23,000 rocket fuel here, plus whatever's in the storage. How much iron will be left, do you think, right? And that'll give us a bit of an idea without having to pull out a calculator. Uh, alright, so we can just wire the oil in. That's, or lead the oil in, I suppose. That's enough. Well, when I said we were halfway done, this is more like three quarters done. But, uh, yeah, now we need that oxygen, and that's the trick. Um, also running out of space here, but... Okay. Put them over here. I'm gonna put four down. I don't know if I like it, because this is a lot of electricity. Um... And you can't even efficiency mod them, so, like, it's always expensive. But there you go. That should do it. Uh, that will generate us solid rocket fuel. That's... There is one step remaining, because we don't actually need these... Uh, solid rocket fuel works for uh, your boosters. Oh, by the way, I found the button to, to use my jetpack. It's pretty cool. Just flying around stuff. Hey, hey, excuse me. You're not allowed to shoot those. Come on this way. Those are only big biters, so we can kill them, but... Um, yeah, trying to fight uh, behemoths like that and, and some of the really... The Leviathan behemoth class biters... We, we need to expand, uh, as our pollution goes crazy, we really need, like, a solid wall system to, to protect our borders. We're getting there. We're, we're almost done the, the current project. Fun. Uh, alright. So. Um, right. Solid fuel doesn't get used for much, but we do use it in our, um, jetpack. And, um, you can use it to launch, like, if I was in an emergency... Uh, I can make like a basic space capsule, the thing at the top, and just bring some liquid fuel in a, in, well, solid liquid fuel, whatever. <laughs> fuel that is rocket fuel that is currently in a iron, you know, bucket, basically. Um, but that's not what we actually want to fill up the engine, because you have to turn to liquid, so we have to unpack it, which is simple enough. And um, I didn't put it in the right tile, so let me there. Nope. That 
one, please. Wait, what was... Oh, I didn't even see this one. This is something I've never even looked at. This must be a relatively recent unlock. So we technically could ignore the oil and use the pyroflux to make rocket fuel. But you still need oxygen. Although not as much. Half as much oxygen. You need the same amount of iron, but then you need pyroflux. And I'd still have to get coal. And there's no coal on the planet. I mean, that actually might have been a good idea. Okay, if I'd seen that, I might have tried to use that recipe. But, you know, it's already done at this point, so whatever. Uh, please use the unloading list project. Wow, you can productivity module... It's not an infinite loop, because I don't think there's a recipe to take liquid rocket fuel and then repackage it. But usually you're not allowed to put productivity modules in those kind of systems, because then you could just funnel it around in a circle and make infinite. Like, as long as you had enough electricity, you could just infinite it. You start with one and eventually you'd have, in, you know, millions. But, um, usually those kind of recipes are banned. Probably for good reason. Alright, so then we want another storage tank. For sure. Might as well use a big one. And from here, uh, I mean, this rocket really doesn't need to be there specifically. That's just where it happened to be, but... Um, right, this machine was my cargo rocket unpacker. So when I traveled here, I brought a bunch of cargo, cargo rocket sections that were packaged. And then we unpacked them to rebuild it. Because we needed to build a rocket when we got here, basically. Uh, which we did. Uh, you know, if I just... Uh, just need to connect to one of these uh, liquid intakes. And... It looks like Pyroflux, but this is just your regular old uh, liquid rocket fuel. Alright, there we go. That should do it. I could put a pump in, maybe just to make sure it goes smoothly, but other than that, we're good. So now, in a minute, we'll be able to get off this planet, uh, once this starts filling up. And we have got, at the very least, we have gathered 14,000 Vulcanite, which is probably enough for quite a lot of the next tier of research. Um, I mean, I have to process it into the next science, but um, that's already a pretty good start. Let's see if our uh, refinery is still working. This is a good sign. It's certainly not the most optimal or efficient, and I ran out of modules and stuff up halfway through, but it seems like the enriching process is, you know, the green lights are on here for the centrifuges, and the uh, furnaces seem to be... Well, I, I, I planned on, you know, considerably more mass production. It just turns out the recipe here was really quick. So... Without the productivity modules, one furnace was enough to cover all of this input, basically. So, the productivity does give us some free vulcanite out of it. So, you could say, although we started with, uh... Oh, they're right there. This is a behemoth snapper. They suck. And I have like... <laughs> I actually have like really good uh, armor, like power armor mark 2 with like some shields and stuff. What was that? Two hits I was dead? Now I'm just super slow, but we can get it all back. Please stop chewing my robots. Alright. Alright, as described, defenses are a problem. This is really, really bad. Holy crap. So, part of my problem here, obviously they dodged my defenses. Um, my alert system... Jeez, 
I can't tell what planet is under attack. Oh, this is this is bad. I thought we had enough for a bit longer, but So I don't know what the the goal here is. Like I said earlier in the stream, well we, we need to finish clearing this up first and then I'll I'll try to describe what I'm talking about. Um I mean, I have up-to-date weapons. Don't don't misunderstand. I have researched all of the weapons, and I've got up-to-date ammunition and stuff. Like we're using uranium bullets and uranium freaking antimatter rifles and stuff. We are not short on equipment. Oh, that was rough. So first, I couldn't tell what was under attack because usually the alerts are it's on a different planet. No, nope, this was on this planet, and I guess you know they just walked in from an angle that didn't aggro on my, my, my laser turrets, which, you know, to be fair, I only have like three outposts nearby, so sure, I didn't defend this angle well enough. My bad. But I didn't think things were going to be this bad, because our home planet, which has been kind of crazy, yes, it's, it's rated at 67% threat out of like 100%. So I thought like the amount of biters we had here, and like you've seen some of the bases, right? This is 67% threat, plus all of the pollution evolving them for the entire game we've been on, where they start with small and they eventually evolve into stronger and stronger biters. And eventually we got these giant bases that are pretty strong and, and whatever, right? Like, I thought I thought that was like, sure, 67% threat, plus a lot of pollution over a long time. Come to this planet, instead of 67%, it's 7%. Hardly anything. That's like a tenth. So I'm like, sure, they'll be biters, right? But they'll probably be small biters and medium biters. And we, maybe eventually they'll grow into big behemoths. But I figured we'd have more time. Well, that's definitely not how it works. Because <laughs> those were all mega biters. And this doesn't look very much different than my home base. Because we've got big worms. We've got behemoth worms. We've got, you know, leviathan biters and stuff. So it, the problem I have is, like, if there are any biters... It seems like they're all at maximum strength. Even if it says 7%, it might as well be 67%, right? So that kind of sucks. Um, and it did mess up some of my stuff here. Um, the bots have done a pretty good job repairing things. I lost about 20 logistic bots, but, you know, it's fine. We ran out of miners, and that's, that's not great. That must mean we don't have any left. I brought... Unless they're in my inventory. Yeah, 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 we're good, we're good here. Um... Did I turn my, my personal report? Why aren't you? I have a tier two roboport. Oh, did all my bots die? So I usually have a request, a permanent request for 30 construction robots. But I think they don't, they aren't working um, when we're not constructing them. Are you, are you gonna... There we go. Yeah. I don't have to rebuild all this stuff. This is what robots are for. <laughs> but as long as I've got the machines set up, you know, we're, we're good. <laughs> Anything else? What about this thing? Yeah, there's there's some, some, some serious alien vibes, no doubt. Uh, we researched uh, weird telescope things. We've got bigger chests. We can continue researching big chests for, for Robert's Island. Um, we've also researched various bits of uh, space telescope information, which is so far away, it's not very high on my list. Uh, so what are these machines? These are pulverizers. I thought I had some of those, but again, I, I guess we used them all already, and I wasn't expecting them to get destroyed. Uh, pulverizers need iron plates. If there were any in here, they should have been grabbed already to replace them. So if I, uh... oh, when you die, right, right, right. One of the things that happens when you die is it turns off your auto personal logistics. That, that's what was tricking me. All right, we'll build some of those. We'll get that replaced. And then we really need to get the defenses going. So what we actually lost, the, the biggest thing we lost there was any modules that were in the buildings that the biters destroyed. Because I don't have a lot of spare modules. Now, I wasn't using a lot, but 
you know, whatever I was using is gone. Fix it. Oh, these things take forever to build, I see. There. Uh, it does remember the recipe and everything, so so that's fine. It just lose it just doesn't have all of the um What am I trying to say? It, it doesn't have all of the uh, modules that were lost. I've been trying to rebuild some of my efficiency modules. Just See, this does lower uh, pollution and energy use a little bit, so it, it will reduce some of the biter's attacks by, by being a bit more proactive. So, okay, we need defenses. Um, in theory, everything's ready except defenses. Liquid fuel's filling up, although it's, it's going to take a while. And I do need to keep an eye on it to make sure it keeps working. I think we're just limited on oxygen. Like I said before, that was the, the big bottleneck. So I can either spend more power and build more atmospheric condensers to speed it up, or we can just be patient. And I don't want to stress our power network too much more with these four megawatt plants. Because I can't I can't help them. If I keep building efficiency modules, I can drop down a lot of the other machines. Although, uh, we're running out of parts, so yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, I am starting to run a little bit low on my uh, pre-builds. So let's grab... I did bring a lot of laser turrets and walls. Let's uh, make sure our inventory is stacked so we can try to build some defenses. I didn't think I was going to need this much, honestly. I, I should build... I don't even have time. I need, I need to build like a wall around these miners. Um, like this is way more aggressive than I was expecting for 7%. This is crazy. Please just give me a minute here, guys. Jeez. Um, all right, we, we, have a, we have a thing here. This will work for now. I don't know how many, because they're already fully evolved. Like, I'm going to need quite a lot of lasers to hold them off. Um, I, I should probably try to get flamethrowers working. Which, we have oil, so we, we definitely can do that. I just, it's it's a lot more work. Uh, also, hey there, Spiller. Thanks for the uh, the Twitch sub. Yeah. Cool stuff. Okay, so what am I looking for? I'm looking for walls. I need my walls. I hope that I brought a lot more walls with me than I'm thinking I did. Robots, bring me the walls. All right, they know what chest it's in. It looks like we got a good amount. Uh, we have 450 in our inventory and 180 left. So we got about 600 walls to work with. And these are good walls. Like these are like tier three walls. So they're fine, but they're kind of expensive to make just out here. We're building walls. We're gonna make the aliens pay for it. And at least these walls might be harder to climb, right? Literally concrete wall with like metal spikes. <laughs> It's great. Uh, they do actually take damage if they charge into it, apparently. But unfortunately, because we're dealing with behemoths, we actually need three tiles thick. Because they deal damage through it, and we can't have them destroying the turrets while we're fighting them off. And then you need enough to wrap it around, because they are sometimes smart enough to go around the outside. Like them uh, girls we know. And uh, that causes some more problems. So, I need to figure out a solution. And now the back might not need as much walls, but but the front for sure needs the three tiles thing. Let's see, how are we doing? Like, my laser turrets are very strong. Like, I have upgraded them quite a lot. Before I came here, I specifically researched the laser weapon upgrade with techs that we could get. So we're up to, like, we've got five tiers of energy weapon damage and some number of tiers of energy uh, shooting speed. So my, my my turrets are pretty well upgraded, and I can't do this tech the next level till quite a lot later anyway. We don't have anything close to orange silence. So, like, these laser turrets are doing 72 damage per second or whatever. No, they shoot 3.6 times per second and deal 72 damage per tick of that 3.6 per second. Uh, so, like, they're pretty good, but, um, and the robots repair everything, so, like, it's, it's an okay system. But, 
there's just way too many well, it's way too aggro so we need a we need a better solution here i think light oil happens to be a very good flamethrower fuel although pyroflux is also an even better flamethrower fuel um you know you know when you know you know um generally speaking flamethrower turrets use very little ammunition for what they kill um Gun turrets tend to burn through resources very quickly. Laser turrets are good, but they do rely on your energy network. And uh, I think, you know, I don't know the balance of the game. Different monsters have different damage resistances. So laser type versus like energy damage. Flame type is fire damage. And um, your bullets can do all kinds of damage. Like my uranium bullets do both physical and radioactive damage. Um, so depending on the kind of bullets you want to make, you can, you can get more. And I think having a variety of damage types is probably good because, you know, um, different biters might be resistant to different types. So if we actually start to store up Pyroflux, which was not my original plan, but actually I don't want a giant storage. I think, I think the merely large storage will be enough. I just don't want to have like 500,000 Pyroflux sitting here that gets eaten by a biter and then dies. This stuff is pretty valuable. Like, I, I don't want to burn it all. How's our sand doing anyway? We, we're doing okay with this? It looks like our sand backup has been dealt with and there's not very much. Yeah, the landfill system will work. This will last ages. We could route the stone in here, but it doesn't really matter. This should be fine. Power system. Uh, our total possible production is Depends on the daytime. Uh, it's 59 megawatts plus whatever this max is out at. 64 times 750, so 59 plus 40 megawatts. So we've got about 100 megawatts-ish, depending on the time of day. And then the batteries can help out. Um, we're only using about half of that, so we're doing okay. I think we can run a lot of laser turrets. Like, that's not a problem. But I only brought so many, and I don't think we can make more here. So... I have to make some flamethrower turrets, and I think we're going to use some cool sauce pyroflux. Now, let me see what I need to do to build flamethrower turrets, because I don't think I brought any, because I really didn't think this world would be so terrible. We can definitely make some. Now, I think I have multi-cylinder engines here. I brought, uh, I brought a lot of random stuff when I flew here. Uh, multi-cylinder engines. There we go. So we got lots of those. So I don't need to craft them manually. We might... We'll definitely be able to make a couple dozen uh, flamethrower turrets, I think. And then it's just a matter of piping around the pyroflux. So... Let's see. Uh, get rid of the gun turret here. We're going to be throwing down flamers. I'm also going to request all of my laser turrets now, just because I need to know how many I have, right? For If we're going to make some sort of wall defense, kind of need to know what I've got available. So there are 44 turrets in my inventory, 93 on the way. So we've only got 130 left, 137 left. Which is lots, but, you know, there's a lot of biters. There's super aggro. Um, let me double check... Yeah, it just wires in just like usual. Uh, yeah, so the fluid multiplier, that's the thing that matters. Um, Pyroflux is a 120% fluid multiplier. If you throw if you throw crude oil in, which is super easy, you don't even have to process it just straight from the pump into the flamethrower, you get 100% fluid damage. But it's a multiplier. And the thing with multipliers is flamethrowers, if you've never played, maybe if you have played, but if you didn't know... Uh, flamethrower turrets are really good with multiplicative stuff, just the way they're built. So, when you research the flamethrower upgrades, it'll say, like, plus 20% fire damage, plus 20% flamethrower turret damage. But they both apply to flamethrower turrets. So, if you have a flamethrower weapon, you'll just get 20% from that tech. If you have a flamethrower turret, you'll get 20% more damage for fire, and 20% more turret damage. And they multiply, so it's, like, 44%. But there's a lot of techs that do that. So we've got like five or six levels of plus 20 or 30% damage. And yeah, if you look at the actual multipliers there, we're up to, you know, 100 base damage plus 224 fire per second. 
and 90 damage, 90 per second plus 202, right? So it adds a lot. And then we might as well add another 20%, right? Like, might as well use the good fuel. Assuming we make enough, which, well, we'll find out. But, um... It's kind of wasting our new rare resource, but it's also kind of cool, so I think... I think that's what I want to do. So, the plan then is to circle... I don't need to circle this part. This is just... Well, I might want to put a couple turrets over here, flamethrower turrets, but... But yeah, the, the, the biters are coming real close. I think I just need to pick some lines. You know, kind of maybe use the edge of this lake. Maybe go horizontal or vertically down. Uh, I don't think they generally attack steam engines because they don't pollute. They generally just target things that pollute. Meanwhile, while I'm trying to plan anything, we're under attack again. Would you please come this way? I mean, this is actually the worst. If they destroy my rocket, I'm, I'm going to be really mad, so. Are you guys, are you guys done? As long as they're only, um, is there another one in here? I hear the biting sound. Oh, there he is. He blended in. Those bots are pretty good with their repair packs though. This is ridiculous. Yeah, just use the rifle, I guess. I, I think, unfortunately, my, my uh, machine gun is, is, is trash. I think we need to get rid of it. <laughs> it doesn't do enough damage. All right, all right. Um, I really need to defend this area. I can't have them being... I, if they destroy this rocket launcher, I'm, I'm, I'm doomed. That's too much resources. So... We're going we're gonna to do a horizontal wall, lake to lake, lake somewhere down here and just wrap it up and uh, we're just gonna have to make it work I guess I'll need to put a couple more robo ports down to make sure it's all covered by the network so they can be repaired but hard save I uh, will be okay I don't want to I don't want to save scum it yet although we're I don't think we're gonna have enough walls actually is what's gonna happen uh, I should probably put that. No, this will be fine. Uh, so the trick with walls, you got to make sure the enemies can't just walk around them. Um, they can walk over the shallow water, but as long as you can't, I don't think the enemies can. Should be okay. I'm just going to start with a double thick because I'm pretty sure we're going to run out. I might actually have to downgrade the interior parts of the wall. So, like, the outside will be steel and the inside might just be stone. Because, uh, I don't think we're going to have enough. But we're going to try to, um, recycle here a little bit. Uh, I'm going to leave that tile open. And then we're going to give power. I did bring lots of these with me. Uh, one more, probably. I also don't really want all these cliffs. Cliffs can be okay for defense routing, but... Um, yeah. So, starting with laser turrets. I don't think I can do a double lane of them all around the base. So a single lane will have to do for now. And I'll be putting flamethrower turrets behind them, which is still a pretty good amount of overlap damage. Like, fire and, and energy should be good. I have to, ru I have to route in all of the... Um, the fuel. So what I'll do is I'm going to spread these out maybe like one per substation for now because I, I really we're not going to have all that many. And flamethrowers do do a lot of damage. They're, they're good. So that's, that's not in line. Also my music ended. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to switch out the music without having us base die. So someone oh no on the last song. Uh, we're going we're gonna to switch from chill because the chill is gone. The take it easy one. We're getting attacked like crazy now. So let me pick a new uh, OC remix uh, playlist from their, their channel. Um, I don't know if there's any good alien planet kind of music-y things. 
Castlevania, sure. We'll give them a shot. Alright, but I, I really gotta focus here. We gotta get this liquid fuel going. So... Let's finish the horizontal, or the vertical line. We've definitely got to cover at least to like this corner here, right? And I have to I have to expand my RoboPort network too, which is going to cost more power. But we'll make a quick defensive wall, and we'll be okay. I, I know you guys can't see because I don't have a face cam, but uh, I cringed. <laughs> I don't know how okay we're going to be. But we seem to be getting attacked on this side the most, so I figured we start here. Substations down here next. Uh, I might throw some radars down when I'm done, just so we can see them building their bases in the background, but lower priority at the moment. And I've got a few of those already. All right. A VTuber. Yeah, I thought about that half-jokingly once. I think actually we sh If I could block this up, it might be best... Oh, I just don't have the walls for this. It is convenient to like use the, the lakes as, as physical boundaries, but I don't really have enough materials to expand that big. So I think we're just going to cut left here at the bottom of our... Oof. Maybe we can get about here, so down to where this opens up. Probably one more substation. This is a lot of walls. This is a lot of walls. But yeah, VTuber stuff. I, uh, I've i heard that it's still pretty expensive, like, to get a half-decent looking one. Like, uh, paying someone to do all the rigging and modeling and stuff. Well, good timing. Got that guy just as, just as I was laying down laser turrets. The thing is, I only have 65 more laser turrets. We can recover some, but... Uh, let's continue the... Flamethrower wall. I should probably be building more flamethrower turrets while we're doing this anyway. Uh, yeah, I've only got three left. So we're out of gears. That's not good. That takes a lot of manual labor to undo. I'm assuming we just ran out at this point. Yeah, I think we ran out of gears. It's in my It's in my list, but... All right, well, when you're going to a new planet, make sure you bring lots of stuff. That's that's the rule, right? All right, I'm also kind of worried that I'm going to run out of pipes. So instead of using undergrounds, which are better, we're going to do above grounds, which are worse. But it's also very easy. And technically uses slightly less resources. I say that. I don't know. I, I, I kind of hate it. <laughs> Just do one underground per gap. All right. Once we get the power flux connected, this wall will be reasonably defended. Let's say. Taking some damage, but again, I'll get the robo ports hooked up here in a bit. Man, I I don't know, I don't know what the uh, rating on this this map for seven percent. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. This does not feel significantly weaker than my home planet, you know. We don't have the fuel yet. So this corner looks like it's going to be a rough spot. We definitely need this flamethrower turret hooked up. Uh, it's a bit closer because of where the corner is here. I'm going to move it up a little. And then we're going to have a downward facing one there. Because the angles are a bit finicky on those. 
Um, and then from here, we're going to be able to hook it in, although we'll probably need a couple more turrets. Just keep throwing down lasers because they're the easiest. Looks like we're just barely getting our defenses up here in time. Uh, I have 140 walls left, and I have walled up, uh, not even half of my base. <laughs> so let, this, this will hold for a minute, and, and we can recoup, uh, this outpost here quick. That'll give us a bit more. I need to f make some kind of wall, uh... So we could mine stone, cook it to stone bricks, and we get the junky walls. To make medium walls, we need those plus a lot of concrete, and concrete is kind of slow to make. And then you need steel to make the best walls, and I'm not making steel here. So, yeah. Let's get that. We gotta get those flamethrowers working, I think. So, I'm gonna ignore this copper, just gonna build right over it. So I am going to hook up more flamethrower turrets along here, but I think f the priority right now is to get these things working. How we do? We made 4,000 Pyroflux. Honestly, from my experience with flamethrowers, they use fuel so little, so slowly, that'll probably be enough, even though we're trying not to waste it. It's... We'll see, the next time they attack, these guys should be much better defended. Uh, where's the next most important line? Oh, these guys are close. I think I want to wrap up this north wall, which is kind of short-ish. And then all this stuff up here will be... Like, half the base or so will be blocked off, at least. Uh, before that... Good spot for a, uh... One of these guys, Roboports. Did bring a bunch of those. As long as the green side is in the walls, that means the, uh... The orange section is where they'll fill up your inventory, but the green section is where they'll repair and replace walls and... And do all that kind of nice stuff. So as long as it's green, we'll be okay. Uh, the Roboports do use a fair amount of power too, so... I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, I definitely didn't come to this planet prepared for quite the level of battle we're getting. Turn that off. Tiny little network. Yeah, this is all we're going to try to defend is this inside network here. I don't think they'll attack the steam engines. And if they do, I could probably turn them sideways or something, right? Alright, so if that goes that far, we can just extend the front line here. Or at least we can try. Just like my stream last year where uh, every stream I tried to build my starting base back on our home planet and everything always got interrupted by biter attacks. It's the same thing just a year later. It's kind of sad actually. I thought I was past it but nope. Yes, yeah, so the thing is I actually want my turrets to be like at least one step away from the wall so that the piercing attacks don't get us. This is okay. All right, so this is the remember the problem with the uh, the Castlevania playlist on OC remixes. It's really the same song, a hundred times in a row, just slightly different remix. Uh, all right, so what runs out first, walls or turrets? Uh, Just gonna redo this section. <sighs> okay, so this this isn't super long. This one won't. We, we should have enough resources for this part. It'll be the other parts that are, are gonna be a bit more sketch.
On the plus side, I can tell by the number here in my missing items that uh, my space station on my home planet, uh, which was running low on steel and stuff for so long and never uh, never had enough material to build all the platforms, it's actually finally caught up with all those platforms. Oh, come on! Jeez. I mean, last second lasers on demand here is what we're getting. Your Amazon laser turret delivery will be here just when the moment you need it. Ah, jeez. Well... We'll get this hooked up. Um, for this kind of part, I find it's generally best to just throw down some... Uh, when, when you've got these walkable tiles that you can't build on, uh, I generally, generally find it's better to throw down some um, landfill and then just build a wall on it. So that way the things don't walk around them. Oh. Well, whatever. <laughs> I don't want to rebuild it all. It's fine. The, the, my goal here was to have a two wide wall for defensive purposes and then a one tile gap so that they're not able to hit the laser turrets through the walls. And uh, if I had more walls, I might put more down, but that is all of my laser turrets. Boy, oh boy. I mean, I could take every second one out or something, but ouch. I'm just gonna put one per uh, substation. If I knew the mechanics of um, enemy biters better, uh, you know, I could probably optimize more. Like, if I knew the pathing they took. I've, I've seen some people, like, speedrun speedrunners and stuff every now and then. I've, I've seen a few factorial playthroughs before. Of not just casual play, necessarily, but some of the more optimized guys. And there are people who know, like, pretty well how um, the AI pathing works in this game. And... You could definitely use it to your advantage, certainly. Alright, we should be getting Pyroflux up here. So, east wall, north wall, you know, 90% covered. There shouldn't, you know, you can kind of see how this all connects up. I assume most of the attacks will come here, but this little base could shoot them out this way. But, but because of the angle, well, no, they might come down this route. You know, they might attack here. We don't really have defenses there. I think we're gonna, we're gonna not really have an option. <laughs> we're, we're gonna have to thin out our laser numbers. I can keep building a few more flame turrets, but I can't build these, um, not, not without going back to my home. Uh, they need glass and quartz and circuits and batteries. It's just too much stuff. So that means like, do we just, you know, split the line in half? Like, I don't know how safe this will be. But if we want to make a full surround, I actually don't think we have an option, right? Like, and I'm still going to run out of walls. So I think I'm probably going to have to consider using some junk walls and half a line of turrets. I mean, places you expect to be attacked more, we could, we could bolster a little bit, but... Leave a gap there so it's easy to fill in later on, right? All right. Uh, I didn't leave a gap there. Okay, anyone that has actual OCD, you're welcome. Okay, that should be easily filled in later on. <sighs> yeah, compromises. <laughs> it's not like the people that live here get to vote anyway. They just, just live with it. Okay, it's uh, reasonably secure. You know, I've, I've done, I've seen worse, you know. We've got too much rocks. Uh, we need, oh, I could put a, a radar somewhere in my inventory, probably. I find it sometimes easier to find the radar literally in your crafting menu, easier than finding it in your uh, like inventory system. Just the way it or sorts it sometimes. Maybe you should go to bed, Spiller, but yeah, <laughs> have a good night. Thanks for showing up.
But I'll, I'll, I'll throw a couple of these radars around. They give us more, like, up-to-date vision on what's going on, so you can see an attack. And if we're on a different map, uh, well, you can always use your satellite to view, I suppose. But. So we're going to have to reclaim a bunch of those uh, turrets, and we're going to have to reclaim some walls or something. Because this is definitely not safe. What, what are you robots doing here? Oh, they're just helping me build stuff. Because I'm, I'm trying to build uh, flamethrower turrets. Until I run out of engines and steel, we're okay. But once I run out of engines and steel, we're doomed. I lost some accumulators. And we didn't have any replacements. I don't think I can build them. Oh no, I can build a few. Okay. I, uh, I'll just let them get replaced eventually by putting them in my inventory. We needed, like, six more or something. Yeah, accumulators aren't too expensive. Just batteries and iron. Okay, uh, it's coming along. We're, we're getting there. Uh, how's our fuel doing? We can get out of here. We can escape any moment we need to. It's fine. <laughs> let me, let me set this up properly. We're going back to Novus. We're going to the landing pad. Uh, we'll launch when we're inside it. This is fine. Nothing to worry about. Need a radar over there so we can see what's going on. Um, stop making the sound that everything's falling apart. is not good. That's all my walls. So I do need this outpost to survive because this is where we get our oil. And apparently it's... they destroyed the power. That's smart of them. There's no robots on the side to, uh, to recharge them. Oh boy, these guys do a lot of damage. Well, this is bad. This is pretty bad. Not good at all. Because I really need the oil. I mean, I've, I've... Maybe I could just... What could I do? Um... I don't know what I can do. I don't even have the stuff to replace any of this. Why were my robots... Did my robots all die again? Oh, come on! So, my bots keep just getting lost. So I'm not even doing my own local repairs. So they destroyed the radar that was over here. That's why I stopped seeing what's going on. I don't know why they hate radar so much. Um, so, so what, what do we do? Uh, I mean, I could just build like another oil tank, hope we get enough oil in the base and then just abandon the outpost, right? Like we have 200,000 oil. I can certainly expand that to like a million if we wanted. <laughs> You know, we, we can store as much... Basically, an arbitrary amount of crude oil could be stored in our base. It doesn't really matter. The idea was for it to be, you know, sort of self-sufficient and infinite. Uh, but I don't know if I can actually defend this, this oil outpost. I don't even know if I can defend my home outpost. Um... Wait, we're still under attack? Oh, come on, that's even worse. It's it's not even... It's built a turret to defend itself that's in range of my base. I think that's the real problem here. A big worm turret that can hit me from where it... Oh, this is not good. Why are the biters so strong on this 7% base? I need, I need to talk to the... Uh, 
developer of uh, Crastorio or Space Exploration, whatever, whoever did this. This is crazy. How am I supposed to destroy these? I actually don't even know how I'm supposed to destroy stuff like that. Like, if I make my artillery turrets, that's the only thing that works. And these are just your average behemoth spitters that take like, I don't know, 10 shots right now. My lasers like barely tickle them. Okay, I've been trying to get my oil pipes working. That was the plan. If I had bots, this would have all been done way quicker, but. Okay, the oil. Why do I have no power? That's why we have no power. Uh, what is using all our power? It's the turrets. Man, this is bad. This is... I don't think this is sustainable. I don't... I don't know what... Like, like I think the amount of investment I have to make into this base to make it hold its own is way bigger than I expected. This actually really sucks. Ah, because I've spent so long building this stupid place up, and then it's just going to turn out that you need as many defenses here as you do at home. I think that's what it's going to do. I mean, maybe we can hold them off long enough to fill up the oil, and that'll last us a while. Like, we don't need perfection. We just need enough vulcanite that we can um, we can get the next level of tech, I guess. But I, mean, I don't have walls. I don't have enough turrets. We're probably running into power problems, right? Like, that seems to be... We're doing okay, but once we start shooting like crazy, then we run out. Yeah, the accumulators burned through it during the uh, night. The night fights when they all start attacking. I was hoping the, uh, the flamethrowers would take off some of the heat for the, uh, the energy requirements, but... Uh, what? What do I do? <laughs> do I just abandon it? Just burn it all down? That doesn't seem very good. What, how, how are things over here? We got, uh... We're up to 21,000 uh, Vulcanite blocks. So if we if we abandoned right now, we still have 21,000 of the, the fun stuff. Um, liquid rocket fuel's doing great. We got 12,000 spare. Which is enough to halfway launch a second rocket, if we had the materials for it. We did not use very much iron, in case you were wondering. This system seems to be working. All my systems are good, except for defense. Um, I was trying to find some, some bots, because I do need... I do need, like, a, a stack of construction bots with me because, you know, it's the only way I'm going to clean these places up. I'm not going to manually repair things in the colonies. That's silly. Okay, get repairing bots. This place, we got to hold this place a bit longer. Um, I mean, if we could get, like, 800,000 oil saved up, that would last for a long time. But... I don't have the walls. Uh... And I can't, I can't go anywhere near these bases. The behemoth worms are just way too strong right now. And we don't really have the defenses to fight off the, the attack waves. So that sucks. Um, honestly, I, I think we might just leave. <laughs> we try to build enough defenses that the core base stays. And I think we just have to plan to come back with, with more weapons, really. And it, it's it's really annoying, but I I kind of think that's there's not really any alternatives right now. Uh, what I can do is... We know we're getting attacked from the north here a lot. Uh, I did build some turrets. And we don't need to use Pyrocyte. We, we can just use the oil that's here. This will certainly help. I'm just slapping a few of these in here. 
However, as long as we can connect them up with a bit of oil. Crude is fine. Like, you know, I was saying how Pyroflex is better, but, you know, this stuff's strong. This is just wasting a little bit of our fuel resources, but or our oil, but it's, it's fine. Yeah, I think we're going to have to retreat and come back, but that's some northward-facing flame, some turrets, and this is where we're getting attacked from. I could certainly add a couple more on other directions. Well, I say that. Certainly, if I if I had more oil, or more um, turrets. I think I'd like one facing left here. So I'm going to try to get a turret facing left, turret facing left, couple facing south. And hope that that's enough to, to, to secure this area. Um... I just don't have enough walls. So what I was talking about before was having that one tile gap between the turrets. This is... An upgrade. And I'd like to do that here as well. Oh. So much for that plan. That really sucks. I cannot believe the range on these friggin' worms. <laughs> There's gotta be a way to kill it from here, right? Okay, I can hit it. There's a lot of rocks in the way, but we're getting them. Now we find out if the retaliation is survivable or we're dead. I mean, seriously, the the bots do a good job. I think they all died though. Uh, yeah. The problem is the bots go to dis to repair the acid walls, the walls that got spit on by acid, and then they all die. So now I can't auto repair anything because we are losing bots at a very high rate which normally is not a big problem because you know we have a bot construction facility back at our home base where this wouldn't be a long-term problem but we don't have that here Gonna move that I'm gonna extend that buffer wall a little bit on this side as well. Man. Manually repairing walls. So yeah, there's this 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 can't last because we we will always take a little bit of damage on these walls. And if there's no way to auto repair them when I'm gone, you know, it won't last for very long before it's destroyed. So that's not a permanent solution. Hmm. I guess we just let the oil go as long as it can. Can we defend our main base on the more permanent level, though? I don't think so. I mean, I'd have to put a wall all the way along here. Because, like, these guys are going to attack this way for sure. Especially once they overrun the oil base. And, you know, we're gonna we're gonna try. I'm gonna try. It might have been smarter just to head home by now, but oh, freaking box. Be great. How many I brought? There are still 300 construction bots left. I uh, I brought like 500, so they've been dying kind of in droves. <laughs> it's not good. Walls invading for oil. 
Yeah, it's classic factorial. Um, rare resources, we're gonna go to your planet and take all your stuff. We're gonna leave the corners a little bit more thoroughly defended than the in-between corner parts. So we can recover... I think we'd have enough laser turrets to defend the west wall. Assuming we do the half... half wall, half line. But we don't have... Like, I don't know what to do about the walls themselves. I really don't trust one thick wall. Like, that does not sound like enough. Yeah, this place I want a little bit more defended. Uh... Alright. Let's finish turning the bottom section that has a wall. I think I think I'm just gonna have to go with, with one tile thick walls and just live with it. Can I uh a bit easier like this? Blueprints are great. Get this all powered. So, so I steal walls. This is this is this is. I don't know. Let's finish these. I built these accumulators, right? Put them away, please. Thank you. Get rid of one of the notices we've got. This little outpost is doing a decent job defending the left side. If you were a biter, where would you not attack? Yeah, this side with all the water maybe is not going to be the most dangerous. But this is very close. These are very close. It's not much over here, but I'm sure they'll fill it up, right? They'll expand. Whatever. I just need enough walls to build uh, at least one layer around the base. So we're just going to steal some. We're going to see what happens. We just got to get out of here, basically. Probably put the pipes inside my base, but, well, you know. We're just gonna assume they don't attack the, the uh, boilers, because they're non-polluting. Alright. Gotta at least put some level of defense here. Five. <laughs> mm -hmm. At least we don't need the back half of these anymore. I'm just going to move those turrets over here. I, I still don't even have enough to connect it. Um, we have to go steal some more from the doubles. Well, we got attacked right there, so this is a great spot to steal some wall. Hmm. 
I don't think this corner is going to get attacked as much. It's going to be over here the most, I think. Would you please just give me a minute? And all my bots are gonna die because it takes me an hour to kill one friggin' snapper. Look at this crap. I have to say, I think some of the scaling for these fighters is a little bit too much. <laughs> like, it's not as bad when I'm not streaming and I'm just, you know, playing on my own, but it's still bad. But, um, you know, when you're in the middle of trying to do stuff like this, like, I really didn't expect on other planets it was going to be so freaking ridiculous. I mean, okay, on planets that say, you know, biter meteors, super dangerous, blah, 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 that one would make some sense. But here we're supposed to be, like, almost safe. Move all this stuff around. I'll probably need a few more robo ports, and then we're sort of done. You can take bets on how long this would last. At least we have enough uh, power stations to, to spread them all around. Uh, I've got to try to put flamethrowers along this wall too. So I've got the laser turrets, I've got the weakest of walls. I'll get the robo ports in and I, I still need more, I need like maybe a dozen flamethrower turrets to finish this up. I also don't like building on, you know, mineral deposits that you plan on taking advantage of later, but, well, I'm sure you guys have heard me say it by now. What options do we have? Some basic turret defenses on the left sides. Hook up the flames. And, like, never come back to this dump. I think if I'd known the biters were going to be this crazy, if you remember from the beginning of the stream, um, we had another planet that had Vulcanite, which was maybe a better planet, but it has no biters and no water. But I thought a tiny amount of biters would be worth starting with water. I think I was wrong. Because a tiny amount of biters is not what we actually get. Um, power turrets, roboports next. This is close. I do like to line them up for maximum orange grid, but chances are this base is going to blow up before we come back. <laughs> you know it. I know it. Everything we leave here, we're just throwing away. Kind of got that feeling. Oh, there's trees here. Stupid trees, get out of the way. Okay. Power connector. Good. All right, our... Logistics network is a little bit bigger. It's fine. Too much yelling. I'm already spooked enough. I don't need more spook. Okay, uh... Let's finish our defenses. We just need those flamethrower turrets, which we're crafting. 
I want to get rid of these alerts, so... I don't know how to do it other than just getting rid of them. It's because the, uh, the productivity modules that they're supposed to have, we don't have. So, unless I want to ship them in from Novus, it's not going to happen. But there, no more alerts, or any alerts are a more recent alert. 42 turrets on a different planet, thanks. Useful. Alright, we currently have seven flamethrower turrets. And spread them around here. Um, how many do we have left? We're building five more. I've got a stack of five. We can we can put these down fairly generously. Kind of like doubling up when we're at a corner. Seems like they get hit by biters a bit more often. And the flamethrower turrets have a pretty good cone, but you have to be a little bit careful with their cones. They got a minimum firing range and kind of do friendly fire damage if you're not careful. So yeah, I'm just sticking to my approximately one turret between each uh, substation. I think that, you know, approximately gives them a little bit of over coverage like if you look at it down here these guys are a bit closer but they certainly overlap each other I just want to make sure we can shoot at least one flamethrower no matter where the enemies come from so we don't need a solid line of them but fair number so a couple more and that, that'll be done I expect to be attacked sort of along this angle the most. <laughs> yeah, friendly fire. <laughs> I mean, you can have... There's like nuclear rocket launchers and stuff. You can just destroy your whole base if you, if you want. I don't have nuclear rockets yet, but one day. Okay, well, I'm glad that we've got some basic perimeter defenses. I don't know how long these will last, but... Got this one and then one left for up here and that'll do. But yeah, I want to get out of here and get back to progress. Progress? But we now have Pyroflux fed flamethrower line, a half a line of laser turrets, which are pretty strong. Our biggest weakness is our walls, I think. But I mean, look at this. They, they do a good job. The trick is, like, I think we'll run out of construction bots. <laughs> like, we're all good until we can't repair the walls anymore. The, uh, the wall. Don't even have multiple walls. And then at that point, they just run in and kill everything. So I, I think this will last a while, but, but not forever. And our power is decent. And... Our oil stocks... There you go. You know what? We got to 800,000 oil. I'll add some more, because I'm a mad lad. That's a million. Because I'm very, I'm, I think there's a very high chance that our, um, I just don't want it to touch the water. I, I think there's a very high chance that our oil expansion um, gets blown up. It's still got 2.1 million oil. So the more of that that we can funnel in here, then the longer the systems will work uh, before before they run out of oil. And, and I don't think, I don't know, millions of oil will last quite a while. So I think that's not the breaking point. So if the enemies destroy this outpost, you know, I think it's already kind of given us the oil we need, right? And there's probably not much more I can do to defend it. It's actually got more walls than the home base, so. We'll just have to do. All right, I think it's time to get out of here. Mid, it's nighttime. Power is still positive. Steam power is carrying us. 
Although we are using the accumulator, so the steam is actually not enough, right? We, we made the, uh, you know, the, the, the 45 pack of steam power. I am making a little bit more steam power. I don't think I talked about it. It's pretty minor, though. Um, these guys, when you smelt the crushed vulcanite uh, into the, uh, the vulcanite blocks, you do get some heated steam. And I just have those thrown in to be cooked as well, so... We get a little bit more steam from those. Not much, but just a little bit of the power comes back. We could launch the rocket twice with our liquid fuel, so that system's working. Alright. Well, planet, I'd say it's been fun. We should put the walls down. Don't bring the walls home. Got 40 left. I have no idea where the weak point will be, but I'll just do I'll just cover this wall, I guess. Might as well use them. Well, we definitely got attacked there, so. Can they... They can technically just walk right through there, by the way. That should stop. Okay. So they can't get around the wall. Back on Novus, you lost some more construction bots. Alright, is there anything else I need to do before I leave? I guess I should clean my inventory a bit. Okay. We're trying to bring all this stuff with us, which is being dealt with by the bots. They've built up more Pyroflux than they need, certainly. Steam fell down. Oh, you know what? Because we only had one of these... Yeah, we're actually going to be making a little bit less power until this fills up. Because we're supposed to be using all the power flux to make steam. But then it's shut off, so I'm like, ah, oh, we don't need it. But then it turned on and we used it all. Um, but once this fills up, eventually... Because um, this we're using this specifically for the flamethrowers, and we, don't, we won't use very much. But we need a backlog, a buffer. It'll be a while before the steam comes back at full force. So we might have some power problems for a little while, but... I'm not going to do anything else. We could turn a bunch of the oil into, like, solid fuel and make more boilers off of that, but... Too much, too much mess. Alright, we're going to leave most of our stuff here, because we can get everything back at our home base. And if we ever come back here, and assuming it doesn't get blown up, it'd be nice to have some stuff here that we can use, so I'm just going to leave it here. Everything is easier to make at home anyway. So I'm just going to leave all that stuff here, and we're going for a ride. We do have a landing pad, so we can come back easier. We have a delivery cannon chest. We can shoot stuff here if we want. I, If we if we can get the capsules, we can fire um, the vulcanite blocks. But we, we've stacked up 23,000, and it'll just build up while we're away. There should be another... You know, hundreds of thousands eventually, assuming the base doesn't fall. Alright. It's been fun. Honestly, this place kind of sucks. Way too many biters. If I had to redo it, I would go to the I would go to the planet that has no no fu no biters and Vulcanite, because I did not I did not correctly anticipate the, the threat level. Then again, how many people would think 7% is super deadly, you're all gonna die. Alright, I'm back at base. This time, we don't lose our machines. They just get deposited here in a nice landing pad. I'm going to go take a short break to get a drink and do some biology. But, uh, I'm going to just leave it running here in my base. And, um, you know, you can, you can watch if anything attacks. Honestly, this place should be fine. But uh, I'll do a little bit of a base overview when I get back to show you what's going on here and what I want to do. Because I've got some projects. Always got projects. Back in a couple minutes.
All right, blue ankylo is blue bakilo. I hope the base didn't get destroyed while I was away and none of you guys in chat let any biters in. No illegal immigrants while I'm on break. I'm, there's only one border guard. But um, I don't see any deadly alerts here, so it's probably okay. Uh, all right, so where 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 are we? Come on, give me back my control. Okay, so base. What's going on in our base? Well, um, we are under attack, but it's fine. This is uh, you know, the proper base setup where you got a double layer of laser turrets. You got some gun turrets with an ammo belt. You got some super huge artillery turrets behind, and you got flamethrower turrets also throwing out. Like, this is the ultimate defense line, and like nothing gets through. Although the walls do take some damage and. You know, the bots sometimes die when they're repairing them, but we do have like a, in our home base, which is what we could not really replicate on a quick lava base, you know, we've got uh, relatively infinite construction of bots. Yeah, these guys right here. So if our network is running low on construction bots, you know, it's not a big problem, right? We can just release more into the wild. I don't know if there's a way to auto-release them, that would be cool. Because, like, there's currently 1,700 construction bots in the network. I don't know if I need that many, uh, and I could queue up in a buffer chest as many as I'd like, really. But I would like it to be like, you know, if they would get destroyed, if it falls below, like, say, a thousand, then release them. But I don't know if there's a way to get them from the chest into the, the network. There, there probably is, I just don't know how to do it. Um, so this is my home, this is my base, it keeps growing, it's very spaghetti. I have not done a rebuild to make it all nice and streamlined because I'm kind of enjoying it like this, honestly. Good, Vestrian, the lava planet, already has three damaged walls that we can't repair. And well, that, that alert is just going to be there forever now. But, uh, I forgot to pick up one thing when I, when I dropped all my junk off. Pick this back up. And turn on my logistics. So I should have I should have done this while I was on break, because now the logistic bots are going to be a little busy, because they need to restock my inventory. So what's going on? I think my biggest problem is shortage of like iron and steel. Um, my iron, yeah, I had two warehouses full of iron plates and a warehouse full of steel plates. And uh, I don't anymore. Uh, I still have lots of copper, so copper has not backed up, and rare metals are fine wherever they are. But I'm not making my my smeltery has failed, and I need to fix it. <laughs> Started the stream off by saying I need to fix it. I legitimately need to fix it. Uh, I can almost automate automatically fix it with bots too. If we find a flare stack like these. Copy one. I'm sure there's one in the network somewhere. We can plop it over here uh, near the distilleries. Should only need one. Similarly, we can copper some piping, or we can copy some piping. The only reason we were recycling the dirty water was just to get a little bit of extra iron anyway. If it's gonna be like this, I don't care. I, I, if it keeps stopping my, my system, then it needs to stop. I'd rather just burn the dirty water into pollute it than to um, than to keep recycling it. A, a little bit of free iron ore is not going to make this worth all of the downtime where everything backs up like this because this just seemingly keeps happening. I was hoping that when we'd come back from the from the Vulcan planet, we would have tons of vulcanite and we could get the pyroflux going and get the smelting up to full speed. I think that's going to happen. Which makes me really regret doing all of this um, pyroflux smelting because I can't really get more pyroflux because the stupid lava planet has too many friggin' bugs without me, you know, flying back and forth a dozen times. So basically, my entire iron and steel line um, are not working, and that means my base is not working, which is not good. This will get it going though. You can see as soon as the dirty water starts burning off in this flare stack. Um, this liquid starts moving into here. Wasn't that the problem? Yep, 
Yeah, because these enriching plants output dirty water as waste. Right. Even if you do this... I don't think I have automated warehouses. Um, yeah, problems, huh? Copy a storage test. We're going to put a storage test over here so that it can empty the occasional rock out. Because these things, the flare stacks, also back up on garbage. I I really need a way to void um, solid waste. I don't know if there's... There's got to be a way to do it because it's getting really annoying now. Like It's kind of fun early on, but every single operation having a, a waste byproduct that you can't actually permanently delete. You know, you have to just continuously fill up storage chests full of junk to hold it. It's, it's not, um, it's not great. Yeah, because even though dirty water is a liquid, the process of venting it still creates rocks that you have to deal with. Is this even working? I don't want to move my guy because the bots are busy filling up my inventory. That, that's going to take them a little while. But, um, they're almost done. Um, why... Is... Maybe one is not enough? Oh no, things are, things are turning on. Well, no, the copper is working. Copper is super working... Well, no. Copper ran out of Pyroflux. I feel like the copper managed to steal all of my pyroflux while the iron is just doing nothing except for one and it's the iron I need anyway but how do I get all this moving again I mean yeah um, if I if I fly over here I can I can just click these tiles and, and void it all or uh, there's a way to do it anyway Maybe while I'm in um, satellite mode. Yeah, for whatever reason you can't do it from map mode, but satellite mode you can. So, yeah, that was it. I guess one flare stack doesn't delete the water quick enough when these are turned off. Huh. Well, theoretically, when it's running, the, these things should work. It, it's only... Yeah, now everything's starting to go again. <sighs> I wonder how many of these I actually need to actually deal with all the dirty water that comes in. Because this is really, really not going to work long term. And then we still have to deal with the dirt, or the, the stone. It's not a lot of stone, but what I've currently got is all the stone that we don't want effectively gets sanded into here and then squished into landfill. But this box does fill up eventually. It's, you know, on the Vulcanite planet, we only used a little bit, but here we have 82,000 landfill. So even that, like how many of these chests do I have to make? Because as far as I know, I cannot just get rid of rock. I cannot just get rid of rocks and sand. It, it just builds up. We do make a bit of concrete and stuff, but but even that backs up. Well, at the very least, these are the iron and steel lines. They're starting to work again, so we've temporarily saved the day. Well, this is looking bad. Something something real bad is happening on Vestrian if we can figure out how to get there now. Ah, 
Ah, oh, I didn't put enough radars down. I can't even see. Well, that did not take very long. As soon as we left, they immediately broke through this section. And we're taking permanent damage. The bots aren't repairing it. And, uh... Yeah, this whole base is gonna fall. Unless I go back really quick. I mean, I could just fly back. Bring more walls and... I... I still don't think it would work. Because we're going to be limited by bots and repair packs and stuff, right? Like, unless I have a fully automated delivery system or... Fully automated something system. I need to be building bots to replace dead bots. Building repair packs. Building walls. Just for the, the aggressiveness of the attacks. I think we actually should just abandon this dumb base. It's just way too aggressive. That sucks. That really sucks. I didn't think this would be as big a problem. Yeah, we got a hole in our base now. And they destroyed... Yeah, so once they destroy one of the flame turrets, which they managed to get in, you know, the next attack after I left, now the, the, the they have some, some liquid in them right now, but they broke the link. So everything on the right now is not going to get any more uh, Pyroflux fuel. Which means everything on the side north and east is weaker because they're not going to get any more, you know, re more ammunition. I'm going to have to do some reading on space exploration because I was, I feel like I have been lied to. 7% um, doesn't mean anything. And that really stinks. I, I don't know what the deal is. Um, yeah. No, the biter aggressiveness and, and evolution and, and strength. It's it's. I don't think it's any weaker than our um, home base, which is 67%. Can't even see it here. Weird. But, yeah. If we're at 67% at home, and this is supposed to be a tenth of that, Nah, it's not even rem like it's it maybe it's slightly weaker, but not enough to be, not even close to safe, right? This place is safe, so I, I think like zero percent, sure, no big deal, you can run it, but it seems like anything above zero percent might as well treat it like a hundred percent, which that doesn't seem right. Like, so realistically, if I want more Vulcanite, I probably need to go to Oddquin and restart the whole stupid thing. Um. The, the downside is there's no oil, which we we need a little bit to process, but, you know, we can find a little bit of oil that would get the Vulcanite processing. Um, theoretically, we can't even really do uranium. There's no water, right? Like, most power systems require, uh, other than solar, most power systems require water for steam. So, well, no, because we have, um, no, 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 that's fine. I actually forgot. Um, for power, we can just use the lazy man's, uh, what's it called? Well, fluid isothermic actually is the steam engine that doesn't waste steam. So if you could make water, this thing just turns steam back into water, if I remember correctly. You do lose a little bit, but rather than just wasting all the steam, uh, a good percent of it comes back as water that you can heat up again. It's, I think it's meant more for space than, than, um, but maybe waterless planets. But theoretically, like a, ste a, uran a nuclear power steam reactor, because there's a lot of uranium on that planet. Or just taking the vulcanite and throwing it straight into one of these burner turbines. Get your 85% and just be like, that's fine. Otherwise, I don't know how much, like, sure, a lot of solar, but... I guess if you don't need to power base defenses... I should just gone to Oddquin. I just, I was just, I got scared off by that alarm, no water. And I was like, well, that sounds like a pain, so let's not go to no water. And it's also, it's it's a bigger space, it's a bigger rocket trip. So it would need more fuel to get back and forth, because it is considerably further away. Alright. When I inevitably run out of Vulcanite and complain, we're going to Oddquin and having to set up another base. Just like when I run out of Cryonite, we will unfortunately have to go to another Cryonite planet, which is probably this one. But at least there's no threat. So, both of those two bases, if they're the next two bases, don't actually need defenses. Um, in the other short term, 
I needed that uh, short term. Ha! In the only 40 to 100 hour area, we do need some Vita Melange. And just the way my experience went with Biters, 17% does not sound easy at all anymore. So I'm not sure I want to go to Buttercup. I'll see if I can find a Vita Melange with 0%, but I don't know if they exist. Uh, maybe I can look at it in the list here. Um, you can sort by threat. So most of the moons and planets have some percent of enemies. Mixin is like a good Vita Melange planet. It's the uh, the main resource. And it's super like 1600% frequency. You know, there should be tons of it. But there's Biter Meteors. And even though it says 3% threat and 3% sounds chill... I, I think I think this is would we would find that once we got here we'll let let it generate a little bit. First time you you load into a map it would take a little bit of time but um, it's a nice looking planet right it's got like purple and and blues and stuff nice looking place look at all this Vita Melange whatever tons of spice um, and it said three percent Viter incursion so I don't think you'll see any of them right now until we start polluting but we didn't see anything i didn't see anything on the other planet either the vulcanite planet and well you saw what happened once we started processing um so i'm pretty confident that the same thing would happen here is we'd, we'd show up it looked like there's nothing it's a nice friendly purple planet we'd get some mining set up get some processing and then suddenly you know harassed and hoarded until you've got like really good defenses so so I don't actually think that's a good solution, but let's look at my other 0%. So Morrigan is, was a little bit of Cryonite, but that's already gone. So this is just for oil. So it's mostly worthless. There's an asteroid belt that theoretically we can use to mine stuff. There's no biters in space. Um, so if we go to the asteroid belt, we can get like bar barrel and iron and uh, copper. There's, there's a fair number of resources, but unfortunately building in space sucks. Um, belts and stuff to transport between these platforms uh, are really difficult. Um, it's hard to explain, but but basically, if we look at our um, our Novus uh, orbit, I've been trying to expand the buildable area here for our because we need a space platform to build on. Otherwise, you can't do any of the the higher tech research. And it is just so expensive to build this stuff. Like, I build them here at this uh, space factory. But one platform tile is a low-density structure, a steel plate, and heat shielding. And that's one tiny little tile. Uh, this itself, which looks like I've put a lot down. This is enough for now. But this is like 100,000 or so of, of the material. Like, I've been uploaded up and sending materials up here to build this for probably dozens of hours just in the background. You know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of steel and, uh, well, thousands of steel and, and heat shields and, and low density structure. So, so yeah, you can build in space, but it is still very slow and very expensive for me. Um, so, not really a good option just yet. Um, even though, sure, Asteroid Belt has uh, some interesting, you know, uranium, rare metals, barrel. It's got some stuff. Um,. Ninhil, nin, Ninli, none, none of your business. Uh, another moon with 0% threat. Uh, low solar power, but no Vita Melange. It does have Holmanite. So, like, you know, there will come a day where we need Holmanite. This is a way to get it that doesn't require um, fighting biters. But I believe Morgan. No, Morgan had some Immersite and Barrel. So we can get Barrel without making another base. Yeah, we're, this is also the maybe the worst part of this current setup. Is we're just going to get spammed forever. And I don't like the interface here. Um, Vestrian is going to get attacked constantly. And we're just going to constantly, we're just always going to get, oh, I think it's done. Did they cut the power? We just have no power at night. I, 
because my raiders are gone, I can't even see. Because because we're out of power, I can no longer see what's happening. Yeah, I think this whole base is just gone. Like, it didn't even last, like, I thought it might last, like, a couple hours. No. It's it's pretty toast already. Unless, unless we fly back, like, right now to save it. And I don't know if it's worth it, because... Like, how do I permanently save it? I can bring a bunch of guns and walls, buy it a little bit more time... But I don't have, like, a repair pack manufacturing. I don't have a bot manufacturing. I don't have stone walls. So they fought them off. But, like, this is the thing. You basically need somewhere in this planet that builds all the stuff. Pipes, underground pipes, power stations, walls, uh, flamethrower turrets, laser turrets. Because they'll get destroyed every now and then. And you need enough bots that they can replace them. And you need the manufacturing system to do that. But, I, I mean, I'm not going to rebuild... An entire production chain of iron, copper, steel, glass, silicone, etc., etc. Like, that's way too much work. Now, I did leave them some stuff. So, if I could find a uh, one of these. Nope, that's not quite right. Um. You know, I can't replace the turrets, but I can reconnect the destroyed piping so that these ones keep working. But I can't really reinforce here remotely. Yeah, like that'll keep the uh, the pyroflight, pyroflux moving around so that... I had forgotten about that the last time I looked at it, but... I, just, I don't think this section of the wall will, will survive if it's going to get attacked. Oh, I don't know what to do. What do I do? Let's finish my, my other thing. I was trying to see what we had access to, right? So, Ninhil had Holmanite. We're looking for Vitamelange, though. Frost is our Cryonite expansion. Also good for Immersite. And no enemies. And then the Outer Asteroid Belt. Nothing super valuable. We don't, I, don't even, I don't even know what to use Methane for right now. So. Also, more music. I gotta pick another uh, another project here. I think, honestly, I'm just going to take whatever um, Vulcanite we've got and probably just go to our space station and try to get... Because if I can just get the next tier of science going, uh, that should unlock some more useful stuff that'll... Well, it'll make some of the expansions easier. It's just too bad that uh, my, lo like my Morrigan base just mined out all the Cryoflux. It was fine. Unfortunately, the 7% um, threat one, it's its not going to... There's no way I'm going to mine it all out. It, it's just going to be... We'll, we'll collect as much as we can, and then, you know, the base will die. And I might already have gotten everything I'm going to get, because... Uh, uh, I want, like, distance... Delta V distance. That gives me an idea how far away it is. Um... Well, we've got 1.2 thousand here. It seems like it might be slowing down a little bit. If I check this, if the base hasn't been destroyed and I see this number looking like 10 or 20 thousand again of uh, of the Vulcanite, maybe I'll fly over and pick it up again. But yeah, look. <laughs> I don't have replacement boilers. They still did attack from this angle anyway. This kind of stuff all interferes with our power in income. Yeah, I, the, unless I want to go back and forth, that base is gone. All right, well, that's unfortunate. So, so what do I focus on? My home base, Iron and Steel, has started working again. In fact, on the positive side, every single one of my Iron and Steel casters has liquid in it that they are cast. Well, except for this one. But we're, we're getting enough liquid metal. 50,000 molten iron. Wow, that went, filled up fast. So we're at maximum throughput for iron and steel. Which is good. Our steel's backing up, our iron's not. But that means the base is working at least, right? Like, we had this shut down for way too long. So we're at least getting iron and steel and copper back again. Which means we're getting... You know, enough pyroflux to keep things running, even though it might not be... It might not be sustainable, but at least it's working for now. 
maybe I, all I needed was more flare stacks for dirty water, and, and that was what we really needed. But, uh, I, I think, I think we're just going to space. We're gonna we're gonna plan out the next level of science, and we're just gonna hope that getting these uh, various production type science packs, which basically everything under here is all stuff that we can unlock now that we've got um, theoretically enough vulcanite for it. So we could do Kovarex Enrichment, which would let us do sort of long-term uranium power. Uh, that's a big one. Um, more inventory space. Coal liquefaction is pretty good. Um, a bigger mining drill sounds nice. That's not too far off. Nuclear trains. Um, I like running faster. That's always good. Growth facility? I think this is probably what we need as we get into that Vitamilon stuff. But that's for a little bit later. Uh... Oh, beacons! Yeah, this is a classic thing too. Having access to beacons lets us really concentrate power into certain manufacturers so they go way faster. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. That's a, that's a good one. I, I don't generally use a ton of beacons myself, but I know they're kind of the secret to late game tech in Factorio, and I have a feeling in, in this mod you need them. Like, there's going to be stuff that just builds so slow. Alright, well, so that's the plan. That's my new plan. So what we're going to do, uh, turn off my logistics for a second here, my storage, my personal storage chest. We're going to put all of the Vulcanite blocks into my cargo rocket that we're going to send to space. We're going to take that space module that we um, basically rode back and forth. We're planning to go to orbit. We're going to land in our orbit landing pad, which means we don't even need that much fuel. I'm going to try to fill up the rocket with things we need, and then we'll go into our space station. I have to remember to, to wear this spacesuit. If I don't wear a spacesuit, things are going to go bad. So, uh, just keep that in mind. I'm currently wearing power, power armor, which is great on planets. But you need a spacesuit if you're going to go to space. Um, I've also got some rocket thingamajiggers here. Um, we can... Alright, yeah. Why are there solar panels in there? Um, these are just recycled um, rocket sections. I generally build, you know, you have to build 100 per launch, basically. But every launch you get a few back, and then I just store them up and, and send them. And if you need to send them, then I pack them up at a 5 to 1 ratio. And then I can just bring 20, which is enough for one rocket, to a place like Vulcanite. Which was enough to get us back. Like, that part was fine, but... Um... Ugh, ugh. Set the bots deal with that. So, okay. One thing we definitely want to take is these... Efficiency module tier 1s because I needed them for more blue science. And I should find out, first off, before before we go on a one-way kind of trip. Not one way, but, you know. Um, before I start loading up this rocket, let's look at what, um, what, the, what the manufacturing chain is going to be. So, we're trying to make production science. Yeah, new science, and we will be inputting productivity modules, iron ingots, uranium, I think that's the expensive uranium, vulcanite, that was the rare resource that I knew I had to go to a new planet to get, plasma, machine learning. So, first problem, there's no iron ingots in space. The only way to get iron ingots... is to cast iron into melt iron ingots. You cannot take regular iron and make ingots. So right away, before we do anything, we don't have a way of automating this just yet. But I do make molt I do make iron ingots. I just immediately turn them into plates because, you know, that's what I needed. But now we need ingots as well. So we need to change our iron lines so that I don't know, some percentage of them get stored for shipping to the space. So we're going to put a, a splitter. Uh, 
after like two. So we, we, we prioritize iron for two machines. And then after that, it's 50 50 um, the rest of the iron or into space. I feel like that's fair enough. Um, can underground go far enough? Oh, yeah. So from here, we're just going to make a, a temporary storage. And that can just fill up with ingots, because we will need these in a fairly large number to make our science. So, that's 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 one problem. Getting, well, eight ingots per science pack, that's a lot. So this is going to suck up a tremendous amount of iron. It's also going to suck up a tremendous amount of productivity modules, which I also can't make in space. So... I was previously requesting all tier 1 efficiency modules were shipped near the, um, my one rocket. This is feeling more and more ridiculous as time goes on. But, uh, I was requesting a lot of efficiency modules because we are sending them up for the blue science. We're also going to need productivity modules. I don't know how many of these we can make. Again, these things are not super expensive, but they're certainly not free. Also, hey there, uh, DN Bear. You want some more Might and Magic? Nice, nice. Glad you watched them. Glad, glad you enjoyed. Oh, now I got all these uh, stone walls. Right, now that we're home. Yeah, I don't... I don't need any stone walls. In fact, I'm just going to turn it off. They're just cledging up my inventory. I needed them on the base where I was fighting off biters, but not anymore. So, more space is good. Alright, so this should fill up with some... Uh, this is not... I thought for sure somewhere I was producing productivity modules. Let me just uh, look around here for a second. I really don't want to have to rebuild the base right now. I, I know it's it's inevitable. You always have to do a refactor. But I'm really trying to get the, the, the current tier of science done before then. Because it, it's going to unlock a bunch of... Like, we just got logistic networks... We're going to unlock uh, better uranium for power. We're going to unlock... I would expect somewhere in here is more bot speed and, and stuff. Like, there's a lot of recipes that are being unlocked. It would be nice to get some of this Immersite stuff going, which which we can almost do, <laughs> you know? So, just trying to hold off on the base redesign because it's such a mega project. Uh, what about these? Aren't these... Uh... Oh, those are Tier 2 modules. So we've, we are producing tier 2 productivity, so these are all tier 1s. Is there no chest full of them? I guess not. I only have the one machine even making them. Um, we can certainly help him out a little bit. Didn't I used to request... Oh yeah. I am requesting tier 2 efficiency modules, we're just not getting any. Uh... Anyway, that'll speed it up a little bit, because what I need to do is, we need to explicitly save up in a passive provider chest a non-trivial amount of these. Uh, I'm just going to let this stock up to like a couple hundred, and then the requester will send them over to the rocket ship. Uh, so that'll suck some resources out of the base, but like that'll that'll do... Go look at that recipe again. So, theoretically, <laughs> we just hooked up some ingots, some productivity modules. We've got a big pile of vulcanite blocks. Machine learning data will be in space, because you can only make it in space, if I remember correctly. You just double check. Blank cards. Yeah. So I've got two machines up here making machine learning data. Uh, I need more. Like, even even then for the blue science, or the, I don't know, cyan science, uh, this was not nearly enough to keep this machine running even close to at a good speed. So, I think they were the bottleneck. So, we're going to want a good number of these uh, supercomputers. And uh, everything else they need, we are already automatically shipping. So, like, they're okay. We can, we can expand those quick. But we're going to need to send the iron ingots. And I'm really hoping I can send them with the other materials. And 
productivity modules. And actually, I already know I cannot send productivity modules. So, Our, it's really annoying that the um, the machine that's focused on delivering resources across planetary bodies can't send half the stuff you need. I, I can't send the research that we need for the like. I can't send the low tier research that we still need. I can't send um, like the circuit boards, the green, red, blue circuits. Uh, there's there's like more things they can't send than they can. So I'm sending a lot of the base resources, which is good, but I still have to bring a rocket ship um, with everything else. And that includes the modules, the circuit boards, the uh, whatever else. So that does call to question, can I send iron ingots via, via bullet? Uh, yes. So I can load up five, 50 iron ingots into one delivery capsule. And we've got tons of capsules here. You know, I've got a capsule constructor. Um, so I can switch one of these guns to uh, iron ingots, which is certainly what I would do. And then we just need to get the iron ingots here. And then we can shoot them to space, which is great. I don't know if we can do anything else that we need, though. Um... Yeah, because the list of what you can send is just weirdly short. So back to the recipe. Um, so we're going to have to take the modules up manually. Uh, I'll double check the uranium. We can probably send the Vulcanite, but I'll probably just carry it on the rocket ship anyway, because we only have one load of it. We don't make it here anyway. Uh, but yeah, Uranium-238. Let's double check that. Uh, yes. Oh, and good news, it's actually the cheap Uranium. It's not the expensive Uranium. I thought it was uh, 235, which is the stuff that's kind of hard to get. 238 is cheap. We got tons. Um, not infinite, but in terms of this recipe... We're going to run out of iron ingots, productivity modules, and everything else way before the, 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 the uranium, I think. And then we also need plasma stream. The last thing on my list that we're trying to get for our science here is plasma. And I might have that in space. Let me just double check. We have, um, we have chemical gel, which we needed to make the um, thermal fluid. The thermal fluid is what your computers run off of and you have to cool it off and then you run it through a computer and then it heats up the thermal fluid and then you have to cool it off again and recycle it basically. But you don't actually lose very much of it. So although I only have 25,000 thermal fluid, it's actually a ton and uh, I don't expect to run out anytime soon. Now, we did, we did need chemical gel for that recipe, but I don't think I'm making plasma. So let's see that recipe. Plasma stream. Yeah, so it needs chemical gel, which we have and automated to some degree, uh, but we'll need lithium. So that's one more resource we need in space. And I believe, let's just double check, the plasma generator. I don't think I've built any of these either. Um, yeah, it's a space only. So we cannot make plasma streams on land. We have to do this in space again. So, not a huge surprise. Um, it's not especially complicated to build, so that's not a big problem. Uh, but the thing we're missing will be... Uh, lithium. Now, I have lithium at home. Not a lot of lithium. Lithium is kind of hard to make. But uh, as long as we can shoot it up, that will be one of the easier things to deal with, at least. Um, there we go, lithium. All right, so we'll we'll need to deal with three more inputs. Got to get the steel ingots here. And honestly, I think I'm just going to have the bots do it. It's kind of lazy. It's it's not uh Don't do what blue does. Using your bots to request everything is is not the best. Cuz uh things that are um 
things that you need thousands of, the bots do not do a great job of with. But I just need some basic get this started more than anything. Uh, now, I don't think I actually put the iron ingots... Uh, it's not a supplier chest, so we just need to switch that up. Yeah, the bots can move that over, and then they'll they will the requester chest will request the ingots. They'll fly it down here. It should be okay. And honestly, I'm going to be lazy with both of these. This is definitely far from optimal. But this is all I got left right now. And look, it's already working. And this needs lithium. I'm going to double check my lithium production because I don't know how much I'm making. Uh, but theoretically, if we have uranium in a logistics network, which we don't, Currently in storage is only zero, which means I also need to make a chest for uh, supplying that. Uh, there is currently 54,000 in here, which we can certainly use. And there should be more up here. Uh, there's another 27,000 here. This is where I want to start my Kovarex uh, enrichment one, though, because I've got 171 of the valuable uranium. This is my supply for enrichment. And it is the one that's infinite, although slow, from the uh, core fragments. We always get more uranium, albeit at a relatively slow rate. But if we can enrich it, it should be enough to run nuclear power forever. Um, and then I'll need an actual uranium mine. Like, once I run out of this 54,000, which, you know, will take a while, we will actually have to go find um, an expansion. Uh, so there's, like, you know, a million uranium up there. Or maybe a different planet, although that sounds like a lot of trouble. Well, we've got at least one patch of uranium that's not too far away if we want to expand. Well, there's another one down here that's not too far away. So we got like one and a half million uranium if we need it. Um, although we'll have to expand. Okay. Lithium, right. So I'm going to double check. Oh, right. Sorry, sorry. I got so much stuff going on. First up, we'll get the uranium. Now, if I run out of this uh, weak uranium, this uh, 235 stuff, uh, I will eventually stifle my ammunition belts uh, that are making my turrets a lot of uranium rifle magazines. But, you know, I don't think it's going to run out anytime soon. Alright, that puts them in the logistic network. My lava base is continuing to be destroyed. I'm just going to pretend it doesn't exist anymore. It is dead to me. Uh, I'm gonna check the lithium next because lithium was always ever just a very tiny little add-on to my system. This is where I make all my boxes. This is where I make... So I don't know what even needs them, but I make some lithium sulfur batteries. That's, that's the reason I started creating lithium was I needed it for sort of the tier two batteries, but very little, in fact, nothing that I've seen so far uses those. So, I make a bunch of batteries uh, with copper and, and acid and lithium. And we have a chest with a lot of lithium in it. So that's doing fine. Uh, I just want to see where I'm making it and how much I'm making. Because it doesn't look like I'm making very much. Or anything. Um, yeah, this is not looking great. Well, we have normal batteries, but we've got better batteries, and I just don't know who needs better batteries. Uh, Alright, so I guess this is how we make lithium. It's, it's relatively complicated. I'll go over it quick for everybody, because there's so many super complicated factorial recipes, but hey. Lithium and chlorine. We don't need the chlorine, we just burn it. That's fine. That happens a lot in this mod. But we do need lithium, and we need more lithium. So I could upgrade these modules to make it go a little bit faster. Because I don't want to make <laughs> 11 megawatts for one machine. Yeah, power is fine. But, you know, things are starting to get a little spiraling out of control for power costs. It's fine. Uh, it's pretty slow. This is taking 25 seconds. Although 1.6 times that because of the modules. Uh, to give us a single piece of lithium. So yeah, we're only getting... What is that? 60%? 25 seconds divided by 1.6 is like, 
I don't know, math is hard. I don't know, 15 or 16 seconds. One lithium per 16 seconds is not much. It needs water, that's fine. And it needs lithium chloride, which that's another problem, right? So, <laughs> the mineral water, one of the few things that needs mineral water, which is almost infinite, so don't worry about that. And then hydrogen chloride, and this is another fairly slow process, but we could probably have two of these electrolysis plants. Because you get five lithium chloride, and you only use... Well, you use ten. Ten per twenty-five... Five per five. So this is giving it to us at like one per second, you know, depending on modules. Yeah, we could probably power a bunch of electrolysis plants with just this one uh, machine. Assuming we're getting enough uh, hydrogen chloride, which comes from chlorine, which we're getting out of sand and water. And I suppose we could recycle the chlorine back, but I just felt like that was more hassle than it was worth. Because you still would need... It's an equal amount of chlorine and hydrogen. And the electrolysis gives us an equal amount of chlorine and hydrogen. So recycling the chlorine will do nothing, right? It'll just stifle this and I'll have to burn off the hydrogen. So unless we had free hydrogen from somewhere else, recycling this chlorine is worthless. Unless something else needs it, basically. Yeah, fun. So anyway, suffice to say, we are getting some lithium, not very much. Uh, hopefully, the recipe for plasma doesn't use very much. Uh, so we get 100 plasma for 2 lithium. So I think we'll be okay. We're not really, like, it's something for the future. We definitely will need to expand the lithium production. But, you know, one every 20 seconds or something will turn into uh, 50. So, even if you're getting one lithium per 20 seconds, you're still getting a few plasma stream per second overall. Although, I don't know how much this will be consumed. So, that was the other question. How quickly does this stuff get consumed? The, we're trying to make the science. It does use 100 per cycle. So, you know, that's two lithium per production science. It's not the most expensive thing on this list, but we can't forget about it. All right, I think I'm satisfied with my base. We need to send these. Oh, I should, uh, right, I should wire them up. This is easy enough. Uh, it won't take too long, although I, I need the uh, logic wire. We need to do some programming, some baby programming. So what I've been doing is just uh, connecting power poles together here. Uh, this is why I, I guess one of the, benefits of using the, the medium poles rather than the uh, the big old substations is you can connect wires to them a little bit easier. But all these are doing... are connecting to the belt so that we can effectively turn off the input here. Because we don't want to fire bullets of resources that just get destroyed. We want to only send them when there's room for them. So these are all connected to a satellite or a signal receiver. Which is from Norbit. And this is receiving a signal for the storage chest on the, on the, in the orbital station. So these, anything connected to this wire can read the receiving chest if there's space. So, for instance, I'm sending steel ingots. I can now say if the chest in space has, uh, not or iron ingots specifically, if it if it has, uh, let me just, just copy what I was doing before. Uh, you know, less than a certain amount, right? And it's up to me to decide what that amount is. But less than well, what's a stack of this stuff? Like two hundred is a stack. So as long as it's less than like 500 or so, a chest tends to have a lot more space than two stacks. Um, as long as there's less than 500 in space, keep loading up the gun and shooting it into space. If there's more than 500, then you can take a break. You know, easy enough. And then we just do the same thing with all this stuff. Uh, and you can pick your number however you want, I, you know, whatever. It's, it's not that typical, I don't think. 
Uh, lithium stacks are also very large, and we don't even need very much, so 500 should be fine. Alright, that's all the logic we need on this end. These things are actually quite simple to set up. I like them. I just wish you could put more resource types in them. Or maybe for like the more fragile ones, like maybe a, a, a shipping canister that was more secure than the default ones, right? Like instead of just the basic delivery cannon capsule, maybe you've got like a, um, you know, like the Amazon box. It's just full of like padding and, and empty uh, air packages and stuff, right? You've got like a special custom package that can handle, you know, more uh, fragile components because I wish I could use these guns and I, I already see the end of them before I started using them, right? Like, I'm pretty sure the only way we're going to realistically be able to supply the space base long term is the same system of resources coming in and separated into different types and sent when they're requested, but we're going to have to use these rockets for it, which have way more inventory and can hold anything. But they're way more expensive and they take up more space. And I just, I thought these were, these were, in my mind, the solution. Uh, but I think the solution is actually, uh, these are a tiny stopgap and don't really fix the whole problem. And you're just going to have to use the uh, cargo rockets anyway. Or a space elevator, but I think that's going to take a while. Anyway, uh, these are all stocked up. So I've been trying to make sure I'm bringing to space enough stuff to do my production science. That's been, you know, the main objective at the moment. I have to bring productivity modules with me. Because I can't shoot them. But I've got the lithium for this. This stuff's in space. This is on the rocket. This is set up. This is set up. So the only thing we manually have to bring is the productivity module. Which, well, spoilers... And I figure they're all going to be like this from now on. Um, the utility science, which was my pat, my, my last tier of science, was the same thing. The, f the thermal fluid was made up there. We made the machine date up there. We had to ship the cryonites, just like the vulcanite. I had to carry the efficiency modules, but then we could produce... And, and the, I guess we had two things. I have to bring blue circuits and green modules, plus the resources to build the other stuff to space. The red science, I guess, is slightly more generous in that we only have to carry the production mo production model modules, productivity modules. Uh, so how many do we have? Is it worth it to go? Well, we've got some. So, you know, that's uh, 370 productivity modules. It's not enough. Um, that sucks. I'm not a huge fan of these being. going the wrong way to get to it, but I'm not a huge fan of the modules being required for the science because we can't ship them via the guns. It kind of... Anyway, it's fine. It just irks me a little. Um, so yeah, we'll only be able to make as many hundred science packs as we have these modules right now. We can generally send infinite of the other stuff or, you know, 23,000 of the Vulcanite, which is fine for probably all the research... But we're going to need to wait for more productivity modules. So maybe we can speed that up a little. Let me... I feel like that's going to be the bottleneck right now. So let's see if we can help that out a little bit before we leave. Also, is my metal working? Nope, it's already shut off. Every time I blink, my metal stops. I don't really get it. It's like... Hold on a second, productivity. I have to figure out why my iron isn't working. Yeah, they're added artillery. Or added artillery. Good one. Oh, never mind. I take it back. <sighs> Sec chat. Alright. Uh, cleaning up chat. Of course, always going to get stuff showing up like that. So, let's see. Um, other than spam bots. So, my problem is... 
Why does my iron smelting slash steel smelting continuously just shut down? So these aren't working because their output's full. That's fine. These have no pyroflux. Right, which was the reason I went to Vulcanite was to get more pyroflux. But we're getting pyroflux. As long as these machines are working, we're always getting some. You know, not a huge amount, but we're always getting some. So why... What has happened? We've got a pump here that pushes it out, so it should keep... Like, it shouldn't linger in the pipes. It should be pushed towards the uh, industry. It literally pumps it directly into the iron line. Like, this is the closest machine to the pump. And it has nothing. Yet these, the copper, which also uses Pyroflux, somehow has priority? Because these are all running, right? You can see by the light. Like, we're getting Pyroflux all through the copper line. But we're not getting any in the iron line? I thought, like, a, a, tr a split like this, like a like a T-split, T-junction. I thought it would be like 50-50. You know, I didn't think it would have a preference. Because, like, I do need copper and iron, but I don't need 100,000 copper that eventually backs up before I get any iron. I don't understand what... I don't think it used to work like this. I swear this worked... I swear this worked properly in the past. It didn't like update the mod and change like the input output tiles. I've seen them do that where they've, you know what? They share, uh, this is, well, I'm not hundred percent sure if they share. I have seen some buildings that are modded in that have an in and out with the same liquid. So it basically lets the whole, like you can see it actually very easily up here. Um, my casting machines take the liquid and turn it into the ingot. But I don't need a pipe connected to each. We just put them in series and they just, you know, the the pump is pushing the, the molten iron into these and it just keeps flowing all the way through. It doesn't stop until the, uh, until it runs out of iron, basically. But we're not getting nearly enough to run these because these aren't working. Like, I get it, I'm not getting enough Pyroflux to run at all, but... I don't know if there's any way to logically control this. I mean, I have a lot of these machines all feeding into the same storage tank. I could cut it in half. Like, if we follow the Pyroflux line, I could split it here and have half feed into the iron and half feed into the copper, but... It doesn't give it a buffer. I have to put another tank in and stuff. I, I just, I feel like this should work. So I don't really get it. I'm wondering if like the underground pipe was causing problems. It certainly turned this on once I, maybe the underground pipes are causing weird problems. So I don't think... Almost no liquid is going through these pipes. I think it's going into the machine and then sharing it down the line. I don't know why it was getting to the copper so much easier. It still had underground pipes. But it just seemed to favor this direction. 
Okay, science test real quick, because I definitely thought I had to connect them all with separate inputs, but let's disconnect these. There's no way Pyroflux gets anywhere other than the first machine. And if there is Pyroflux filling up down here, if it can fill up, then that, you know, change through. Planet Crafter? I uh, unfortunately kind of hit the end of the content, unless they've released another patch. Uh, you know, it's still in open development, so they're they're not done with it. You, you gotta go bug the devs to get them to finish adding all the, the sexy aliens. We got to fish, but they didn't have anything past fish, I don't think. Last time I looked at it. So I'm not convinced this is filling up. So the first one fills up to 20. Yeah, so I don't think they connect horizontally. So then I like I really did need my system here, right? Like I had to do this. But why the crap do we get like 10 to 20 copper smelters working? but only like two or three iron, or literally zero. Huh, I, I don't know. Liquid priorities, man. Uh, let me check my production. I wanna see how much Pyroflux we're making. So we're averaging this stuff. 700 per minute? That's not a nothing. I'm not sure if that's just this planet or including the other one, but what does it say here? The, the, the description? Stop bouncing around, you dumb thing. Um, Melty hot sauce, essence of lava. So at most we're getting like a thousand a minute, but at the moment we're getting. Uh, I guess it kind of goes up and down. Around a thousand a minute, whatever the average is. Probably a little bit over a thousand a minute. Um. So although although this tank is like consistently reading six three sixty three fifty. You know, a pretty significant amount of Pyroflux is moving through it. Now we've... See, now it's starting to balance out. But I didn't do anything. All I did was... Delete a couple pipes and then replace them. I don't understand it. Like, I know I need more Pyroflux to run it all, but... We're just not getting anywhere near enough iron. This whole base is just... It's fallen apart. It's fallen apart at the seams. Yeah, that that is I like I said, I think I said earlier, um I have memories of fluid management not always being super efficient in Factorio. And uh the mods certainly add a lot more fluid management cuz uh you know, we need every liquid imaginable to make these things work, so Yeah. Yeah, I kept having problems with my dirty water and I mean, it's working now. The problem just seems to be every time I blink, it breaks, so I don't know. Is this full? No. The sand should still be split off. It's just the iron's backed up. Isn't this supposed to be... It prioritizes the left side. Oh, it's because it's taking off of the top line of the belt. I think I can fix that. Um, yeah, because we want, we need, if we want these filtration systems to work, I didn't realize that the, uh, splitters would work that way specifically. We need these to keep running to get rid of the dirty water. That's the whole point. And it does recycle some iron ore, which is, you know, useless right now, but whatever. So I thought that the splitter, by setting it to prioritize the left input, would prioritize the left input. The thing is, it's subdivided by left and right on each lane. So if 
the output lane's left lane was full, and the input's priority lane left lane was empty, it wouldn't put it there. Like, it, it, it wouldn't cross lanes when it went through the splitter. So even though you prioritize, you know, this, this whole lane, half of it wasn't moving in, and therefore the wrong lane was still being prioritized because that was where these machines were pulling from rather than pulling at all. If they take it all off the lane, it's fine, but yeah. Anyway, the point is we want to prioritize this so that these things keep working to clean stuff out. And the rest of the iron doesn't matter because we just turn it into landfill if we have too much. And if we ever connect this to a real mining setup from like, oh, we want some iron from here, we need to make sure that we smelt... We, we don't want to void this stuff. We want to smelt it and only use the stuff from here... Or no, it's the other way around. We want to use this stuff first. No, whatever. The alarms. Well, I got sidetracked. I think I've got my iron and steel at the very least working at the moment a little. It's not great. I I just I hope we can get our red science working on on the on the space station. Cause I just don't have it in me to go rebuild everything right now until we finish the next tier of science. It's just too much work. Unfortunately. This friggin' 7% uh, threat base at Vestrian. Good old 7% um, is not anything close to 7%. Friggin' behemoth spitters. I mean, we're doing okay. The, the bots, you know, they're doing their best. The lasers are doing their best. We already lost the turrets that were here. Um, it's really the behemoth and leviathan guys that are, that are too much. Um, but I think that it's, it's a limit on the bots. We're down to 153 logistic bots, or whichever one does the repairing, but eventually they'll run out, and unless I come back with more walls and turrets and stuff, this place will fall. It's, I'm actually, I thought it was doomed a long time ago. I'm kind of impressed that it's still standing, but um, maybe it's because I'm not here. They're slightly less aggressive because, you know, player characters further away, but... Uh, we are still getting some Vulcanite. It's ready to go. We got not very much. I feel like the, the rate slowed down too. We're only at 2.7 thousand after all this time. So I may have messed something up when it got destroyed. Well, probably less modules slowing things down a little bit. It's still working. Red light over here, but... Oh, we're not getting enough crushed along here. Yeah, the lanes get mixed up a little bit with crushed and enriched. I didn't have the perfect sorting system, but it's mostly working. Yeah, these guys are kind of stuck until the left side crushed gets up there, which might happen eventually. Anyway, it's fine. The oil's full. You know, other than the defenses from biters, that base is doing fine. Just dump it in the river. I wish. I If someone can tell me a way of permanently deleting sand, basically the physical ores, stone, coal, iron, copper, anything that just builds up as a byproduct, if I can actually delete it, I would take that. But I'm going to bet that it's a pretty high tier technology, some sort of void deleter or something. I don't know. Delete me. Yeah, I don't know. There's probably some recipe that does it, but... Because they can't just expect you to continuously make larger and larger landfill boxes. Because <laughs> eventually it's just taking up half your base of garbage that you've been filling up. Um, speaking of landfill boxes, the one that actually fills up is this one. And it's full. So once this fills up, this system breaks again. Which is why I had a backup. <laughs> so dumb. So dumb. Just moving thousands of tons of landfill around so that I can continue my iron mining. Alright. Let's let's go to space. Hopefully we built a few more production modules while we were messing around. I want to try to get my science going before we're done the stream today, so I'm gonna give it a shot.
Well, we got 70 more productivity modules. It's not much. So we can craft 400 science packs. You could make walls? Um, yeah. So... If you put up a blueprint that was in, within range of a turret... Now, for that to work, I'd have to shut down my artillery guns, because they will automatically fire on any turrets uh, that can shoot us, right? So, so we'd have to... We'd have to build a special purpose location for it with no artillery turrets. Maybe extend out, find some biter nests, maybe on the water or something where they can't actually get to us. And then close enough for the turret to destroy the wall within the logistic network so they can replace the wall. But I think what would happen from my experience is that yes, they would destroy the turrets, but you'd also need a separate network that didn't have any repair bots. Um, because the, 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 the logistic bots are really good at repairing walls. So if they can just use repair walls, they will do that first. And that doesn't help us. So we need them to destroy the wall and then replace it. Without repairing it. Without killing the, the, the worm. And also without losing any bots. Because bots are not the thing we want to lose. Um, I, you know, I have an auto bot constructing yard. But they're kind of expensive. More than I want to just throw away. Like, let's say you can destroy 10 walls per bot or something that gets, you know, splashed by friendly fire. Well, splashed by the area, area of effect attack. Um, green circuits, not too bad. Flying robot frames, a little bit limited. I don't have a full line of those. Like, my base is struggling right now. Like, my actual resources, a lot of things aren't working. Because we ran out of something. So we ran out of batteries. Well, where do we make batteries? Uh, here's where we make batteries. What's going wrong? There's no iron. Well, there's no iron because these stupid uh, iron mine pyroflex smelters have stopped working half the time. So everything that feeds off of this iron stuff isn't working because, well, we're getting a trickle. But it's not enough. We, we need... I mean, this is our iron input for our base right now. This is nothing. We need like a full blue line of iron constant. Well, this is steel, but iron. We need a full blue line of iron and steel, and we still probably would use it all. Um, so like, this is, this is horrible. And at the same time, we're actually wasting iron because... Rather than smelting it all and getting it turned into ingots, we're literally turning... Anything that goes past this place, this is the iron overflow because this chest is too full of stuff. So it reads if the iron is above a certain amount in this chest, it just gets sent to get dusted. Well, turned into landfill. So we're not even smelting all the iron ore we're getting. We're literally just filling up landfill with it because we cannot cook it quick enough. And it's because I upgraded to these Pyroflex smelters, I could have skipped this step. And just took the enhanced... I used to have it as enriched iron. I mean, there's a recipe for that, right? Um, I don't think it's worth undoing, but it just really sucks right now. We're in a real bad spot. Um, instead of making molten iron with Pyroflux, we could just make iron plates at a uh, another furnace. So these furnaces, rather than making molten, you know, we could switch the recipe to just iron, enriched iron into iron plates. I'd have to redo some belting and stuff, but... I mean, maybe the ones at the end should be like that? Uh, unfortunately, the iron... It, it's sharing a belt with iron ingots, so it's, it's a little bit complicated. So, like... We get lots of enriched iron. This time, we don't need pyroflux. And we just get iron plates out of it. Now, this won't give us any steel... And there's actually no output for it, because it used to be output of a liquid, so we would need a separate lane to connect everything. And there's really not a lot of space right now. <laughs> um, this one we can connect up just for lols, but... Uh, 
let me let me think here. Um, this is really squishy. There. So at least one of our furnaces will always be making iron plates. <laughs> uh, I'm not very happy with this. I, I did not expect them to run out of Pyroflux, or for me to be unable to ship Pyroflux back the way I intended, like, ages ago. Uh, yeah, so our, our iron and steel is just scuffed, and I don't have a solution, unfortunately. Anyway, we're going to space. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything I want to bring up to space with me. Uh, I've been waiting for more modules so I can make more science, but honestly, I, I think we're fine. We should just go. I try not to make, you know, rocket trips without filling the rocket up. You know, we're, we have 300 empty cargo space here. So let me take at least a moment to look at our orbit and see if there's anything obviously short up here. Um, anything that gets auto shipped should be fine, except for iron and steel, which we don't get enough of. Um, but the things that we actually run out of will be normal colored science. So we've got, we should maybe bring another stack of these. Uh, let's try to balance these out. So we got 4.3 4 thousand green, 5 thousand red, 5.5 thousand blue, 1.7 thousand yellow. So we need way more yellow science. We got tons of military science and we don't actually use the basic science. I just brought it up, but we don't use it. So I mostly need yellow science if I can get some. That's the rocket tier science. The rest of them are fine. We're not going to be able to make 5,000 of this new ones, but let's go grab some yellow and a little bit of blue. Because we can't, you know, you can't auto ship this, so I might as well grab it. It's all in a nice convenient spot anyway. Uh, I'm just going to bring all the rocket cards. That's... Well, that'll be 3,000. Uh, what else did I say was green was a little low, so we'll bring a few greens. And I think everything else was fine. It would be nice to automate sending all the science cards to space, but it's not happening today. So that'll keep that part of the research going. Um, what else do we need up here for general purpose? Um, we certainly need space belts, which are made here. And have maxed out their storage. So we've got tons of space belts. Which should mean we have tons of space science. Because that's kind of the main limiter. They did need blue processing units. And I can't auto ship those. Um, so let me just look around. Three and a half thousand there. Three thousand. Two thousand. Okay. Blue science or blue cards are probably fine. You can see here, right? Yeah, there's 13,000 blue cards in the network. Um, what about red cards? There are 12,000 red cards in the network. Also, not a big problem. Uh, something must use green cards. 30,000 green cards in the network. I can't auto ship any of them, but there's a good amount. The shortest one was probably red, but I'm not worried about that right now. Uh, we also can't ship motors up. So I run out of motors every now and then. Uh, who uses motors? Okay, we should bring more blue motors. There's only 400 in space, so that's not really enough. And I can't auto ship it, so that's something to grab. Um, anything else worth grabbing? We can get liquids up automatically. There's probably not enough steel if I can find something that uses steel, but... But steel's automated, it, it's just uh, I don't make enough. It's not that I can't ship it. Yeah, there's some. It's, it's, it's working. I mean, I could turn this off. You know what? This is my space platform. I always need more, but I cannot make enough iron and steel right now. And this is probably our biggest uh, iron and steel user. So I'm just going to turn it off. That'll st eventually these will fill up to their requested amount. I never imagined that I would be so limited on these things, so we're going to turn them all off. And that will save me um, 
some of my production. Uh, what else do we need? Uh, da, da, da. So I'm gonna get some blue motors. Just looking for requester chests that I can easily check things that we're consuming. We can ship most of this stuff automatically, so that's fine. Oh yeah, there's this cool cryo gun up here. I've never used this. We we found a bio gun and a cryo gun. Um, I can't actually make these or craft the ammo for it, so it's limited by how much is in stock. But uh, we found those when we first came up here. It's pretty cool. There's even cool solar panels that uh, are way stronger than normal. Well, I feel like, in general, I've already shipped up a good amount of everything except small motors. So we're gonna go grab some more of those, and then we're then that's enough messing around. I just figured if there was no green or red circuits, we should bring some. But this is my motor storage, and we're. We're not making enough motors either because, well, surprise, not enough iron. We're going to have to try to fix that someday. <laughs> someday. Oh no, this stupid... Just, 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 just messing with me. Alright, we're good. Yeah, the bots were coming to steal it all. Uh, but I, I caught it in time. Alright, so we're going to leave some stuff here because in space... Uh, you don't need, there's a lot of things that don't work. So we're gonna switch over to our spacesuit. We're gonna leave our spacesuit. We're gonna leave our guns. We're gonna leave our explosives. Uh, don't need repair packs. Let's see, you cannot use normal belts. You do need inserters. You can't use normal pipes. The rest of this stuff is possibly useful, I think. But there's a bunch of stuff that you just can't use in space, so there's not really any reason to bring it. Oh, and it's just going to immediately summon more explosives. So let's just turn that off, because the bot's just going to refill with all my stuff I don't want. Alright, um... I don't feel very well prepared, but we're just going to go. Oh, hold on, one more thing. One last batch of red, uh... Red modules. Red mods. I think that'll be our limiter once we get to space. Orbit, landing pods, at least we got almost half a cargo bill, but we could fill up ours too, but it's fine. We are at least at the point where generally building more rockets isn't impossible, but I would be happier if we had a lot more iron, obviously, because then it wouldn't feel like I was wasting it every shit, every, uh, space flight. All right, everything lands here conveniently into this nice little thing. I got my, uh, I've got my life support. I actually changed a bit with my life support. Um, I didn't realize how it worked, but you can install uh, life support modules into your spacesuit and they should increase the efficiency, which is how long uh, a life support um, canister lasts. Now that's not a huge upgrade because we can clean them out and refill them, but I thought that was kind of cool, so I did fill up, rather than just moving fast, which doesn't matter too much when you just zoom around like this anyway. Um, I, I usually, in, in Vanilla Factorio, I really, really like those um, exoskeletons just to run faster. But when you have jetpacks and uh, whatever this grapple gun thing is, uh, it's not as important. Alright, so motors, modules... And take the cards, the, the research cards out, because I don't think I've got them automated moving around. So I'll do those manually. Get the uh, rocket cards in there. And the green cards. So that should even it out a bit. 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 8,000. Cool. So the, um, the, cup, the, the base, you know, the terrestrial science will be good for quite a while. Ah, uh, so, 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 so. Well, first off, let's get our bullet importers uh, working. So we haven't set these up yet, but it won't be terribly difficult. Um, we just need to... Legitimately, I think all I have to do is target these. So I can 
use my satellite to pop back here. I don't have to fly back or anything. Look at the, the new resources we want to ship. Select a destination on the orbit. And just send it. It should be able to read... Once they start to arrive, it should be able to read the contents of this chest because of the satellite. And then that way, if this fills up... This belt will stop, and it should stop shooting. What's the setting? Why does it say payload empty? Oh. This is just on or off. I'm not sure what the payload empty means. But yeah, we want to actually shoot. Yeah, it shoots pretty fast. Alright. Um, I guess it's just a toggle for controls so you don't waste them while you're finding the destination. One, and then the last one's lithium. Oh, I, I also didn't turn it on either, right? So. Turn it on. Apparently the most difficult part of the job is turning things on. They're making lots of noise shooting bullets around. All right, so just like that, and I like how convenient these little space guns are. Like, it works really well, and just with a little bit of uh, logic, you can have it stop shooting when they're full, and... Gets us a good use for our stack inserters and stuff, and yeah, I feel like this is actually pretty easy to get things back and forth. It does cost a bit in, in uh, the delivery capsules, but it's not too bad. Anyway, that gets us the, the last three shippable resources for science. I'm going to need to use a bunch of space here for this for sure. So I'm going to need... Let's start figuring out the buildings we need and do some temporary uh, plopping. We need another space manufactory for the actual science pack, I believe. So let's start with that. Uh, hopefully I have one. Probably don't. They're actually kind of hard to bake. I have one. It was literally my test build back when I was getting started. All this stuff is in the wrong place because this was where I was originally planning to do science and realized this was not enough room. And I had to rebuild all this stuff up. So there was no space. So this stuff really shouldn't be here. Oh boy. Well, we have a lot of those. Oh. So I have even more of this stuff that's not even in the network. Okay, let's let's get that fixed. That is definitely part of my own testing program. Alright. I might need another thermal radiator to cool down thermal fluid, so I'll grab that one. I am going to need a plasma generator, we know that. I don't think I need these other buildings yet. So let's make a base layout. You know, we literally have space. We should be able to shoot rocks away, right? If we have, in if we have like, too many millions of rock piles, why can't we just shoot it into the sun or something? You know, legitimately, you might be able to do that. I, I didn't try. <laughs> Could you just pick rocks and then target the sun? Wait. This is the orbit around the star. Like, we're never going to go here, I don't think. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think I figured it out. It's that comment in chat just lingering there that got me thinking about it. Now, this does waste delivery cannon capsules. So we're... It's not perfectly free in that the stone... We're getting rid of the stone via this message, I think. And I have to test it out to make sure it deletes and doesn't just lag the game out by having a pile of 5 million rocks somewhere. But if it does just get deleted and voided... All we're spending is one capsule, which I have a few. I have a big... I made a very complicated 12-step program of how to make a lot of capsules. They're very much not free. One capsule is 10 cables, some structure, some explosives, and a heat shield. So you definitely spend some resources to do this. Um, a well-functioning base can probably manage that for quite a while. 
Um, but yeah, you could just launch rocks into into nowhere. It's not quite into the sun. I'll have to test that out more later. Good, good to remember for later. Let's let's focus on one thing at a time. So, space manufactory. For now, it's just here. It's not the final location. His job is to make reds. Well, we already have red science. What do you want to call this? We got automation science. We got production science. I think I'm calling blue science cyan science, red science crimson science, amber science. We we'll use all the weird color names that no one else knows. Blue Anki, though, doesn't know the difference any of them. Okay. Right. Obviously, Plasma Stream is the new one. We need Plasma in, but there's no other liquids in or out? Alright, that's actually nice. The, uh, the other big one was... Um, not that one. This one. We had, like, cold thermal fluid in, warm flu thermal fluid out. Plus the broken junk cards. So this one might be slightly easier as a process. We still have junk cards, but we don't have any liquid in and out. So Plasma Stream. Never done this before either, new one. All it does is make plasma. I mean, that's easy enough. We'll just pipe that in, consume it one to one. Well, it's pretty slow. You get, well, you get 100 Plasma every 30 seconds. It uses it one per cycle. Oh, but it takes two. These things are really fast, though. So Space Manufactory's got a crafting speed of 10. So it takes 60 seconds to do a cycle, but it's really more like 6 seconds. This one takes 30 seconds per cycle, but it's 30 seconds. So I'll probably end up putting a bunch of productivity modules in here. Oh, I won't. Well, forget that then. We can make it go faster or use less energy. That's all. We can't make it cheap. Um, we could speed this one up a little bit if I don't want to do multiples. Honestly, energy in space is not very difficult. I should have brought some more solar panels with me now that I've got room. But um, solar panels are vastly more efficient in space, as you probably expect. Um, these solar panels are usually 100 megawatts. Or, sorry, um, 100 kilowatts. In space, they're 466 kilowatts. And you're like, wow, blue, 400%, 466%. That's a pretty good upgrade. I'm like, yes. But there's also no night because, you know, you know we're, we're in space. So over time, they just stay at whatever they're able to do. So I don't know the exact ratio for a day-night cycle solar panel. I think I've looked it up long ago, but I forgot. I think it's more than 50%. Like if you're, if you're on the vanilla factory, you're just on the surface, and you've got a solar panel, one solar panel with 100 kilowatts or whatever it is and then enough accumulators to store the charge overnight the average income from solar is obviously not 100 kilowatts but i believe it's more than 50 so you get like maybe around two-thirds of the of the solar panel overall for a continuous power source whatever the number is you know it doesn't matter let's say you get 60 kilowatts normally overall um so not only are we getting 466 percent baseline there's also no downtime so instead of, you know, around 60 or maybe 70 kilowatts, it's actually like, like not 4.6 times better. That's seven, what, what, let's say 60, five, six, seven, eight, that's like eight or nine times better, right? Like, at, so if you're able to get like eight or nine times efficiency out of your solar panels, whatever it works out to, I'm assuming it's something in that range. That's pretty dang good. So yes, there are better solar panels that give you even more power. Like these bad boys here making 1.9 megawatts each forever, always. Or even better, these guys on my spaceship. Did you know I have a spaceship making 3.7 megawatts? I can't build this stuff till the end of the game, but hey, they're pretty cool. And you can stand on them. Anyway, power is generally not the problem, is, is all I'm trying to say. We, we have lots of power and we can get lots more very quick. So, the, the biggest problem is actually space. It's, it's getting these platforms built. Alright, so I don't want to connect things yet. I'm just trying to... Oh, right! We had some meteors! That's right! Um, we don't have a space defense system up here. So my my bot network... Yeah, the, the power actually disconnected. I forgot. I meant to come up here and fix that ages ago. And I forgot. 
Uh, power should start moving again. Uh, and then it'll charge up the network, and then these will all reconnect. This was a separate, like, this whole platform I'm walking on is man-made, but these little white areas were, you know, floating asteroids. So there's a little asteroid over here where it had uh, some uh, methane gas. There's not much left, uh, but I mined it, turned it into gas, and we've got some storage tanks full of ga uh, methane. I still don't know what to do with it. It stinks, so we just leave it there. But one day we'll need it. Anyway, fix those. That's probably for the best. So back to back to planning, right? We need this is simple. We just need to get the lithium and the chemical gel. Lithium will be down here. Chemical gel will be up here. Bam, bam, done. First, uh, first step, easy. Vulcanite blocks. We're just gonna do that with a requester chest because, um, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna move it. But the idea is we're gonna have a, a chest there that inputs those. Probably the same with the uranium, honestly, because. I'm lazy. Now we could belt it. Maybe it's worth belting the uranium because it will be a permanent. I mean, we can request it from here and it'll fly over with bots. You know, the bots do a pretty good job up here. But I probably should belt it. Uh, but I'll leave it there for now. Um, iron ingots are the same thing. You know, we can fly it over or belt it over. Unfortunately, productivity modules, we have no way of getting into space automatically right now, so they are definitely going to be flown in because this is our limiting factor. The, this is probably the most limiting factor in the end because we can't get it in here automatically. I have to, I have to fly it up myself. Um, but that ticks off everything but these dang machine learning data things, and those suck. I, I don't like these things very much, so... These are very complicated, um, and I am making some, but I cannot steal them from here to use in the other machine because I don't actually make enough. Like, two here is already not enough for the utility science, so I really need more. Now, I might be able to share the blank data card manufacturer because I've got lots of these, and this bad boy crafts them pretty fast. Uh, 10 seconds, except divide by 16 because super speed. Um... And then that way I won't have to duplicate this part of the build, which requires um, the cosmic water, the rough data storage. I think some of these things you could make on the planet and send up. I'm not sure, but I already send glass, silicone, and iron to make the rough cards, which makes a bunch of junk, which is probably meant to be in space anyway. I, I think it's mostly space-based. And then we, you know, I get the the dirty water that gets all processed up here and one day we'll process the scrap but this is backed up so i assume we're making enough maybe so that means we get a bunch of da data cards that we need to turn into machine learning and all they need is a simple enough recipe right it's just cold fluid green circuits and you upgrade the card and get some junk some scrap that you got to delete and some liquid that you've got to cool off again so the liquid just cycles, and you need to keep inputting green circuits. And I, my, it's just a mess, and you need to get rid of the scrap. You know, like, you gotta get the scrap out, green cards in, and deal with some liquid in. And this is just a nightmare mess. Uh, part of the problem was also you get these junk cards from the final science tier, which you can try to turn back into uh, blank cards, which would go back into... Um, the system that you can recycle basically or you could just throw them into the sun i guess but um they also use up some cold liquids so and they give you broken data cards which as far as i know are completely trash and i already have a ton of them and uh this is not a good way to get rid of them yet this is uh yeah filtered so those just stay there we need i need to figure out what to do with those too hold on um So, scrapping? Alright, so we need a recycling facility somewhere. And we can we can upgrade that. just Because this is a bottleneck that will eventually stop me. 100%. Uh, do I have a recycling facility up here? That is a recycling facility. It's currently my... This is where the scrap is supposed to go. Ah, yes, <laughs> that is where the scrap is supposed to go. 
I got a lot of rough data substrate. How did that all end up here? My inventory system is just a disaster. <laughs> this whole thing. Oh, jeez. Um, what are you all beeping about? Oh, Lava World is on fire. As is this tradition. Let's... Just make a bigger passive chest. And I'll just have it go up or something. I don't know what to do with all this ore. Um, like, we're in space getting, you know, recycled ore. Um, anyway, the scrap gets called over. The recycler turns it into random garbage that we store up here for now, because I don't know what else to do with it. And then... Uh, the liquid, the heavy, the, the, he the, the heavy oil comes out and gets turned into solid fuel for some reason, because I felt like it, I guess. But we have a ton of scrap just full of the inventory. So yeah, we gotta get rid of that. Glad I caught that. So, okay, good. We also need the other one that takes, I need another recycling facility. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Do we have one? Thermodynamic, plasma, hypercooler, thermal radiator. That's a no. Oh, oh, what are you? You're a recycling facility. You're here. Your job was to get rid of all those barrels. Actually, that's kind of important. Um, although it needs to be somewhere better. Um, I think this box was just full of them at one point. We should... Boy, I have a lot of things to fix. Honestly, these requester chests are still very new. We have not had a chance to install them in very many places. Um, logistic network is just barely getting going. So we want to request empty barrels. Because we have to ship liquids via barrels. So we want all empty barrels to come here. If there's none, it's fine. But there should be some. Maybe somewhere else is doing that job. Yes. Okay. Okay. I already did it. Or at least I did the automated version. This is what I'm trying to do. Okay. So I guess what I'm doing, I think I, I figured this out. We ship heavy oil, lubricant, and whatever the liquids we need for the processing here. They come up in barrels. We got the three barrels here. But I put all of the unpackers close together because we get the liquid out and the empty barrels. And then the empty barrels just get immediately turned to steel, which is good because we always need steel. Uh... I actually like overdid it. So I have two recycling machines. Three recycling machines. Okay, this is very inefficient. Hold on, we can do this better. This is silly. I don't know why I did this. I don't think... Well, unless they get really overloaded. Maybe I was worried that we would be unpacking faster than we could recycle. Maybe... Yeah, maybe I'll just leave it. Point is, the stuff that's coming from the planet, we don't need... Um, we don't need this. So we can, we, can, we can salvage that. And any other empty barrels might as well... Just put the requester chest down here, right? And have the empty barrels end up here. Cause that'll be fine. So I don't think we need three steel chests to, to recycle empty barrels, but um, it is what it is for now. And I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to change too much while I'm in the middle of my new build, right? Empty barrel where, so we've got all the full barrels. There's the empty barrel. Alright, so that'll, any, if, if any of these pop up somewhere, it'll show up here, it'll get empty to steel, the steel will get put here, which is now backed up, which is kind of nice, because we're not demanding it from space anymore. Now that does mean that, that's a problem. I mean, you see, this is why I didn't want this to turn off ever, because now, in theory, we could run out of any of the liquids, because we don't have anywhere to put the steel. Because I have the import of steel overriding the... Well, actually, the only one that would stop would be this one. These two will fill this box up of steel before they stop working. Um, so, you know, we could do the same thing here. Right. 
just in case we run out of uh, petroleum gas somewhere. Let's just see how it's looking. Maybe it messed up already. Yeah, we got a lot of petroleum gas, but it actually was probably going down. So, hey, we fixed another problem before it blew up in our face. <laughs> All right, focus. Where was I? Trying to recycle broken data cards. Okay. Those things recover scrap. So if possible, we actually want them to output there. So we are... Th there's a lot of recipes here. Um, broken data card. Just dump it on the condos, yeah. Surely they won't, they won't mind. Okay, I don't really care about speed. I'll just... Throw in some boring efficiency mods. Now, this thing needs the data cards, which, you know, we might as well... In fact, in space, I feel like you're more designed to use uh, requester bots anyway more. It, 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 Like, belts are kind of expensive in space. So, flying stuff around seems more appropriate. It's space. Uh, I'm looking for... Data cards. Broken data cards. Where, If you were a broken data card, where would you be? Science. Gotcha. All right, this should do it. Request them all. Simple. Should have done this ages ago. You just take the broken data cards from researching, turn them into scrap, put the scrap here, turn it into junk. And the junk fills up, and then what? I don't know. But at least until the junk fills up, it'll work. I think. Okay, that's one less uh, weird problem. So... The main bottleneck I was trying to figure out was how to get more of these uh, machine learning datas. And it will have to look something similar to this. Unfortunately. Although I will try to split. Um, you know, I thought I had a chest here that had all my construction materials. Hold on. Um, this bed. My space construction. what I was working on. Um, space assemblers. Good. All the stuff we're going to need. We might need a thermal radiator too. Also, I don't know why I've got all this sulfur. Please go away. Just go away. Wherever wherever you want it. See, this guy wanted sulfur. It's a huge waste. Um, okay. Whatever is producing rough... Hold on. Uh, I need to figure out how much rough data storage is in the network because I'm seeing it every chest I open right now and that's not a good sign. Where is this stuff coming from and why is it everywhere? So, these guys take raw materials and make rough data substrate. Plus some scrap. The active provider chest is, I think, the wrong thing. I think what it's doing... Yeah, okay, this is a big mistake. I was using this as a passive provider chest. And it is actively sending the substrate away. Even though the only machine that uses it is attached to it. Uh, that's a big whoops. I think my idea was I wanted the scrap to be pushed out of here so it didn't back up. Which was dumb because all you need to do is one requester chest. Because the scrap all goes to one place anyway. And the requester can handle it. It does not need to be an active provider. Alright. Well, we were fixing lots of stuff. All my mistakes from earlier. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to have a lot of rough data substrate out in the world. Um, everything seems to make a lot of scrap up here. But that's, that's okay. So, I need real quick check. How bad is it with rough data? Uh, oh man, we have 30,000. Okay, hold on. Alright, ho 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 hold on. Um, I need, I need to clear some of that out. Uh, yeah. I did not expect it to just infinitely produce and fill up random storage chests. Uh, we need it to 
be used here on priority. Actually... Like, I don't want to be wasting any resources making more until it's empty. So... What did I say? Like, 20,000? I actually... I think we need, like... Oh, I don't have it researched yet. Uh... I'm gonna try to research the giant warehouses. Um... I'll just make a nearly max size one, but... Ooh! That's a little awkward. Alright, mega chest, um... Please request infinite data storage. Uh, I think this chest actually holds more than a thousand, so just manually set it to twenty thousand. That should request it all. Um, rough data, still limited by our output. Yeah, I mean we have twenty-eight thousand. <laughs> There is so much in our, our... Our boxes are just overflowing with this junk. So I don't want these to work ever again. No, no. Um, I can do this. Um, I need control wire. Because I'm going to forget. This is going to take so long to fix itself. I'm going to leave them there, but I'm going to turn them off in a second. I don't think we can... Oh, nice long connector. Cool. Alright. Okay, they should be able to read the, the amount there. So, basically, simple enough. Rough data storage. You're only turning on if there is... Like, basically none. <laughs> like, less than a hundred. Then you can turn on at that point. Copy and paste. Alright. So these inserters should not pull anything out until this is empty. And it's going to take a while. <laughs> so they can take a nice long break. Like, big old vacation here. But they'll still be there to work one day when we inevitably need them again. But it is going to take uh, the lifetime of the universe before they're needed. But I don't want to delete them, because we want the system to work. Alright, and the bots are going to be busy filling this up for a while, that's fine. Okay. That's a big problem we figured out. Next problem! Factorial, making you feel good by solving problems. Alright, so what is this limited on? Just, it's, it's output limited, that's fine. We're not really doing... Well, we are doing some research right now. You can see it in action, actually. This bad boy is researching as quick as it can, but it's waiting for these uh, machine learning data. So, honestly, we need more if I wanted to run kind of efficiently. I probably don't need these speed modules in it at all. Uh, I thought I would, but... You know. Oh, shoot. <laughs> you can't uh, control click those in because it's an input. It's not just a module. I'm going to take two of my big speed mods out. It It's going to drop its speed down, but it's also going to drop the power down by like a couple megawatts. Uh, it doesn't make a huge difference, but I think because it's so limited on input anyway, there's no use wasting the, uh, the accelerators. Um, if anything, it's, it's these guys that need the speed. And, uh, I only got so much. But, you know, that'll increase the throughput a, a little. We do have the giant requester chests now. Good. I think while I'm just bumming around up here, I'm going to try to research the swarm safety. This will put us up to 1,500 logistic bots in a, in a network to be safe, which is nice. So, I'm going to assume... I need more space here. Uh... Oh, right. I was planning on putting um, space-style belts while we're here. It'd be nice if I could save, like, a couple different, uh, like, loadouts. You probably can. 
there's a way to change your hotbar. Um, but to have like a space version of it and then like a terrestrial version of it because you use very different materials. All right, so that will basically 50-50 split the, the blank cards. So we will be using those with new supercomputers and I'm gonna want, I'm gonna try four. So let's see how many we can build. Uh, I don't think I can build them in my inventory, actually. They're a, uh, a hard-to-build one. So I believe you have to use a manufactory, a space manufactory, to build supercomputers. Which are going to be in here somewhere. Or maybe in the science side? No. Definitely in production. So, just keep your eyes open. Uh, supercomputers, there you go. Not super complicated to build, just stuff um, as usual. And I just don't have enough. So I want a bunch of them. We could just request some blue and... Oh, we're not going to have enough low density. That's for sure. But we'll just... Uh, throw down a quick requester in this spaghetti of garbage. We need... Um, La Blue Science. And... Low density. All the best computers are space computers. For sure. For sure. Why am I so dumb? Uh, what am I trying to say? I need... I can put a bunch of these here. Low density. Gee whiz. This is one of those building materials. I think I just blocked it out of my mind. I hate it so much. Um, it's so expensive and I never have enough for anything. Okay, that should get us in a little bit. Uh, some computers, space computers, supercomputer. I keep hearing the sound of robots exploding. It's unfortunate. <laughs> I don't know why. I feel like my swarm safety should cover a thousand of them, and there's only 519, but I keep hearing exploding sounds in the background. They're very busy um, filling this up. I could have done it myself, but hey man, look, they're robots. I really would like you to stop exploding though, please. I'm assuming they're not getting enough power. There's a, there's a building later on that recharges them faster, but at this point, they just recharge really slowly at a, at a, at a robot port. And I don't think there's anything I can do about it. So if you have, you know, thousands of robots or even just hundreds of robots, they just cannot recharge before they die, I guess. It's not the best. Alright, well, we we're starting to get... This is a, a situation where a uh, the correct solution is actually a stack inserter. Because we want to carry more than two at a time. That'll get this machine going a bit faster. That's fine. Okay, so we'll get the computers. Let's start. Let's start putting down our for real layout here. So, because we're trying to get science, the science needs to go over here. Unless I want to move the labs, and I don't. It needs to end up over here, and it would be ideal to share the belt. No, we're already sharing the belt. We need a new input line. At this point, I'm doing it. Please stop alarming me. Um, we're we're gonna do with the requester chest. I can't belt anymore in. There there is no more belting into this system, um, unless you have super long inserters. Uh, now to be fair, I started switching to the, the the silly trick where you just chain them like this. I think this is the future where you instead of having belts, you just have a, a, a series of, of labs that, that just steal from each other. I think that's, we're just going to redesign this real quick. Yeah. As the robots continually explode. Sounds great. Don't mind this. Alright, 
clean it all up a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna sink these a little bit. It'd be nice to have like one more maybe. I might have one more. These are just advanced labs. Maybe the best bet would be just like, hey, network, is there an advanced lab here? I'd love it if you could just deliver it to me. Uh, hey, there is one in there. There's six in there. Beautiful. I forgot. I should have turned my logistics on. Um, it'll it'll uh, clean my inventory out, and it'll um, when I finish breathing, my my life support packs uh, get turned into waste. If the logistics are on, they'll get cleaned up and re re replaced, basically, which is actually what we want. Now, to be fair. This is way more labs than we can actually run, unless you bank up a lot of science in advance. But this is how much space we have, so these are the labs I'm going to have. They don't use all that much power overall. Uh, although, I should really continue doubling down on the productivity. Uh, it makes the research a bit slower, but you get, um, you get more out of less, you know? And I have modules. And, like, we should be getting tier 3 modules now. Or maybe even getting close to tier 4 modules. Um, which would be nice, you know. Nice upgrade. But the resource costs is just too much right now. I can't, can't afford it. Okay. So, we're switching to a bot research system. The good news is research is generally fairly slow in terms of consumption generally so what we're what I'm gonna do this box needs to move um, what the frick? thanks robots filled it up with uranium and then you give me the uranium get rid of it thanks for nothing uh, all right this is gonna be a little bit it's a little bit troublesome here hold on uh, I don't want to use the cool belts right now. Too, too much inventory space. Really nice multicolored speedy belts. They're great. I shouldn't even have blue belts up here. Um, I don't need space rails either. I don't need enriched iron. I keep trying to get rid of the sulfur, but it keeps coming back. <laughs> I'm trying. All right, but the plan is a mega requester doesn't even need to be the largest, but it just needs to be big. Just to be fairly grand. Of course, it's too big. That's that's what I get. All right, let's try the not as quite as big one. <laughs> I have to be a little bit careful with my requests. Um, that is still one square too big give up. <laughs> uh, okay. Still large, but not quite as large. You can go here. What I want is, this is going to request all of it. And then we're just going to use actually stack inserters because they'll be faster. I might upgrade the fast inserters later, but we'll see. Um... Okay, so just don't miss any here, basically. So, we start with red, and we're going to want... Well, how much how much capacity do one of these chests have? 256 slots. One slot is 200 for probably all science. So I think you could easily have a thousand of each, right? No trouble at all. And the robots are just going to be super busy. Rocket science. 
Those are the five terrestrial ones. We'll now do the next layer on a different layer. The basic science, space science, which we've got. Basic utility science, which we've mostly got. Production science, which we're probably going to get in a minute. And then eventually optimization science, which we do not have. But those are all the sciences we use, I think. Quest them all there. A thousand each. I'm gonna just make me make myself a another storage warehouse because I need more. And I'm gonna put all the mini boxes into there basically. All the science somewhere. There you go. Let's give the bots a bit of a break and help them out here. The rest of the blue can go away. And excuse me, bots. Oh, it's because all of the all of the ones on the ground aren't uh... right, right, right. Okay, the bots will figure it out as soon as I move it. Clean up, clean up. Those labs can just go wherever. Hopefully, I will have a, uh, a couple supercomputers by the time this is done. Okay, that should be all the terrestrial colors. And then I need to deal with these. So, this is a passive provider. We don't need to output from it anymore. This stuff we can clean up. This honestly just letting the bots do it is probably probably what I should have done from the beginning. But I didn't have the ability to build requester chests, so. I had to get utility science before we could even do requesters. Alright, now we just put a passive here, passive provider, and that's it! Uh, it'll make utility science slowly. That'll be a pretty big bottleneck. It'll end up here eventually We just don't have enough, but there you go uh, and then so it's got fully filled colored science It's got fully filled space science It will get some utility science and we need to finish making productions and this should just work That's a honestly. I think I should have done this a long time ago from now on out research looks like this It's just so much easier than having well, we're up to what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll be up to nine science at a time soon. Like, trying to belt in nine different things into... There's only so many belts you can wind in, right? Like, let's just use the somewhat cheesy steal from a lab method. It's not really cheesy cheesy, it's just a bit... Of a, I don't know, I kind of feel like it's an exploit, but... Hey, it works. Okay, meanwhile, supercomputers, how are you doing? We got, we got tons of supercomputers. You can stop. Thanks. That's good. Um, we now have a good stash of supercomputers. We got some thermal radiators if we need them. I don't think I need more plasma generators, but I have them if I also need them. Let's get to work. I will need a bunch of space belts, and I'm doing okay on that. Okay, so what? Sh how should we do it? Um... The hardest part is machine learning. That will take the most space. Ingots, uranium, and vulcanite are just going to get belted in. Might as well get the plasma set up next. So we need the lithium, which is over here. And we need the plasma stuff, which is up here. Or the, the not plasma stuff. The stuff to make plasma stuff. So I need to connect this to its output. I want to leave a little bit of space for other machines. But this should work. So, unfortunately... Um, space pipes kind of suck. I hope there's an upgrade for them. Because they... Uh, they only go underground a, a tiny amount. Um, I've been used to steel pipes back on the planet that can go like 15 or 20 or something tiles. This is uh, not as much. 
<laughs> on the plus side, I think the mod lets you walk through pipes. Because in Vanilla Factory, I'm pretty sure just regular pipes block you from walking. But uh... All right. We've got chemicals. So far, so good. Now we just need to get the lithium here. And these things aren't going to be on for ages. I'm going to just keep these somewhat compact. And keeping in mind that back on our home planet, we're really not making very much lithium. So I don't really want to like overcharge this and burn through a ton. It's pretty slow. You can't productivity mod almost anything in space, really. Um, so I'll give it a, you know, 30% boost just for funsies. Uh, I'll... 60% boost. And I want uh, another probably buffer tank. I'm going to put... Did I not bring my buffer tanks with me? Oh. I must have left them back on uh, Earth. We probably don't need billions of it. Let's just make one of these. Just in case, I might want to parallel make more than one of these at a time, maybe. So I'm going to try to leave a little bit of space for that. But I don't expect I will need uh, too many of them. And like I said, although it's using 2.4 megawatts, power shouldn't be a problem for now. We're, we're not even using a fifth of our power, so it should be okay. Uh, okay, so that's Plasma Stream. That's one part done. Easy. Uh, fairly easy. The Vulcanite blocks, we're just going to make a requester chest, and then we're going to belt in... So I'm going to request Productivity and Vulcanite, and I'm going to definitely belt Iron and Uranium. So those we can belt over... Let's say, just the way this is starting to look, I'm just going to have the manufactory. So for now, we're only going to have the one. And I'm going to try to keep it away from my delivery system. So I'm just going to put it up here. And that way it's convenient for the plasma and pretty close to the belts for input. Whether or not this is a great plan, you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, plasma in, doesn't really matter what side. That's one. Then, like I said before, we probably won't need the speed on these, but we'll see. Uh, let's belt up next to these bad boys. I'm also a bit worried about the quantity of iron ingots we'll be able to actually keep going. There's a lot of the a lot of potential bottlenecks on this build. Did we not make any uh Yeah, we've got them. I just couldn't see. Just blind. I'll try to leave some gaps here and there so if we if we do need to do more crazy belting, it's not going to completely kill me, but Oh, I probably went up like one too. So if we ever do parallel multiple of these, we, we've got a belt system that will theoretically work. In theory, we can extend these if we need to, which is better than the utility science, which we can't. Uh, we need a little bit of power. Hey, okay. so that's almost the hard, like, you know, most of it's done, oddly enough. Um, yeah, for, for requesters, just going to use a regular one. Just needs to be the one, doesn't need to be two. Does need to be in the network, though. Haha. -ha. We are just out of it. Hilarious. Sure, good enough. Uh, that lets me build my walls out a bit further anyway, because I like using the bots to build my platform. Uh, so we need modules and vulcanite. 
And honestly, this is where most of Vulcanite should end up, at least for now. So let's request a significant amount. And productivity modules. All right, and that is 50, well, five out of six, uh, you know, 80% of, of the build. Unfortunately, it's the easy 80%. For now, I'm going to just have the science when it's done. Once we start making it, it's just going to go here and it can fill up as much as it wants. Well, I need to deal with the junk data card. Um, so actually, actually, we want to not use a regular inserter here. This is a good time to use some of our fancy inserters like a filter insert, which I don't usually build, but are easy enough and we can just have them pull out so I think we want to use these chests for different purposes we want the output to go to two different places um, so this is specifically the red science you know inserter outputter and then we'll need to figure out where the junk data cards are going uh, because that'll be the same general process as this where they can come out and be recycled all right, meanwhile, we've got the first step of the data up this way. And I've got the thermal fluid here. This is kind of what I was hoping to mirror a little bit. So I do have basic thermal fluid nearby. I don't need, I don't normally need the, the thermal fluid. Uh, it's only the utility science that needed it. And these, so we just need it for the supercomputers, okay. And they need the cold fluid and the green circuits. I really should have just... Should I just make a line of these? I think I probably should. Um, maybe just like right here in the middle of nowhere. Just take... This is just a, this is a bit of a bit bigger upgrade than I was originally thinking. But if we just took... We've got another. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to extend. I'm not gonna have two separate supercomputer warehouses. I'm gonna have one that splits to both utility and productivity. At least I think I will. And I just want to share the thermal fluid coming out, which needs to be co cooled. So we don't even actually need very many pipes here. Um, constant combinator. Good old space computers, indeed. Yeah. Uh, why? I got some junk in my inventory. I don't know how it got there. Get, go away, please. Uh, all right. So we're going to use one of these guys. Thermal radiators, pretty simple. Um, one of the most simple, I suppose. You just put in cold fluid and you get out, or you put in warm fluid at 25 and you get it out at negative 10. Bam, the end. Um, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Is there a reason why all of these uh, cables are not connected to the power grid? <laughs> Whoops. I think I was just using it for um, uh, circuit control. Because I, I think I turned off... I turned off the inserter because I didn't want to keep making this stuff forever. Because I think I was running out of materials. I didn't want to like burn through them all. And I figured 25,000 thermal fluid was probably enough. And it honestly probably is. So, we'll make more if we need it. But for now, cold thermal fluid. What we did before was we made a little tank, which we'll do again. I'll make a slightly bigger tank this time because we're going to use it for longer and more serious. It's possible we'll need more than one of these radiators, but I kind of doubt it. I'll leave a little bit of space in case we, we need to branch in stuff. All right, so I'll start storing some cold fluid, just like this one. Then we need the data banks. So we need the white cards plus green circuits. 
and just a whole bunch of supercomputers that can be looped in. So... This is a test to see if I can figure it out. Logistics network. Okay, so these guys, their job is to make proper cards. Now they need some inputs. I'm just going to throw some power converters in, or efficiency modules for now. That's not the long term solution. Um, we definitely need more power or more, yeah, well, more power too. that spot after all okay so my plan is to use this line and then we can get rid of the splitter once we've got this all figured out we can get rid of a lot of these pipes too once we got this all figured out that's uh, a not quite where I want it So we're going to have to be doing underground piping out and then connecting it up there. So I'm going to need more underground pipes, but I'm pretty confident they're in the network up here in space because I knew I would need more. Yeah, space pipes. Bring me, bring me space pipes, please, sir. And also bring me normal space pipes. So the bot should cover that. So... Because we need the liquid out, and it'll be warm, and then we got to cycle it back into here. And part of keeping it at 25k max for production means that there's always room in this tank for the expended warmed up fluid after you've cooled it to come back in. Because we do not want this to be full or the system stops. We just want this to turn off and only turn on when it gets too low. Uh... The thing we need is the green circuits, and there's a convenient way to share a belt for those. Just a bit closer. We'll just have this box request the green circuits, which we know there's lots of. And that's that. So we'll have all the stuff we need to make science, sort of. Just gonna use the top left corner to be consistent. I guess we could go horizontally. Actually, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Less space. It should use the same number of undergrounds, but we should have enough room for this. So this is the output lane of warm liquids. Don't, don't be dirty. I know Robert's thinking. Uh, and then this lane... Goes back into here. So it out, picks it up, out. What we're missing, of course, is getting stuff out, right? We've got all the stuff coming in, and we can add five more if we need to, easy enough. But we need to get the data out to the research, and we need to get rid of the junk scrap. So I could do two different outs, or I could do one combined out and then filter it and I think the filtering thing is the way to do it so this is where the big long exerters exerters I mean what are we doing we're not inserting anything here right we're exerting don't be mad all right so I want the direction to be leftwards and I of course ran out of belts so in addition to space pipes I need some space belts please I don't want to have to go looking for them. I know they exist. Bring me space belts, please. I'll just take a drink while we wait for space belts. Um, and then we're going to put... Somewhere around here, we will split stuff off. Honestly, this is annoying, so I'm just going to straighten this out. It's really not worth it, but I'm doing it anyway. Clean up my inventory again, too, but... Totally not worth it, but... 
Uh oh, what did I delete? That was a splitter, right? Yeah, that's fine. Accidental deletion. Okay, so once we're around here, past the production section, we split off the scrap, and we need the actual usable data to split. Uh, it doesn't really matter where it splits. I'll just do it over here. So we, we basically send material to the right, and then we get the things we need for science coming to the left, and we can we can go up and down for both utility and production. And then in theory could be expanded and hold more uh, if, if we have higher throughput to do more science altogether. And we'll be able to delete a bunch of the junk around there as this uh, comes together. All right, so I want the right I just want to filter out the scrap. If I can even find where that is. Uh, this looks like scrap. Okay. So the cards will stay on one side. The scrap will go to the left. Which at this point, there's really nothing to do with it other than put it into a provider chest. I could have pulled it off the line too but how much do we get uh you actually get one scrap for each uh process so we get a lot of scrap is, is what i'm hearing um so i definitely want like a fast inserter and I, I might need something faster than that even um can we use these up here no you can't use uh the, the fast loaders maybe there's yeah there's a space version i haven't built any of these because they're kind of annoying that might be the right time for a space inserter. We'll see. All right. And then once we clean this up, that should do the job. Liquid gets recycled, recooled. It is perhaps limited by how quickly we can make cold liquid. But this will build up quite the buffer, which is yet another buffer in case, uh, you know, I run out of materials. And then this... The job is just to get split. And I'll probably be deleting most of these lines. These, these liquid lines won't be needed for much longer, I don't think. Uh, we will need to underground this to save some belts. So we're doing a hopefully 50-50 split here where half goes utility and half goes to um, the new one. The new production one. So just like that... That's everything it needs to produce. Now we need to get rid of the other junk cards. And I think we're going to use the bots for that. I, I wasn't sure how I was going to handle it, but um, I think bots are the way to go. Hey, we got our first uh, achievement for that too. Hey, you, were, you saw it here first, folks. Uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for that filter inserter I just built. This one is specifically... Oh, it's actually not supposed to be in this requester. It's still a passive provider, just a different one. This is the one that's supposed to take out... I forget the name of it. Um, junk data cards. So we'll filter for that. All right. And then we will request those somewhere specifically to recycle them rather than belting them all in like dummies. So we should start to get red science now that can be used right now. It's ready to go. Um, I need to reconnect utility science because I can delete most of this. But I do need a way of still using a recycler for the junk data. I still need one of those. So it's another supercomputer connected to this sort of system. It needs the cold. Could be connected to this. It's a little bit. It's not too far away. I want to keep it like somewhat central. So 
we still need the cold in and then the warm out. Which, there's no real reason that couldn't share the the exhaust with the other data computers. I don't think, I don't expect we'll be coming anywhere close to the throughput of one of these pipes. They, they produce the liquid five at a time every ten seconds, so these pipes can hover a significant amount of, of multiple buildings altogether, I, I'm pretty confident. So this guy, he needs the requester chest for the junk. So we just saw this, we need the junk cards from wherever we're getting them, and there'll probably be more and more places as time goes on. We need those to show up, and then we can take clean cards, and we're actually pretty close to where we could squish them back on. Yeah, okay, we can actually do a cool trick here. Assuming I can figure out a way to connect this all. I, I think this will work pretty good. Um, it'll look a little bit spaghetti, but I think it'll be fairly, fairly convenient. So, one of the things we don't want, we can just immediately send off to the uh, nether realm. We do not want to deal with broken data cards. We just get rid of them. No point even trying to f figure something out. Those just get sent off. We've already set up the system. The broken data cards will come up here, get turned into scrap, and then get turned into other junk. That's fine. But the stuff we actually want are these data, uh, blank data cards. And they should actually take priority on this belt before we make new ones. So that's what I'm going to try to do. It's important that I get the side of the belt correct, or it won't work. So right now they're on, you know, a side. That's the wrong side. We can fix that by just doing some zappity zoo. It's the correct term. And now... If I connect these correctly, and I probably won't... We can input priority the left. It will not displace the electric, the, the green circuit boards. It will end up right there. And the new ones that are being crafted will let the green circuits through. But this won't make new ones unless there's room. And, you know, this is not going to make a ton of replacement cards, but it will make some. And this is where we're going to add them into the system. I've already got a billion in my inventory. So let's put them back in here. We're apparently not getting enough polished cards. Let me just double check that. There's another problem. We'll deal with that in a bit. We're, we're almost done the current thing. Don't forget, cards and water need to be looked at. Because apparently there's a problem. There's always a problem. Seems to be working. So, with this system set up, those systems set up, we don't need anything here other than we need the liquid to come in and out. We need the boxes with the, you know, the unique inputs, but the machine learning data doesn't need to come from over here anymore. So, that can just be there. We're gonna use the bots to delete a bunch of stuff here. So it's starting to look... I think I'm gonna be a lot happier with this renovation. It's It still has some room to improve, no doubt, but... A lot of stuff just floating around here. I'm not sure quite why some of these inserters were doing whatever they're doing, but we're just going to delete them and fix whatever's broke. We got filled up with scrap. That's fine. So this is the requester that has all the usual things. 
that just go straight in. We just need to make sure that this stuff gets in there. I don't think we need the chiller anymore, the radiator. This is a lot of liquid that... It's kind of a waste. Hold on. Um, I can... Temporarily... Uh, let's not keep filling it up, though. What I would like to use is use this already pre-cooled fluid, which is fairly expensive. second. I'll fix that in a second if I need to. It's fine, it's fine. Alright, there should be no direction to this. So it's 20,000, it's going down. Uh, if anything, if I put a pump onto it, it'll empty like instantly. Assuming we can put pumps in space. First try. Alright, that should empty that out pretty dang fast. It'll fill this up, or at least it should. Once this is empty, then I'll delete it and I won't feel so guilty. Bam. Not so guilty. Alright, and that was somewhere like that. Okay. It's coming along. We're getting there. So, the research... Really doesn't need nearly as many of these pipes. All we need is warm on one or cold input on one side and warm output on the other side, and that's it. Uh, and then we got to belt in uh, the cards. So yeah, we, we can clean this place up a lot, which is good if we ever want to, you know, double up or expand it. This will be a heck of a lot easier to get around. And then, Why was that going back to here? That was... Oh, right, because I didn't have that storage tank. So now it's all coming from this... Or no, we had that storage tank. I don't understand it. That's filling it up. These are emptying it. This is my return line. This is the outline that should fill this up. So... No, no, this is warm. We don't actually want... Oh, I see. This was the return line... But we have a better one now. So we're just going to connect it up to the single return line. It's too complicated. I will say the space stuff, getting these space sciences, is kind of crazy complicated. It, it's not easy. If you're struggling to follow along, I, I totally get you. Um, in terms of distance, I don't think it's probably the worst idea to start using a couple pumps for some of the, the bigger pushes from a storage tank into a, a bunch of machines. Turns out I need more space anyway. I mean, I could move this now, but um, I don't want to. could rotate it. Yeah, that'll be a little bit easier to connect up. Just want the two pipes we want kind of near together. This is warm thermal fluid. Uh, we had a tiny little bit of cold stuck in there. I got you. All right, warm for output. If anything, this actually should have a pipe or a pump. It's for the direction of it more than anything. I don't want them filling up and slowing down the exhaust of those machines. So this gives us a direction to the pipes. So anything that comes in here gets pushed into this as long as there's room. And it doesn't just backflow into here for no reason. Meanwhile, we do actually need cold fluid to get it to work. Like so. And that, everything but one. And then we just need this. Um, I have to deal with the uh, card again, but other than that, it's almost done. Cool. Almost there. This is a pretty big upgrade to, um, the ability to, 
expand things and also it's probably easier to look at and understand what the heck is going on. Um, we'll do the same thing we did on the other one where we have a filter to pull out the, the junk data and then it should just fly over to the recycler again. All right, good. So that should be mostly automated, other than the stuff we have to bring into space ourselves. But, you know, mostly automated utility and prediction science, I think. Now, to figure out, you know, the bottleneck is going to be a little tricky to see what's working and what's not. For instance, I don't see a lot of steel ingots here. Or iron ingots. I wonder why. I do need to look. Don't let me forget. I have to figure out what's going on with this thing, because something's not working. It's backed up on garbage water, so we're going to have to fix the garbage water. But we're not going to get any science done if we cannot get iron ingots. I wonder why it's not working. Hmm. Would you take a guess that we're probably not making any iron in the smelter? So we're not getting any iron from the requester. There is three on the way, and uh, that's not enough. We need a lot more. So where is it coming from? Well, we have some iron. This is the iron line. This is the steel line. We are trying to keep the lights on in our base by making, we actually, our steel has actually caught up. We're making almost exactly as much steel as we're using. If you look at the number in the warehouse here, 930, 940. It's coming out at one full, well, it's coming out at about the same speed as it's going in, whatever that is. The rate is similar, which means we're not doing much with it, but hey, that's nice. We're actually not starved. We are starved on iron though, we're not getting nearly enough. And therefore we're not sending it to space. How would we fix that? I don't even know. Um, Legitimately, it's Pyroflux. Um, I think until we can add significantly, like at least double the Pyroflux, I don't think we can actually smelt enough iron ingots for this research. Yeah, don't cross the fluids. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, well, it would be way more complicated. You'd be doing door Fortress. Because I was thinking a lot of fluids should probably mix. Because like thermal fluid, it's hot and cold. Well... If you mix them together, the temperature should average out, right? You could just math it out. But it probably would chug on the system. It's probably much easier to have a state of this is 10 degree water, this is 30 degree water, and not have to worry about everything in between. But but yeah, there's, there's probably some good reason. To, from what I've seen, the factorial devs are really good at um, optimizing the code. Uh, so there's, there's probably some sound logic for why they don't do uh, fluid mixing and gas mixing. Ah, uh, so what do we... How do I get this to work? I can't even just be like, Oh, it's easy, just go add some miners. You got 4.2 million iron up here, just loop that in, you'll be fine. I could make more iron plates like that. But we are limited on iron ingots. I mean, I could turn, like, more of the smelters into plate mode rather than uh, molten mold. Molten mold? Uh... Because if I was making more uh, molten iron, then these will fill up and keep... Because, uh, I mean, I need... The steel's okay, but, but we definitely need more iron. Um, as things get destroyed. Yeah, we definitely don't have anywhere near enough iron. Because we're not going to get... Like... I'll go look at the... Uh, I'll go look at my labs, but I don't know if we have enough of this new science to do much. Um, so it's the red production science. There's 136 in the chest. And then, you know, two per lab, so... 18. We got 20 labs, not a terrible number of labs. So that's 40 plus 136. 
So we could research up to 100 and, what was it, 50 or something of a red science. So, you know, we could get coal liquefaction or another mechanical facility of some sort or a growth facility. I could get beacons. I cannot get Culverex, which is one of the things I want. Hmm. I need 250 to get fancy legs. Or 500 for a railgun. Maybe that's all we need, right? The problem with railguns, uh, that's a lot of steel. Steel and red circuits per shot. But they look cool. Railguns, right? Lots of, lots of fun. Fancy fuel. I have no idea what advanced fuel even does. <laughs> Probably lets you fly in your jetpack better or something. We don't have orange science or amber science. I don't really care about follower robots. No orange. No orange. No orange. I believe... I'm just going to look at the optimization re recipe, but I'm pretty sure optimization is the one that needs the vitamelange. Which is the next thing after we get this fixed. Maybe. Alright. So, the general research for Amber is... Lubricant. Fairly easy. These, these cards we've been working on, that's there. Immersite I have not done yet. Speed modules, sure, we got some of those. Again, one of the three colored modules kind of sucks to use, but whatever. And heat shielding, which, well, you know, I, I have some. But we don't have the Immersite. I thought it was uh, Vitamelange we'd be needing, but actually it's not. It's um, Immersite. And it's weird, because it turns into data, and then you take the data back to the old-fashioned blank tech card which is like super basic. So that's actually not as unachievable as I thought. I thought I thought the next tech was going to be kind of a pain. Um that's not too bad. It's the 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 research data that's kind of tricky. Heck, that doesn't even use It's a space man. Yeah, another space manufacturer. But it doesn't even use the very little liquid. Like, it doesn't have the thermal fluid like like the optimization again. Lubricant, you know, we're shipping to the, the space. We've already got a pretty good machine data, learning data. Like, we've got a build for that. I've got heat shields. I can get speed mods. Well, let's, let's think about Immersium for just a second while I'm trying to decide what to do with all the iron. Because Immersium might even be the easiest of the things at the moment. Um, let's just clean this up a bit here. Um, I think... Probably not for today's stream, but legitimately... There's a, a, reasonable, of, a reasonable amount of Immersite on my abandoned planet that is super safe with no biters. And I think I put a mine on it just to see how it worked, so it's already like partially ready. And I don't have to go to another planet, which sure, there's lots of Immersite on the Biter planet, thanks. There's also more, if we, if we get, if we go to the safer um, Biter, or safer Vulcanite planet, which I will have to eventually, we can get more Immersite there, and a crap ton of Uranium. So maybe Barrel and Immersite are next on my list. I, I thought it would be um, this stuff. But apparently not. So... Right, I was going to show you guys the map. Um, what's the alarm here? Oh, a uh, meteor, I think, probably destroyed one of my power poles and they didn't have a replacement. Maybe they have a replacement of those in the box. 
Uh, it's not super important, but um, Immersite, yeah, it's got like a fancy mine. You have to, it's kind of like oil. You have to find like a specific site for it. Like like a crude oil site and you just build a super mine on it. Kind of maybe more like these um, core drills. And there's, I believe, a few on this planet. So there's the, the big purple dots. Oh yeah, there's a whole bunch. Look at this. Well, you can't really look very closely, but there's at least a million Immersite up there plus... Another million. Another two million. There's more Immersite here than we're going to need. Yeah, okay. It's easy to get. We've already got a minor proof of concept and a bunch of raw Immersite just stacked up because I figured that was super easy. I believe I had a look at approximately the production chain so I can show it off. You take the Immersite, you crush it like typical. You get some crushed Immersite and some garbage. Whatever, no big deal. You take the crushed Immersite, you add some acid, sulfuric acid, conveniently on a planet with infinite oil, like this planet with infinite oil, um, we, we have really as much oil as we could ever want because, I mean, there's 29 million, 32 million, plus the core drills give you infinite oil. Oil is never going to run out on this planet. So this uh, that that's easy, right? Like sulfur is just gas, really. Uh, petroleum gas plus uh, water or something. So... Crushed Immersite, so far, super easy, uh, super easy. That gets you the, this time you get a, a, a liquid out of it, so you get immers Immersium Sulfide, so that's okay. If you add in Silicone, which now we're getting a little bit trickier, plus some fine Immersite powder, which is not this powder. So we have to get that too. Maybe this is the wrong order, but you know, Immersium sulfide we have. It outputs a little bit of spare sulfur, which could probably feed back into the uh, sulfuric acid. So the, the the sulfide into a crystal is simple if you've got the fine powder. The fine powder, I think, is the hard one because it needs nitric acid, which is a little bit of a pain to make. And then we get some excess nitrogen that we can either feed back into the acid or just vent stack it. But, um, yeah, so we've got powder. Wait. Right. So we're going to get a lot of, pa uh, of of sulfide. Like, we're going to turn all the powder into sulfide. And then we're going to turn some of the sulfide into fine powder. And then take a combination of sulfide and the new fine powder to make the crystal. And then... The you don't even need the crystal to make the immersium plates. As long as you have the fine powder from this... You can make the plates, but I know something needed the crystals as well. Um, like the research we're looking at, right? So we need both the plates and the crystals. They both come from effectively the same process. I could have set this up when we were here. I just didn't think I needed Immersium that badly, but it looks like we do. You can see how I like to plan it out. This is how the cryoflux went. That was much simpler. This was too complicated for me to do at that moment because I have to bring more machines here. And then the other one, Barrel, is actually worse. Um, we can mine Barrel. There's some, like, right here. Uh, I think this planet has a pretty substantial amount of Barrel as well. Um, it's, it's a good planet. As much as it ran out of Cryocyte so fast, it's got lots of other goodies. So, you know, I've got a, I've got a stack of, of Barrel ready. And I don't think I have any use for the Barrel yet. But it's got a bigger, bigger line. It's... Even just, you can't just crush it right off. You have to uh, take the barrel, take some sulfuric acid, and you get another blend of garbage. And then you get your sulfate. You take your sulfate, and you need cryonite, which we do not really have enough of. I mean, yes. I've got a box with... Uh... Why was I making iron? I think I needed the iron for something. Oh, maybe that's the sulfuric acid, right? Yeah. No, no, I was making iron for the, the for the rockets, right? Um, we do have, you know, thirty three thousand cryonite rods. So it's it's, but it's not. I can't get any more on this planet. So doing barrel here might not be a very good idea. I think you want to do barrel somewhere that you can get, you know, an infinite amount of these because you're gonna run out. Uh, but then you get, so you get barrel plus acid to get a sulfate, and then. Sulfate plus rod to get a hydroxide. And then hydroxide, you just process to get powder. 
and some water. And then the powder, you add some coal, which you need coal, but if you have oil plus coal liquefaction, which is a tech we'll have soon, you'll get ingots, which you can turn into plates. And that's the, the beryllium list. And you could also turn it into molten. If you have if you also have power flux, then you can do the other method to get plates, uh, rather than just going through um, you, you can smelt. There's two two methods of smelting, basically. So that's, the, you know, reasonable. Um, but yeah, Immersite's certainly not as bad as Beryllium. I didn't expect that that would be my next thing. On the plus side, I do kind of have a somewhat automated uh, rocket silo stuck here, ready to go. It's not as far off as the, the, the one we were at today with all the Vulcanite. It's still a mess of inventory, don't get me wrong, but... You know, there's more bots. There's like 500 of each type of bot here ready to go and no biters to mess with me. Did my power replacement work? We've got, you know, giant oil. It was... Yeah, so we've got power again. Let's get rid of that. Try to clean up some of my errors. Okay. Alright. So... I did not expect optimization science to be quite as simple to do. I don't think I'm going to do it right now, but I, I've definitely bumped it up on my priority list because that's that's not going to be too bad. Um, given my shortage of iron, it actually might be easier to make than the 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 crimson science we're currently working on, because like we've got lubricant, lots of lubricants already here. Heat shielding, I believe, is already sent up as well. Oh, it's in this one. Um, easily enough to share. Uh, we do literally f send uh, heat shielding to this chest from the ground, so that's already figured out. I can move that around if I need to. Um, yeah. Let me just have a quick look at some of our systems here. So our plasma stream seems to be doing fine. The lithium has not backed up. You know, we've got a good amount of Vulcanite for now. It's the iron ingots that are bottlenecking us really badly. So the simplest of things is the one that's screwing us. Um, I'm not sure what I can do about that. I don't have an easy fix. Let's, uh, before I forget, let's, let's look at my liquid out. Because this stopped working, right? So we're not making rough data substrate, which will eventually run out because our gross water contaminated is not being processed. So why is it not? It goes all the way up here, but we're not moving the cleaned cosmic water out. This is a mess. This is a disaster too. It's, okay, all it is, is we were storing it and using it, and now we've got too much. Okay, easy enough. This is, this is one of those things that you just, if you prep properly, you'll hopefully catch, but it's easy to miss. Uh, let's see, I just need, none of these really have a direction on them, so I just need to... One power pull for control, and a flare stack to delete. Wait, what? Oh no, you can't put these in space. Uh-oh. How do we get rid of water in space? Uh. We actually need a way to vent this. So usually on, on the ground, right, I just make a flare stack and the liquid gets deleted. Uh-oh. I mean, I can keep making progressively larger um, containers. I think we need the thing that makes water to stop then. So, so the things that recycle it and have it bounce around won't make too much generally. But the one that actually creates new water out of lubricant, which is this machine. This is the one that needs to stop when the when the container's full. So to do that, 
or or only turn on when it's low. Actually, is, is probably the way to look at it. Um, that's my easiest way to do this. Um, I don't know how to control it. I guess we need another pump, uh, or another steel pump. So that uh, been using a lot of pumps up here. Lots of fun. I'm just gonna say the the lubricant is my control because it's more valuable than just boring old water. Although space water is a little bit harder to get, but it's still. Oh, that's a bad spot. Like that. All right, so we don't want it to accept lubricant. What can we connect to here? Cannot connect there. We can connect to the storage tank. It's not usually how I like to. Oops, <laughs> not quite according to plan. Try that again. Uh, I prefer personally having the wires go from the power poles over rather than machine to machine. Usually, just a personal thing, I guess. Okay, so this needs to be off when. Cosmic water is... So only turn it on if there is less than... This thing holds like 25,000. Let's say 5,000? We want to leave a nice big spot because I'm just going to delete it right now. And I can delete it manually, but you can't auto-delete it as far as I can see because there's no flare stack. So basically, there's already 10,000. It immediately half filled up. So this... Why is it working? Or... Excuse me? Disabled. Excuse me? This is the lubricant out. There's a pump pushing it up into the machines that need it. At the end of the line... So does this pump override this pump being off? I didn't know it would do that. Uh, well that sucks. Um, I guess we can use the boring water. Uh, the boring water comes from a giant tank where we just mine ice and melt it basically. In this fancy looking doodad. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's more ice here than we're going to need ever. You know, there's 145,000 water ice, but um, one ice turns into 100 water, so 100 times whatever that is, so like a 10 million water or something. It, it'll be fine for a while. Alright, well let's, let's try to control that then. Maybe, maybe that'll work. Weird. Unless I missed something there, I'm not sure why that didn't... So we're still trying to read cosmic water. Maybe I had the less than greater than backwards. Only turn it on if it's less than 5,000 again, right? Okay, I think this one worked. Maybe, maybe it really was just at the pump. Well, no. Yeah, okay. Lubricant's connected. Water is not filling despite there being a tremendous amount of water behind the pump. It's all still connected. It won't pull in the clean water unless there's a need for it, which means all the machines that output, you know, the recycled water can keep processing it, right? Yeah, that should be fine. Because a lot of the water, the cosmic water into polluted water just sort of circles around. It doesn't... I think you lose a little bit now and then, but... Once you clean it out and, and, and filter it and put it back in, I think it's a close to net neutral kind of system. So you do need the fresh input to be limited by space, right? Don't put more in. Hopefully that leaves a little bit of a buffer. If anything, it should go down to 5,000 eventually. And then we'll bring in a bit of new stuff to keep it there. 
I think. Hopefully I got that right this time around. So anyway, this machine is working like we wanted, which means the card maker, which had, it had a pretty big buffer. It was doing fine, but it can continue refilling this back up. So that if we ever do manage to find some iron ingots, we can do some signs. Now, we're also perhaps learning that we're still not making enough of these machine learning guys, which is what I thought. But as we're trying to build up a bit of a stockpile on these, uh, um, these guys up here. Well, the only stockpile we're making for utility science is what we're requesting here. So it'll request a thousand plus what's in there. And then that'll stop requesting and then this chest will back up. And we can fill it up really as much as we want. I'll say like one line is enough for now. And I'll do the same thing for production, because you don't need to overproduce that bad. Alright. But, we can probably speed this whole system up by lengthening this, because we always knew one of the biggest slowdowns, bottlenecks, were these machines. Uh-oh. Floating away! Uh, I need like one more of those. No, I just need more space, because they're big. They're deceptively enormous. How's the missus? Oh, well, yeah, she's okay. Uh, work is a bit rough. You know, health is fine. It's just... We're not old. It's just middle-aged problems. Just, just, you yeah, know, we're, we're still kicking. Everything's, everything's okay. Just spending a bit more time on old people stuff. Baby Ankyla. Oh, no, we're not going that route. <laughs> All of our friends are, though. Gee whiz. You can't get through your 30s into the 40s without, like, literally everyone you know. Okay, hold on. Why is there junk on this line? Yeah. Because I didn't put a filter inserter there. Yep, yep, yep. Classic, classic mistake. Um, blank card, please. Alright. So we were taking some of these garbage cards and putting them on and it's already messed up again because it's the wrong lane okay, we have to clean this up a bit get rid of these junk data in the middle here and then throw them out all right that should do uh what's beeping at me nothing important all right we'll finish upgrading our card creators. Now I could, instead of putting efficiency mods in them, I could uh, certainly uh, upgrade their speed or something. I was just, this was my starting point. Yeah, no, things are alright on our side of things. It's, uh, I feel like we've both been sort of dealing with varying motivation, depression-y type things lately. Um, you know, the world's a bit messed. Everything is, is harder. It feels like everything is being harder than it used to be, you know? Like, uh... I mean, hopefully everyone watching is doing alright in their own personal uh, challenges, but uh, I definitely feel like overall the, um, the world is not easier to live in than it was when we were younger, unfortunately. And you usually think most people live under sort of an expectation that uh, over time your situation improves, right? Where you, you know... Not just money, but like, you know, experience and energy and stuff here. Until old age hits and it's all downhill, but, you know. But, uh, unfortunately, housing costs, food costs, living costs, and just stress. Man, everything's so stressful these days. But it's fine, you know. I don't want to just sit here and vent and complain, but, uh, it just makes things like sometimes playing video games a little harder. Alright, so we should have doubled... Theoretically, our data card production. These things are pretty slow. So we're up to two, four, six, eight, ten of them. If we can ever get some iron ingots up here, we should have pretty good science production. Uh, we do, we definitely need to be destroying the scrap, and I'm worried it's not being destroyed. Let's make sure we're requesting a good amount. And this thing is just. Deleting it as fast as it can. Let's, let's speed her up a little bit. 
I only have the one scrap recycler, so... Yeah, Canada grocery prices are also bad. <laughs> it's, it's probably pretty uniform. I, I don't think anyone's really immune to it. Record profits for uh, grocery companies. Yet, somehow, still need to raise the prices for everybody. Uh, Alright, this is looking good. This is looking swell. Hey, look, it's actually backing up a little bit. That means we're actually producing more machine cards than we're consuming, which is literally what I wanted because we're not using the other side. So, it turns out 10 of these, just with efficiency, without any speed. Now... They want to keep an eye on my fluid, because it is possible they will be consuming fluid quicker than we can cool it off with one thermal regulator. So, like, if this fills up to 50,000 and this drops down to 10,000 or whatever, then we know that we actually need, like, two thermal radiators. But that's easy enough to, to add in. Unfortunately, iron ingots. The bane of us. Not enough iron. Everything else is looking great, though. Pretty happy with the build. Alright, so I guess we're kind of done up here in space. There's not much else for me that I need to do up here, I don't think. It's, I gotta go back down and get iron working, and at some point I need to get Immersite working. Although that's not quite as high a priority. Uh, we could probably do some baby research. Or at least one of our researches for the new, uh, the new types of, um, New, new science tech. It looks pretty good, except for... Except for these iron ingots. We have a look at our home base, see if they've improved somehow while I wasn't looking. I mean, honestly, there's probably more iron ingots products right now than there were. I didn't do anything, but... Something has improved. Did the copper back up? So what happened was, the copper backed up, so the copper is only using sort of maintenance usage. So they're using the, the copper, the molten copper filled up, and some of it is getting turned into ingots, but less and less, and it's only going to be the speed that machines use them will turn on more molten copper production. Which means these guys don't use pyroflux near as much, which I don't mean, I don't expect it's backing up. But it means that the Pyroflux can all go to iron, which is not really what I wanted at all. But at the very least, as long as we don't consume more copper, we can focus our Pyroflux onto these iron ingots, which should eventually fill up. I mean, steel is starting to back up, for better or worse. That means eventually this will fill up, and we won't use molten iron on steel, although that will take forever. And the iron plates are also backing up. Which means, eventually, those will fill up. And we will only have iron ingots, which can go to space. But that will probably take an hour of background processing. Not ideal, but it will eventually work. Um, so we can bang out some cheap research, but... Uh, hmm. Oh, so growth facility, this is how we get wood in space. I wasn't sure how we'd get all these things up here. But bio sludge we get from our uh, recycling, and we can turn that into like wood and and, and uh, trees and whatever else. Fish, I guess. Or no, you take fish and turn it into bio sludge. I don't know. That's kind of an interesting side loop. I haven't had a need for that just yet, but I'm sure one day we'll need all these machines. I think coal liquefaction is pretty high on my to-do list as well as the drill. We'll just see what happens. I don't expect we've got enough research for those anytime soon at all, but it's nice to know that it's working. It's just very, very slow right now. And if we can get the iron ingots going... So maybe what I do, uh, probably ending the stream here pretty soon, let's say, but I think the next step is actually to get Immersites. And I can figure out the orange research pretty easy, I think. So I just go back to my other moon, get the Immersite mines figured out, which shouldn't be too hard. And then ship it here, automated if possible, but effectively just ship up the crystals and the powder. And it looks like that next science tech, uh, Amber, won't be that hard. And by the time I figure out the Immersite, I bet you the iron will back up enough that our, uh, 
our um, iron ingot science will finally catch up and then we can just bang out like all of the the current tier which is there'd be a lot of research to bang out like the the amber stuff here does lock a variety of things and then i guess that's the next tier after that right so it's a three pack of cyan amber and crimson whatever you want to call them and that will unlock a variety of weapon power and you know look at all these things we'll, we'll do a, a full tech upgrade really assuming we can get enough of it auto automated and then i guess this is the green stuff so this is the one that needs vitamin large and can't go back up easily um dark blue will be beryllium looks like and also whatever other stuff so these the next tier is another set of colors that are where we need more resources so we don't we, we can finish our research tech without necessarily going to a new planet we just need to get the Immersite figured out. We might need some more Cryonite or Vulcanite. But I think if, if I was to restart, not that I have any intention of restarting, I think if you're playing along, if you're watching this VOD later on, super long VOD near the end here, I highly recommend not going to any, like for the, the first round of space science, you come to space, you get the relatively easy to produce space science here. You can just, you don't have to go to any new planets. You just go to space, get some space belts and some cosmic water. Bam, that gets you a whole new tech. After that, you kind of have three options, I guess. Um, you can go for Vulcanite, Cryonite, or Immersite. And it's kind of up to you which one researches tech that you prefer. I recommend Cryonite because it gets you the logistic bots and that helps a lot. But all three of those should actually be completed without um, without going to a hostile planet. So you can definitely get Immersite and Cryonite, although not a lot, on this moon. The first moon, you can go there. You can get Infinite Vulcanite, although it might be difficult with no water, but you can definitely get your Vulcanite, Uranium, and even more Immersite on another planet that has no biters. And if you really need more Cryonite, there is a moon. It's a bit far away, so I expect kind of expensive for uh, rockets, but it has even more Immersite and Cryonite and like infinite Cryonite here. Uh, as long as you can get your power set up, which might be tricky because solar is very weak and uh, you'll need a way of making power out here, but there is Uranium. There's even Iridite, which I don't know what you need that for, but I think out here the difficulty is transport and power, but no biters means it's so much easier. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you want to do expansions with biters. I don't think that's the way to do it. Um, at least not for this tier of tech. And then the next tier, the one where we're going to need Vita Melange and whatever else, maybe that's where you're like, okay, now our bases need to have defenses. But we'll have such higher tech by then, right? Like, imagine if I could finish all of the current tier of tech um, into the Immersite, you know, the, the current three tiers I've got. Uh, that'll give us a lot more, for instance, modules for efficiency, there's rail guns, there's stronger cannons, lasers, better bots, more grenades, you know. Everything will just be a bit easier to fight the biters, I think, with another full tier of tech. So getting the the red, you know, the next tier of red, blue, amber, whatever, I, I think that's actually the, the smart play, and I just didn't realize it. Well, you know, playing for the first time. I thought, uh, you know, I thought Foolish Ankylo that 7% threat wouldn't be a big deal. And I could just throw down a few turrets, couple walls, and just do one mining outpost and it would be fine. It's still here, but I am losing turrets and bots. And unless I want to come back and forth pretty regularly, it's eventually going to crumble. Or it'll back up and turn off, but I'm actually kind of amazed it's still running. Uh, you know, we have 13,000 more Vulcanite. It's still doing its job, so I guess I shouldn't be too mad at it, but I got really um, depressed when, um, you know, the base spawned right beside and kept swarming it. It's actually weird. When I was on the planet, even not building here, it was under attack constantly. And now that I'm not on planet, sure, it gets attacked, but actually not as frequently. But yeah, there's holes and stuff. I'm losing turrets and walls, so it kind of sucks. Um, 
I have as many laser damage as I can get. This base, like this, this in, in terms of my supposedly 7% threat map, um, sure, there's a, there's a lot of pollution here. Well, a lot. I mean, there is pollution. I don't know if that's a ton, but sure. There is pollution that hits the biters. And, but they, they immediately jump to full tech, right? Like, I, th I thought, perhaps incorrectly, but I thought that the threat rating on the, on the planet actually meant much. But yeah, it turns out 7%, I was fighting behemoths and leviathans the first wave they sent, right? So they've, they've had behemoth worms and stuff, you know, I expect they'll start growing behemoth worms in range of my walls and it's just going to collapse. Like, I don't have a solution to it. And the there's like Leviathan snappers and stuff, whatever they're in there. Um, sure, I threw down a bunch of turrets and some flamethrowers. They fight them off, but I did not expect to need like three layers of walls, uranium bullets, artillery shells. Like, my home base, you know, I'll just show it off for a second here. We're fine, right? Like, I... Maybe one day they'll be able to send biters that can get through this, but it hasn't happened even close. Uh, at worst, we lose a couple pieces of the wall and some robots die. But the auto artillery, you know, the, the, the ammo belt with artillery, and I could put down a bunch more, you know, gun turrets, laser turrets, flamethrowers. Like, I, you know, we pretty much can defend these walls forever. Um, and I don't even think the pollution is super bad. It's not the best, but my production's gone way down, and I started improving... I don't know if I showed this off, actually. Um, now that we finally have logistic chests, which, you know, took forever, uh, we can automate the pollution air purifiers, at least anywhere with the materials. So I just slapped down a bunch of auto-producing air purifiers, and they cover a lot of pollution real fast. Uh, it's hard to show... Uh, my whole base used to be this color of red, but literally just spending a couple hours with the... Um, you can see it turning white. Hopefully on YouTube you can see it. But anytime pollution is generated, it gets eaten up by these um, you know, air purifier packs. If I put a couple over in the main smelting line, uh, the whole red area would disappear. And we'd have basically no pollution. But we're not doing a lot of production. So uh, once we start ramping things up, it'll still heat it up. Attack size are based on pollution, not nest size. Alright, yeah, I don't really understand how the threat works. I thought, just by default, the home planet being 67% and a moon of the home planet being 7% would mean relatively few uh, attacks. But I, I, guess, I guess maybe it's just the way the game is. I, I guess there's like an evolution meter. It seems like it just inherits your like global evolution, I guess. Which is not what I expected. I, I just figured it would be independent for each planet. Because it didn't really make sense for me that... Because when you spawn here, like when, when we first came to the planet, the, the Vulcanite planet, there was, uh, you know, basically no biters at all. And I started... I mean, yes, this outputs some pollution, but it's a pretty small mining base. You know, we have one, one block of miners, and I actually had efficiency mods technically. And... Uh, I wasn't even going heavy production productivity. It's it's all relatively low energy use because, I mean, I only had a bit of solar. I didn't want to go too crazy anyway. And uh, what power we use is actually, um, you know, the the pyromite dousing, which doesn't really pollute much, right? Because these machines barely pollute, and the steam is clean, and the engines are clean. So uh, the most polluting is just the the miners and the the product. So I didn't think we'd have a huge problem, but I guess I just overestimated it or something, but it's fine. If I was to redo it, I would change a couple things, but honestly, I just wouldn't come here. I would rather deal with uh, no water. Uh, I'm sure this will be a pain, but literally no biters, I think, is always going to be better than having to deal with water. I'd rather, on my home base, I would literally rather go back home, even if I couldn't find a way to atmospherically generate you know, hydrogen, oxygen, create my own water. I'd rather just use a very old setup somewhere in here. You know, I'm creating a fair number of these capsules. Uh, you know, just 12 packs of those into a big warehouse of capsules. I don't even use these delivery things all that much. So, like, all I'd have to do is put a can in here that would take on the capsules and just fill it up with water, right? And then we could just send water to wherever we want. I don't think it's a huge problem. 
Um, yeah, water ice. I didn't check for that. That's fair. Just like on the the space base, right? The um, near infinite supply of water ice just here. It's only like a hundred thousand, but it turns into tons. Well, I don't mind if I guess steel is a bit expensive, but but effectively, all I mean to say is um, I would rather deal with water transportation than biters defending my base on a small outpost. Because, like, all I really wanted was, especially early, well, early game, early space exploration game. You know, all I care about is getting enough Vulcanite back to science and smelting lines back on Novus, right? Like, I really, 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 just the way I've got this all set up, I've got, I don't know, five or six core drills set up or something, which is great, and, and with productivity and stuff, it's, it's, it's enough to run a, a pretty decent-sized base. But I don't get enough Pyroflux for the smelting lines to be efficient, as it turns out. It's, it's working right now because copper backed up. But uh, I cannot smelt enough without importing Vulcanite for Pyroflux. So that was all I really wanted, and it just didn't work. So then I got a little salty. But everything's backing up, and we'll get there eventually. But turns out the iron ingots for um, for red for the next science, the the Vulcanite science. That's the big limiter right now, and we're getting some. It's it's working, but uh, I need way more Pyroflex back on Novus to really speed that up. But it, it's fine. It's learning. I'm getting there. But um, yeah, I think if, if I was to if I if I need to expand, Morgan's cool. It doesn't have a lot of Cryo Knight, but uh, it had enough, and it will definitely be my first Immersite uh, output if I need more Immersite. And I think Odgen here. I can I can do no water, right? Water ice is much more dense. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, can you see? How do you check? Because like Novus's orbit had water ice. Not that I want to make another space platform, but in theory, well, for one, we could um, from here. We certainly have access to a significant amount of water ice. I mean, it'll run out. I don't know how much there is in orbit here. Uh, I haven't really explored this spot. But in theory, there might be more. I, I don't know. I guess the asteroid belt, probably, right? Is that is that what you're supposed to do for that? I haven't really spent much time here. Yeah, there's like infinity water ice. You just have to find it. So we could go to the asteroid belt, make a baby base, and shoot off... Uh, whatever we want from space. I don't know if it's something I want to do right now, but yeah. I don't really like I don't really like the asteroid belt right now because uh space platforms are just too expensive. It it will take forever to connect this up. But there's lots of goodies here certainly. In fact, there's more stuff in the asteroid belt than I was expecting, but but um cryonite, yeah, cryonite I don't really have though either. That's the problem, right? So I have methane, <laughs> methane ice or something. No, uh, the problem with cryonite, right, was um, for me, I don't know, I don't know how random it is, but um, my Morrigan had like 200,000 cryonite, maybe. It was pretty low and I mined it all. It's all gone. <laughs> so we ended up with maybe 40 or 50,000. Um, so I still have some stock, but I don't have a way to mine it right now. Uh, my backlog... Right here. So, yeah, I mean, I've still got 33,000. It's lots. But, uh, yeah, no, the plan for that, if, if you weren't here, is, yeah, you know, eventually I'll go to Frost, which has Infinity Cryonite. It's just, you know, then I need a power solution, right? So, um, if I want to head out here to the relatively... I don't even really need to worry about the core drill anytime soon. I can just tap one of these Mega Million... Uh, Cryonite patches. Like, this is fine, but I need I need fuel, right? And I don't... Uh, what would I do for fuel out here? I mean, I, I, I'm almost at Kovarex for uranium. Oh, one Cryonite for 10,000? Oh. I should really look at the recipes then, because that is a lot more than I would have guessed. Uh, I've been trying not to use it, right? I've been trying to reserve it for... <laughs> figured I should prioritize it for um, science as you would normally do. So I got tons of rods. Uh, I've only got some of the researches out of the way. Maybe you needed it. 
Not a... Oh, it's a big long list. Cry Knight Slush. I just want to see how you unpack it into... Uh, but if you make Slush, then you get Water Ice out of it, yeah. Two Slush. No, wait, that... That's making Water Ice. We don't really want to do that. No, no, no. Other way around. It's... Sometimes the I, I know that I know the modders you know, like I said there's only so much they can do. Man, sometimes navigating these 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 incredibly long lists of, of, of recipes gets to be a bit. I'm I'm really glad there's a recipe book in the game, but whew. Um, it's like playing Minecraft back in the old days. You just Wikipedia everything. Okay, start with my rod. That's what I've got tons of. Is it the slush? You need sulfuric acid, which just means gas or oil mostly. You get slush, which you can turn into ice. But you still need. That doesn't work because you still need water for that. That's just freezing water. Or were you meaning like you freeze the water and then shoot. I feel like I'm still missing something here. Freeze, then shoot. I see. So you, you, you take the Cryonite. So you would need it to go probably to Novus for the infant water. Or somewhere with water, anyway. And then turn it into those... Basically, you want it to be this to shoot it, right? Because you do get unpacking it, a or heating it up, you get a tremendous amount of water out of the water ice. Yeah, I get you. Well, yeah, so... I mean, I have Cryonite up here I, on my space station, but I'm, I don't know how much. Let me double check. I want to see the viability of going to my uh, Vulcanite moon here. Um, or not moon, actually, the planet. Uh, we're using it over here, so it should be in the logistics network. So we curl I guess I've got a bit more than I thought. I've got 21,000 in space, which is probably enough. It's, yeah, we're probably not going to run out of it for research. So we could, well... Okay, if I want to make Morrigan the moon serious for transporting like that, this place will need a significant upgrade too, because I've only been here once or twice. Now, it's got pretty good infrastructure. I really need to give it some meteor defenses though. <laughs> so that's a that's a project. Um, but I do plan to expand this place for Immersight. This, this is going to be my Immersight production, which should get me some more science pretty easy. That's kind of the next thing I was thinking about. And if I'm here at the same time, yeah, there's of course lots of water. And there is some slush, or some some cryonite. It will run out, but there's a fair amount. Um, and this place has, well, some... I mean, it was the first moon I went to after after going to space. So, you know, it's it's a bit basic, but... Um, the resources on it are good. We, we can certainly build nearly anything we want. No biters infinite oil so we've got effectively power I could pollute it as much as I want I actually probably should tr it's not very big though it's actually not that much space uh, you know we do have a baby grabby if, if you if you have I haven't really used it I have got there's very little I, I don't know what to do with my little baby spaceship we do have a spaceship you know you can fly it around and go mine asteroids if you want um, I don't think I've researched how to refuel it yet. It's it's soon. It's not too far away. So I don't want to use it because I can't really refuel it yet. But, um... Oh yeah, I can do it now. We have plasma. So yeah, I just need to... That's actually pretty easy. Um, I, I had to research the particle accelerator, so... If I want to build a particle accelerator up in space, I've got the plasma. Uh, I can ship rare metals up if I'm not already. Easy enough to ship them up, I believe. And then we can make uh, fuel for our uh, spaceship, and then you can fly that around, which is pretty cool. I, you know, I, I don't know what to do with it, but it's cool. Um, yeah, it's just uses power to fly around. I, the amount of stuff in this mod is crazy. Like, it, it's really cool. But yeah, yeah, I could, I could see that. So yeah, I guess probably on the to-do list. 
Morrigan might be the next trip to get the Immersite figured out, maybe upgrade some of the infrastructure. So I want to bring enough stuff to, to upgrade it a bit. Um, get, get it a little bit more automated, some more bots and stuff. Can you, can you land on a planet with it? I didn't know you could do that. I thought it could only go into orbit like this. Because when I got it, I thought this was the only place it would take me. But I mean, I guess if you're in orbit, you can use a shuttle to go back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't... I mean, yeah, that's, that's fair. I guess I should find that too. I forgot. <laughs> the last time I flew here, it got grabbed by one of these... Uh... There we go. I can't lose this. I don't want to have to rebuild it. It would suck. Yeah, you can go up and down for not too much fuel. As long as you've got some, some liquid fuel built up. Which... Oh, I may have some. I need to get rid of these rocket... I keep sending cargo rockets up and forgetting to unpack it. Uh, in fact, while I'm looking at it, I'm just going to get this done. Because uh, this is one of those things that I'm kind of lazy about. So this is easy fix. We just want to pack those up. Put them in a little chest. Doesn't even need to be in the network, I don't think. Um, I don't really care about the energy too much. Put a requester chest just so we don't lose it. Request all the random... Because it my, my logistic network up here has been real messed up. So we just want all the spare rocket bits that end up here from crashing. Turn those into packed ones, which is much more efficient. And then we will... Um, this, this needs to be like... Uh, and then we can take those back down, or we can... Actually, I probably won't take them to Novus, but we can use these to go... You know, the next time we're on a trip to a new planet, it's, it's, it's sort of mandatory, right? Uh, do we have liquid fuel? Probably not, actually. Oh, look, we had another one. Like I said, they, they get grabbed so quickly out of the, out of the landing pad, I, I lose them. And I've had some mistakes with my storage, my logistics network, where they got filled up with junk, even worse than normal. It's looking, looking, we're like we're getting there. Our garbage data cards are slowly getting scrapped. It's, it's working. Scrapped is slowly getting filtered. I don't know what to do with all this stuff either right now. I don't think it's worth trying to process up here. So these might be some launch them into the star kind of garbage, honestly. I mean, yeah, we do get cool, um, I haven't really used these before, but we could use the cool space, uh, heater. It can certainly smelt, but I always, I guess at this point, I feel like smelting in, like, a lot of production in space feels like it's not very efficient. Like it should be done on a planet or something. But yeah, we can still do all the, the usual smelting recipes if we want. I don't think... I mean, it would kind of... Yeah, that, that's what I figured. It seems pretty obvious. The, the biggest complaint, sort of, I have is that I have to switch to, um... Not... I, I'm, I'm kind of annoyed that there's no way to cargo... Or, or whatever you call these things. Space gun... Um, half of the stuff we need, basically. Like, we can get all the raw resources fairly easily with these, which is... I, I like this system. It's fairly compact and simple. It's, it's not super complicated and sure the belting is whatever, but you know, it, it's not too bad. But you can't do it with any of the circuits and the modules and the motors and a bunch of stuff that... So the only way to get it up here is to use cargo rockets and, well, I mean, maybe. Um, it's been a while since I looked it up. Our cargo rocket efficiency kind of sucks, right? At the, In the early game, so... Uh, cargo... Uh, these safety... No, it's the... It's not the safety ones. It's... We're not going to lose... I thought there there's one... That, maybe it's not cargo. It's like... Uh, it's the reusability one, right? Nah, that's the one. So, yeah, okay. We can't even get the next tier. Yeah, so... Um, utility science is great, but until we get an entire new tier of tech. Um, 
So we're currently getting, what, we're at level 3, so 32%. I guess, in theory, that means we should be getting 32 out of 100 back every trip, which is a third of it. I mean, that's okay. I don't think that's even close to the, um... I don't think that's even close to the space gun, is it? Well, okay, it's not just a matter of, um... So it, it, it's the scale, right? Space gun scale is relatively, um, like, like it's a small amount of resources per shot, and you can not take up, you know, a square mile of, of space. Um, these delivery capsule cannons, uh, yeah, you could probably math out, because they use most of the same resources, cargo, heat shielding, and low density and all that. It's, it's not significantly different, but these fuel tanks and cargo pods are pretty dang pricey right now. Um... Yeah, I, I think the problem isn't so much, even if the, the cost per sort of kilogram is similar in sense, the difference is I can send 200 at a time when we need it, rather than, well, all of this. So making an efficient rocket right now, like I don't use enough resources to fill it up, to send it up for, for, for most purposes. So I'd have to automate, like, I guess I'm just not really interested in trying to split this thing into... You know, a thousand of one thing, a two thousand of another thing, five thousand of another thing, because it's that just sounds like a huge mess of logistics. Whereas, it's very much one to one for for the guns. And if I even had a more expensive recipe that let me use the guns for circuits and uh, modules, I would prefer that a lot. I mean, it might be too easy, but but that would be better for me for sure. I think. I think cargo rockets, like, in, in, in bulk, right, it's totally fine. So when I'm going to New Planet and I want to load up, and, and my first few trips to the space station here, oh yeah, I, I, I brought tons of bulk up. Oh yeah, like, like, I, I, I have, I have manually brought up, I don't know, probably 20,000 of all the circuits at this point, just because I'm coming back and forth to fix things, and every trip I bring up, you know, 10,000 reds and greens with me, because might as well. Which is fine, it gets the job done, but I just, I wish I could automate it, right? Like, I think the first time I noticed it was like, oh, you can't make uh, your next tier of space science without basically manually bringing modules. I was like, ah, that was a big bummer for me, because I, I was hoping that I could get this set up and forget about it for a bit, but you, you can't really, because uh, there's no way you want to be sending rockets full of modules right now, like, that's... That's a bit much. That's not going to be uh, worth it. I don't even know how long it would take to fill up. Like, legitimately, unless your base is way more modernized than mine at this point in the game, uh, filling up 250 stacks, 500 stacks, 25,000 modules, way too much. No, I know you put something else in it. I just mean, so you have to start... I mean, maybe I'll... Maybe that's what I need to do next time I get at it. I just... I'm not really looking forward to trying to load balance, you know, I don't know what, the five basic, at, at the very least you need the five basic researches, uh, the, 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 the terrestrial sciences, you need the three circuit boards, the three basic modules, probably blue motors at the very least, if not some other motors, what we got like. It's like 8, 10, 12. That's probably like 12 to 20 individual resources that you need to fill up. Be careful that you don't like overfill so that one's full and the others don't. And, and you need like, I feel like you need some kind of logistics on this moon or on the, on the space station to communicate back down how to fill the cargo rocket. I think eventually that makes sense, but I just, I don't know. I feel like that's the kind of thing that's, it's like, it's really overkill for, hey, I just want to bang out a mining drill, right? Which is like, what we really need is just to bring up a few thousand uh, modules or, well, we need ingots specifically. But, you know, the first round of research, it, that is way too much work. Like, you, you'll spend, I feel like I would spend 10 hours to get a complicated rocket delivery system when I, I could just spend half an hour bringing up some modules. <laughs> But it, it's fine. I, I think eventually you have to do it. It's just when is the right time, you know? And I, I think that's what I would... I guess... Yeah, that's all I mean to say is... I wish... The delivery cannon phase... Worked for longer. 
right? Because I feel like as soon as I set this up and I realized what it was limited by the types of material, I was like, oh, well, this was a waste already. Because sure, it's great for copper and iron and stuff, especially if you're sending ingots and whatever. But as soon as I'm like, well, you can't actually send it all, I'm like, well, then why did I bother? Yeah, well, that's kind of the thing, right? Like, the first the, the first signal transmitter is, is a bit weird, and... I mean, the the, the whole space stuff, the, the, the... The production cycles in space are just generally more work, uh, because you've got five tiles of underground. It's just, everything's a little bit harder. And, I mean, like I said, my limitation up here for a very long time was um, platform anyway. It's not like I, like, there's no point shipping up uh, 10,000 modules when uh, it was going to take me a year to, to build the platform. It, it's looking better now, but, um, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. I've got my cryonite, I've got my space net. I'm, I'm not sure what I really need to speed things up. I think, it, it, honestly, it's not even really space-based. I have to... I have to streamline my, my 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 main world smelter, right? Like, I need to take this whole thing probably, and like move it into the big desert, and then just really iron out the basic iron, copper, steel systems. Uh, I should be able to make maybe tier three modules now. Yeah, it'll use a lot of power, but we, we shouldn't have problems with power too much anymore. Yeah, this shouldn't be too difficult. I mean, limited a little bit on Vulcanite, but it's fine. So we could start throwing in the, um, what are they, 8% in this mod or something? Can we not see from here? Just keeps popping up different ways. Uh, there we go. Yeah, 8% each. So, you know, if, if we had the tier 3s and I didn't care about power and space, um, you know, you'd take... Whatever the core drill is, you know, it, it outputs at different amounts depending on how many you've got. But right now it's a lot. And then you you, you pulverize it all and I could put four tier threes. That would be 32% more of everything. And then we throw it in the uh, the enricher. And that would be three more, another, another 24% on top of it. And then you could throw it into the cooker. I don't know if you'd want to put five in there. You might want at least one speed or something. But, you know, again, you could get another 40% if you wanted. And uh, a caster can't have a productivity in it. but um, And I don't think the plate makers can either. But but still, like, that's one, two, three chains of productivity mods. All for, for the infinite resource, right? I don't have to worry about that. Once you set it up, it's just there forever. I, I really think that's kind of what I need to do, right? Is, like take my core and it's not like it's a bad system it's just uh well i need the pyroflux for that i guess that's the thing right so then my other bottleneck is i can't smelt it without pyroflux so so that takes me back to the the vulcanite plant anyway it's always that's factorial man there's always uh there's always something else to do at least nothing's backed up right the the uh the recycling plants are working copper's stored up to max iron is filling up slowly, but we're we're not really using too much. And then steel is actually backing up. It's a third full. So it won't be too long before we're making enough iron ingots that they will just come to space. And as the iron ingots fix, then, you know, it's going to take a little while, and we definitely need more iron smelting. But I think we'll be able to bang out the, the uh, production science pretty quickly once those speed up. Utility science is mostly done. So really getting Immersite to bang out the rest of the current tier is probably the priority because it's it's pretty close. And then like things change once you got Kovrex, I'll figure out how to make, you know, nearly infinite nuclear power pretty easily, right? I, I imagine, I gotta imagine a decent sized, um, any decent sized core drill system you know, we don't get a ton of uranium out of it, but this thing's been running for a while, and it's given us 28,000 plus 100, well, I've used a bit of it, but, you know, probably 30 plus thousand uranium, and if we enrich a bunch of it, I mean, I, I feel like we're going to get more uranium, unless you're running a mega reactor, our little baby 2x2, two two, I mean, 
I'm pretty sure this could we could run a couple of these with that for forever. Um, and then once the power becomes less of an issue, then you can you can really go hard. You can go ham on the productivity. And like I think we just got the modules too, which we've not we haven't built yet either. We got coal liquefaction, which will be good for some planets. That's a new one. I thought I built. I thought I researched the beacon. Maybe I didn't do that one yet. No, no, we did. It's just. Uh, I don't know where it is, but the the baby starter beacons, which are nice to get to prioritize production on specific things that need it. Also, this is cool. Big mining drill. So that's kind of like a tier three drill. I'm thinking, right? Is that? Uh, not even that expensive. Just a bit of rare metals and steel. Or no, not even rare metals. That's the, the tier two. So basically, another you know 25% speed up. Giant mining area. Sure, it's more pollute -y. Four times the power. No, that's good. That's great. Green packages for friendship for bugs. Yeah. Well, I believe, like... What I'm thinking is I want my I want enough uranium basically I want enough power on Novus or Novus, however we pronounce it. Whether it's uranium or whatever, what nuclear or whatever. I need enough power here that I can stop worrying about Well, for one, those friggin' solar mass ejections. The last one we had drained like I don't know, I'm up to t a little over two gigawatts if everything turns on. I think it used like two point four gigawatts to stop the coronal mass ejection. On the last one so like clearly we need like to not have massive destruction every so often we need like three or four gigawatts of baseline power grid which is a lot of solar panels and i don't know if i want to expand the solar farm much more i mean it's cheap it's easy but boy is it it's getting pretty big <laughs> so i'd like to have something a little bit more compact and i i'm pretty sure nuclear is the way to do that um so once we can get the power underlined then we can really well, then you can throw more more power into your machines, right? And uh, speed them up. But yeah, it's, it's going okay. But yeah, if, you, if you're if you looking at uranium, right, for, for, for bugs, one of these... Sure, there's lots of uranium on the stupid planet, or the stupid moon. There's also a ton of uranium here. So yeah, I think Oddquin is even more importantly, as much as there's no water, and that's going to be annoying... The fact that it will have effectively infinite vulcanite and vulcanite seams and a trim... Well, it's only 200, 150. It's not like, you know, 500, 1,000 percent, but it's still very high. There's a ton of uranium. Um, let's see if I can find a patch. This place actually might kind of suck. <laughs> if it's more spread out than I thought, it, it might be kind of bad. There's no water, so we don't have to worry about oceans, and there's no uh, biters, so we don't have to worry about them. I think because this is a planet, it's kind of like Mercury, right? This is a, a bigger area than um, the moon, so it's more likely that we'll have some decent patches. And uh, Yeah, I mean, a million uranium, it's not nothing. And especially, well, okay, let me see if I can build. I want to see how many modules these guys have. Uh, electric drill. Uh, right. Well, I was planning on leaving here anyway. So before we end the stream, which I do need to do pretty soon, uh, let me pop down to my main base. Uh, we'll bring these with me, I guess. Uh, fuel, right. I'm not sh We might have a problem, actually. Um, I don't think I remembered to bring liquid fuel the last time I flew here. Let's clean this up. Oh, yeah. Also, before we leave, don't forget to ditch your space junk. Space junk be gone. Can't really use it anywhere else. Um, clean up my inventory a little bit here. Things we don't want to drag around. Can't keep that. Okay, I've got a tiny bit of fuel for my jetpack, but that's not enough. So I need to find out if somewhere up here there's some hidden liquid fuel. Which is... Probably military? Hmm. If I could just memorize what page everything was on, everything would be a bit easier. Flamethrower. No, no, no. It's, it's maybe logistics then. This is actually probably where I spend like half of my time. It's trying to figure out which page <laughs> a given resource is on. 
I'm, and I'm sure it's very painful for people watching along because it's so much easier when you're not trying to commentate. <laughs> uh, liquid fuel. It shouldn't be in production. This is this is building stuff. It could be logistics. Where's all my rocket stuff? Should look like that. <laughs> so painful uh it is you know is technically a resource ah yeah 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 okay request already exists awesome um there's nothing in logistic storage up here so unfortunately <laughs> unless it's in a, a non-logistics chest uh i didn't bring any with me so we can emergency land but that sucks Uh, I have done goofed. Well, we do have solid fuel, technically. Oh man, this, this this trip back to the planet turned out to be not so simple. Um, cool, cool, cool. It's uh the so in okay. Hold on, we're gonna use the recipe book here. We done goofed. So, I can find it from here. We're trying to make solid rocket fuel. It has to be a big fuel refinery. There's no oxygen. I can't. I don't think I can actually make any up here. Solid fuel's fine. Iron plate's fine. Light oil is possible. But oxygen? Uh, no, you're not getting oxygen up here without importing it, I don't think. I mean, yes, I could take the water and separate a tiny amount of it and spend half an hour getting one load of... I think we're just going to crash land and make a note to always bring more liquid fuel when you go up. I guess... Unless there was a way to automate it from afar, maybe the bots could figure it out for me. Certainly I've got stashes of it here, but I don't think you can fire it. Right, this was my planning to shoot rocks into the sun. Uh, I'm assuming you can't send a load of liquid fuel up. Oh no, it takes... I didn't think it would take... It, it's so sensitive, because you don't want to send any you know, precious electronics, but we'll just fire straight up rocket fuel, just load it up and fire it at the planet. Alright, so there is a way to salvage it, and this is probably not the worst automation to set up anyway, because clearly you need some to get around in space, and you can't make it in space. The question is, where am I making it, and how much do I have? Um, I think I turned it all into liquid at some point, because that's how the rocket needed it. The old rocket, which still exists, has a nice old stash. So we could do some some fun. We just uh, copy that. Copy that. Shift. Paste. Can we not do this from the nav mode satellite? Like I know I could build stuff via queuing. Um, I mean, I guess as long as this works, I can just build an insert. I thought I could upgrade the chest, but yeah, just there you go. It's fine. Q. Q copy. I don't need to control paste. Uh, okay, so that'll put it there. Then we can just let the bots handle it because we can be lazy like that. And it's a bit of an emergency anyway. Switch you to fuel. You not sent firing it into the sun. We're going to send it to orbit. And, um, I don't think I have any backup receivers other than this stuff down here. So it's temporary. We'll just put it there for now. Um, it is connected to the network, so I could still wire it in. Uh, actually, I don't know. <laughs> That's another question. Can you... 
Well, that's pretty handy. I didn't know you could do that via the nav satellite mode either. Um, cool. I don't want to oversend it, so as usual, I'll put up my, my, my max. Don't send it if there's... Or only, only fill the cannon if there's less than 500 in space. And then request as much fuel as you want here. It doesn't really matter too much. Actually, 500 will be way too much. Small stack size. Uh, we'll say uh, 100. Maybe. All right, so the bots will start filling that in. That'll get loaded. It's aimed. We just turn it on. I'm really glad I set up all those uh, delivery cans. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty good. You know, as much as I was just complaining about them. Just like that. Bam. Wait, where are you taking it? <laughs> Who's requesting liquid fuel? What could poss- Oh, you know what? Actually, wasn't there something that needed that? Yeah, that's where it all went. <laughs> I forgot. Space science. I totally forgot. Yeah, I should have set this up a long time ago. I, back when we had, like, the basic space science, you know, everything came up manually because that was the only way. Um, I forgot that it used that. And we, of course, it just eventually used it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that I didn't bring up thousands of spare rocket fuel. I just, uh, you know, forgot I was using it. Yep, good, good, good. All right, well, we'll let the bots handle it. That's fine. Um, we might not be able to produce enough on home base. I never really went hard on making millions of that stuff, but looks like it's working. Well, that's good. Eventually this would have stopped. I would have been like, where's all my space science? But uh, now, now I know. Um, okay. I suppose what I would do then is maybe, I always seem to launch my, my baby rockets from here. So I'll try to always keep enough for an emergency escape home here. Uh, it'd be cool if you could have like a priority for Is there? I don't really care. I wonder if there's a way to have different priorities in the logistics requester system. That's probably getting too complicated. It's like you know, on a on a on a you know on, on a belt where you're like, uh, I want to prioritize this one first. Fill this lane up before you go to the next one. Uh, fill this chest up first before you go to the other place. But that's probably too much for the bots. They're not very smart. Anyway, that uh, did the job real quick, and with that, we can certainly get back home. I don't even need that much anyway. We'll just leave the rest here. I will take my space bits back, my, my shuttle bits. Not bring my assemblers, my thermodynamics. Sure. Passable. Cool. Well, that was a good save. Uh, space. I hope I didn't forget my power armor. <laughs> I wonder where that ended up. That's not where I told you to land. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is, this is usually my backup stash. There's my power armor. Good. I'll just leave my space suit here. Bring, clean up my inventory here real fast. Wait, why is that? I really need to get rid of all these storage chests. They were a mistake. I only built storage chests before I had access to requesters and, uh, buffers and all that, and uh, the amount of junk that the bots have just spread across my base is, is a bit of a nightmare. If anything, this should be a requester, because the whole point of it is to bring spare rocket bits for long-term storage. This is the one that packs them, so these are all packed, and it will pull, it'll, yeah, it just packs them, easy enough. Mm-hmm. Gotta get rid of these yellow chests. So, 
I don't really have a place for this. That's fine. All right. Was there anything else I was gonna do real quick while I'm at home? Uh, you know what? We could always take a minute. Where's a more fun base to, to build? We can always take a minute to rain death on the biters. And this is your reward for the end of the stream. We haven't done enough biter shelling today. Oops, I didn't, I'm not doing it right. Uh, the, let's try this again. Gotta remind them who's boss. After they mostly defeated me on that Vulcan planet, well, this is why I have all my home base automation set up so nicely. And we'll see a nice attack wave from them. If we're lucky, we'll get to smoosh some other organizing an attack. Now, there are better explosives. You know, one day this will be even easier, but it's still fun. I find this a appealing way to deal with them. It's the only way I can deal with behemoth worms. Here we go. So the home base defense, much stronger than Volcano Planet. Whatever evolution tier they're up to now. That's a Leviathan Snapper. Those guys are pretty tough. But the main thing is, if we can kill them all before the bots get there, then we generally don't lose any bots. <laughs> if the bots get here while they're being, you know, attacked, then we tend to lose bots uh, on defense. Generally not too many, but um, the quicker we kill the waves, the better, as far as I'm concerned. But yeah. I do think, I still would like to expand a little bit further here one of these days, but it's a bit of a process to, to clean this whole place out and extend the walls, but it's not a ton of resources I need, but it's, it's kind of more about space, really. That's a lot of oil. Um, is there something else I was going to show off? Oh yeah, my... My home uh, meteor shower defense, you know, we, we don't deal with meteors here anymore. Uh, I think I built 20? <laughs> 21. Yeah. Um, it uses up a lot of power, actually. It's kind of funny. Uh, it's... In the long term... It's my third highest power draw overall. Just 21 meteor defense. The laser turrets have taken the second place, and the core drills are still number one. But uh, that's probably because we're not doing as much manufacturing. There'd be other machines that would use up a lot real fast if we turned them on. But actually, I think I can show you guys. I mentioned the, um, geez, I don't know how long ago it was. This one. No, not that one. There should be a giant spike not super far in the past. I wish there was an easier way to to zoom in, but it, it's the uh, the umbrella thing. You should be able to see it some... I don't know how many hours ago it was. Sometimes I'll just leave the game in the background, so maybe... I feel like the spike was supposed to be when the uh, the last core ejection hit, but I, I think that usually happens like every 24 hours or something. So it should be within the 50, but... Yeah, there was a massive spike that drained all our power. Yeah, when the accumulator died, that's the one where we had a, a giant sun coronal mass ejection. It was pretty cool. And uh, sure, the average draw for it is nothing, but the, the sort of Nova draw on this pad boy, yeah, the umbrella, yeah, that's the one. And it went, it just shot up and up and up and up. <laughs> it was pretty good. I'll have to try to get that on camera one time because it's pretty cool. But yeah, all right. I think I think I made some good product, pro, uh, pro, some progress today. I uh, didn't do much at, at Novus, but uh, Novus is pretty stable, and uh, we did get Vulcanite one way or the other back to the space station, and we are slowly able to do um, production science. Which, I mean, we'll eventually be able to get the Coverite enrichment, which or Coverex enrichment. Um, Heck, I don't care about Iridium, but theoretically we could do that. That's surely for the next tier of tech. Um, you know, we can we can actually right now, if we wanted to, we can make all of our flamethrower turrets. Uh, well, I think it. I think it. 
I think it still stacks like the old days, so that's another like forty plus percent uh, turret damage, which is no nothing to shink, nothing to, to complain about. Uh, this would be a good one. It's super expensive, but just a flat uh, ten percent to your mining productivity is really nice. Um, I mean, it's super super expensive, but you know that's on the the docket. So there's some good stuff available. Um, tier four modules are are researchable. But we don't have like Holmium or anything. Um, I don't think we can get it easily. So that's not too high of a tier uh, priority. I wouldn't mind seeing the improvements to the artilleries. Uh, but they are ridiculously expensive. Like like they're they are they are they are uh, a little bit outside of my range, my price range. I will be getting the the faster faster boots. We can get this is this is a question I'm not sure about either. The Immersite tier, uh, the ne the next military tech. I don't actually think these are actually upgrades, uh, unless I'm missing something. I mean, it's it's more of an alternative to uranium, as far as I'm reading it. So you still take a a basic ammo magazine, and instead of adding uranium to it, you add Immersite to it. So it's a different branch, but I think the total damage is the same. Now, I, I might have missed something somewhere, but um, it does, at a baseline, let's just look at the, 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 the anti-material one, the one we like. It is 125 damage, plus 50 laser, plus 25 radioactive. Our current one is 125 basic, plus 75 radioactive. So you're just changing, you're just trading um, a bit of radioactive damage for a bit of laser damage. Uh, 50 radioactive to 50 laser. I'm not actually sure that's better i mean some enemies might be weaker to it but overall it sounds very samey now maybe the area of effect or the range is different magazine size 770.75 that's all the same so yeah I, I don't know if that's really worth a whole lot of effort but uh you know maybe you have more immersite than uranium that's fine um other than that rail guns definitely want rail guns a lot of steel. I think these are actually stronger piercing power. Yeah, these will do more damage by a long shot than artillery, right? My current tier of artillery does, I think, 3,000 damage. Can't even see it there. But I know, I know it doesn't one-shot the big worms and the behemoth worms. So I think it takes three shots to kill a behemoth or something for the artillery. So if we could get a railgun that has a similar, well, it's got a shorter range technically, but uh, it does do 3.6 thousand, 4.5 thousand damage. That sounds pretty good. I don't know. Or we could try to get them explosive. That sounds pretty good too. Yeah, there's, there's some fun stuff here. So good. Anyway, I think I'm going to end the stream here. Just kind of my out of the blue stream all day factorial stream. I'll probably play a bit on my own time because, you know, a lot of factorial is a little bit repetitive. Just, I mean, I need to get rid of all these uh, wind turbines one of these days too. So there's a lot of like menial labor I need to do, but I will definitely try to, con I will try to keep up some somewhat regular streams to keep people up to date and show off some cool stuff as it comes up because I'm really enjoying the mod pack and the, the general uh, factorial vibe again, but yeah, space exploration definitely takes forever. So streaming it all, I'm not sure is the best plan. So I'm going to end here. We definitely made some progress. If you watch the VOD in the future, you know, thanks for watching. If you're watching live, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and have a great day. Blue Ankylo, I'm going to go eat some dinner. Maybe save my game. Haven't done that much. All right, folks. Have a good night. See you later.